The guy couldn't find oil in Texas. Now he's got a rack and the price of oil's going up. The guy's a loser. I filled my car up the other day, $52. Oh, yeah. And there will be a draft. They got the bill. They're, they're working on it right now. Oh, I wish I could be president. Come on. I had the guy on 60 Minutes admitting that he got pushed into the National Guard. Yeah, I got tape of that guy. Yeah. Where is that guy? Uh, E1, what, what you... 2, and 3. Is he disparaging Kerry? At least he went to Vietnam. <laughs> this is a guy named, uh, what? Ben Barnes. Benny Barnes? He's the former Texas uh, Speaker of their State House, I guess. State House. I don't even know what that is. You know, the state legislature of yeah. Texas. Uh, I don't even understand it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what number is that? Uh, e, one, two, and three. Where does he say all the good stuff? Let's see. Um, in E1, he says that he was approached by the late uh, Texas oil man Sid Agger, who was a Bush family friend. He said, basically, would I help uh, uh, young George Bush uh, get in there in the National Guard? Yeah, I mean, of course he got help. I mean, you, you, during Vietnam, you couldn't get in the National Guard. Guys would have given their left arm to get in the National Guard. And but, he says... Uh, what pisses me off about Bush is, is that he still goes, oh, the Vietnam War was a good war. We should, we, he didn't go fight it. And Obviously, he jumped his name over a bunch of other people to save his butt. People talk, talk about Jane Fonda being a traitor, Kerry being a traitor. No, George Bush is a traitor. He, j he used his power and influence to jump over a bunch of people who all probably died. And here's the guy talking about Man, it. Man, I wish I was running for president. I'd have the mothers of all who lost their sons. George Bush jumped ahead of my son because of his special privilege. Right. My and then, son and then, wasn't able to get into And then I'd give a though. shot of the graves. Here's the uh, barn saying that he helped Mr. Bush skip over many names to get into the guard. E2. I would describe it as preferential treatment. Uh, there were hundreds of names on the list of people wanting to get in the Air National Guard or the, or the Army National Guard. Uh, I think that would have been a preference to anybody that didn't want to go to Vietnam. There, there a, you go. What did he say? Yeah. There was a squad of rich kids in the National Guard called the Champagne Unit. Mm -hmm. You know that? The Champagne Unit. God damn it. And here's why he helped George W. get this preferential treatment. I was a young, ambitious politician. Uh, doing what I thought that was acceptable, that was important to make friends, and I, and I recommended a lot of people for the uh, for the National Guard during the Vietnam era. Hmm. There you go. Why is he saying this? Now? Does he feel bad? Yeah, he says, yeah. you know, I think the record should be straightened out here. Good for him for stepping forward. Nice. Ah, oh, the whole thing's such a mess. The whole thing's a mess. Please register to vote. I mean, not, uh, unless you're going to vote for Bush, don't bother. Yeah, stay you know, home. Vote for Kerry. If you, if you feel like, you know, you might want to vote for Kerry, please register to vote. <laughs> I hate all these, like, I hate these people coming up. It's really important that you register to vote. No, it's not if you're going to vote for a moron. <laughs> not if you don't know what to do with that vote. Not if you're stupid. <laughs> well, you don't want idiots to vote. I, 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 why yeah, they go, it's really important that we all vote, no matter who you're going to vote for. No, don't say that. Why is there such a push in this country not for everyone to vote? Around. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> Talk to some people, you go, you know what, dude, I, I really, I'm taking away your right to vote. You can go to college, don't vote. Probably don't know what you're doing. I didn't go to college, I've never voted. That's what I'm saying. You're a responsible human being. You're a being. responsible person, you realize your, <laughs> right. your shortcomings. But, uh, you know, I'm registering this year. And don't waste that vote on Nader. That guy's a douche. Like, he's done a lot again. of cool stuff in his life, and he protects consumers, but he's going to screw everything up. Something happened to him. I don't know what it was. He's clearly gone insane. <laughs> I, mean, you see, I, I mean, I love the guy, too, and the whole premise of his life. But, yeah. man, he looks nuts now when you see him. Yeah, he looks crazy. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of people that I've really liked over these last few years who are looking kind of crazy. John McCain's looking kind of crazy. Right. And Ralph Nader's looking kind of crazy. Well, well, lately, when you see him, you go, poor Ralph Nader went crazy. Yeah. Hey, Herb, what's up? Uh, good morning, Howard. I'm calling from San Jose. Um, I'd appreciate it if you could put... Um, the Rock the Vote website link on your um, website. Why I'm doing, would you appreciate that? I, I'm, well, I'm doing well, yeah. Why don't you just go to Rock the Vote? I'm <laughs> doing something better. Well, I'm people a, won't. Know. I'm doing something better. I'm What's gonna. Uh, I'm getting one of these. I'm getting the software from. I forget from who. Someone's giving it to me. 
I can actually register voters on the website. All right, that's great. Oh, okay. So we're, we're, we're almost done with that. And then, like, and if you... But I'll make sure you have to vote for Kerry. Well, no, sure. Your listeners will vote for Kerry, but they probably have to realize that they have to register first. Yeah. If you don't know that you have to register, boy, oh, boy, are we in trouble. Do you, you, remember, do you remember where you registered? Do yes. you remember how you registered? Yes. How? Uh, I think I did it at the DMV. Okay. Which, by the way, the new DMVs in Jersey are gorgeous. Oh, good. Uh, that's what McGreevy did. Yes. Yeah, because he's, he's a homo. New oh, curtains. Great. New curtains. I'm going to make the DMV gorgeous. We should have known right then and there. That was his big issue. Dong. <laughs> Dong. Gotta, Dong. Put new drapes in the DMV. There you go. We're going to take this DMV, this drab drew. We're going to do a whole makeover. <laughs> how it was many like ways queer was eye he, for the DMV. Right. Well, how many ways was he trying to tell us he was gay before he had to just come out and say it? These <laughs> people aren't getting it. Yeah. Yeah, we, weren't, we weren't listening. <laughs> I think the new Joey show debuts. Yes, tonight. Yeah. Tonight? Can't wait. Joey. Along with a new, the Apprentice season is kicking off. Tonight. Well, I saw the Joey show three months ago. No good? Someone gave me, it was so bad. And now I've seen the paper, like they're giving it good reviews. Someone told me they went back and not only re-edited it, but reshot the whole goddamn thing. I think they even changed cast people. They did. They did a whole thing. Because the one I saw sucked, the big one. Right. But, but yeah, they're going to good reviews now. Well, they're going to get huge tune in. I mean, it's the first week and, of Joey, and people who love Friends are going to check it out. But they got to they got to put their best foot forward, or else people burn out on it. And ABC was calling me. They were like, "Get your special ready. We want you to go up against Joey." Really? Yeah, that's what they wanted me to do. So I was like, uh, I don't think so. And I'm like, well, why not? I go, because I'm going to tune in to see Joey. <laughs> you know, I mean, unless I can get Matt LeBlanc. Yeah, I mean, what, <laughs> yeah, unless I can get Joey on my show. The, not even the actor, dude, the Joey. <laughs> I said, it, I said it's, a, it's a slam dunk for the guy. He's, he's coming off Friends, the most popular show in a and long time. And everybody wants to see what this yeah. is. They go, you're the guy who could beat him. I go. No, I can't. Well, look, dude, I'd watch you instead of it. I'm, I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch the Yankees Devil Rays instead of it. I'd certainly watch you interview somebody. And yeah, maybe okay, so maybe I would have won. Maybe I would. But why? If I do, if I go to all that hard work and trouble to make a show, I don't want to go up against that. Yeah, it's like going up against the Super Bowl or something. I mean, I'll go up against. Uh, I'll go up against Joey the second week. <laughs> That's what I told him. I see. I saw the first episode. It blew so bad. I got no. Pro but people are going to want. They're curious. They're going to want to check it out. It didn't matter anyway. I didn't have anybody to interview. Everybody that gave me the interview, I was like, I don't want to talk to them. I should have just had Bridget Nielsen. Now that you've seen um, <laughs> the new... Surreal Life. Surreal Life, huh? She's funny. What a train wreck. Flavor Howard, Flav. Did you notice that uh, her and Flavor Flav are booked? Yeah, that's great. Flavor Flav and Bridget Nielsen are coming in soon. That's going to be funny. Are they really a couple? I don't know. I don't know that they're a couple now, but something definitely happened between them on the show. Wow. And by the way, the amputee beauty pageant is happening. Uh, I know there was some controversy as to whether it would happen, Robin. Really? Yeah, but it's happening. Was somebody trying to stop it? Well, no. Somebody was Yay. really trying to... A certain somebody <laughs> was trying to stop the world's biggest hemorrhoid contest. Was he? But then we found the sponsor for it. Now he's, uh, now he's up. Tom, 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 Tom. Our old friend Drew Carey coming by. Yeah. John Stewart. What's Bert he doing now? John Stewart? No, Drew Carey. New sitcom. Yeah. Oh, he does have a new sitcom. Was any of the guy who didn't want to have a sitcom? Right, right. He was going to quit his successful sitcom. <laughs> Why don't he just spend his $500 million? John Stewart's coming in, who I think should dye his hair. Really? You don't yeah. like the, the mixed gray look? I don't. Uh, uh, Bernie Mac's coming in. He's got a new movie out. Mr. 3000. Mr. 3000. That movie's got a great premise. Yeah. That. What is it again? Well, it's about a, a major league player right. who retires with exactly 3,000 hits. Which is a definite to go into the Hall of Fame. Right. Right. And then they do a count, and they realize he was off by three. He didn't make 3,000 hits, and he has to go back now as an older uh, guy. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. Well, and supposedly, like, that becomes his entire identity. Like, his post-life... After his career is all like Mr. Three Thousand shirts, Mr. Three Thousand car and then dealerships. He, it turns out he doesn't have. Yeah, he's, he needs like another three hits or something. Yeah. Right. Well, I see. You know, I see kids looking at the poster, getting very excited. They love Bernie Mac. Yeah. 
Who doesn't love Bernie Mac? They're like, whoa, I gotta see that movie. And Nikki Zeering's coming in. Hope she's still hot. Hope she hasn't hit the wall. Bernie Mac's got a great line in that original Kings of Comedy. They're interviewing them. Uh-huh. <laughs> he goes, he, like he's trying to say, you know, he's a good person. Uh-huh. Even though he's a comedian who's been on the road, he goes, I've been married 25 years. I got no outside kids. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know who wants to come in on Monday? I was going to ask you about it. Uh, she's on the cover TV guard. Looks awesome. Heather Locklear? Yeah, of course, yeah. Byron. She, she's, I don't know what she's doing, how she keeps holding up. She's Hot. 42 now. Well, <laughs> bitches. I do her. I think Nikki has a few years before the wall. I hope so. <laughs> Heather Locklear, though. Yeah, sure. Bring her in. So she'll be in next week, too. Yeah. I just got to wear something really hot. Heather, could you wear something Could really you cut out the, the cloth on your dress around your anus? <laughs> I'd say Heather Locklear's on the Mount Rushmore of hot chicks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who else is on it? Pam Anderson. Pam Anderson. Carmen Electra. I get it. Well, yeah. My girlfriend. Bethel. I got to tell you something, man. All right, we have a good sex life. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Sounds it. I'm a happy dude. We did it again. Well, how time. could it be bad for you? Right. right. What are you talking about? Her, right? her sex life might be bad, but it's great for me. <laughs> you're having a good one. <laughs> but if she mean, has to bang me. I know it's good for you, but I mean, do you finish and you're like, man, I gave it to her good. Like, like. I never you, say that. You'll no, never no, you that don't, coming out of my mouth. You don't say no, that, but do you feel like that? It. No. You don't? <laughs> of course not. When do I ever give anybody anything good? I don't know. I never had sex. I gave it to her good. <laughs> Who, my long dong silver? No, but do you ever Howard feel like Stern? I'm like, I, I look like a praying man. I did it that time. Yeah, boy. I really I really serviced her. <laughs> Dog. Who cares? <laughs> I just told you it was good for me. That's her story, whether it was good for her. Well, she's been sticking around. It must be good. Yeah. She says I'm good, but, you know. A lot of, hey, Angie Everhart said I was the best she ever had, dude. That's a major. Yeah, that's a major story. I don't know. That wasn't on the front page of the post. I'm trying to figure out what you do that's different than all the other guys that were with Angie. Like, do you have a move or a technique? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, you, I oh, think you told me that think once. Yeah. First You're of all, sure? I grew up, you know, watching tons of porn. You know, and for years I was married. I was married 20 years watching porn every single day. I've learned every position, every technique. Yeah, but she's been with guys I think who are in porn. Yeah, but I'm telling you, guys in porn... I don't think porn, she's been with guys in... Wasn't Sly, most of those guys in porn are gay. Sly Stallone, I think, was in a porno. Oh. Yeah, but he's all incensed. He doesn't know how to talk to a bitch. He doesn't know how to work it. You, I think you were telling me... First of all, I know how to talk to women. That appears to be the big thing. Yeah. For, no, for you. I mean, they all... Every woman that's... Uh, when I'm is... banging them, I'm talking about stuff. <laughs> yeah, what are you saying? Although Beth shushes me a lot. <laughs> really? She goes, shh. That's oh awesome. yeah! <laughs> yeah, sometimes that chatter in your ear can get to be a little much. <laughs> I don't know, man, but I'm telling you. The only time I talked, then I did like nutty things to Angie. You know what I mean? Like you know, I would. I was very, very psychological. I'm always thinking up stuff. But did, you were telling me one time off the air that like you figured out where the G spot is or something. Yeah, yeah. Because you know why? I wa- I rented this video. Where this, Called the G-spot. Where this woman comes on. She was on our show. Right, right. The woman, yeah. I remember. Oh, and you, know, you mean, mean that woman, that yeah. crazy The woman with the camera? Yeah. Yeah. Remember, like, we got the videos. Everybody just threw them in the garbage. Right. I take that crap home. Oh, my I watch goodness. it, and I learn something. I learned a two-hand technique to find a woman's G-spot. And a what two-hand technique? And when you, a two-hand technique. Absolutely. Oh, no, yeah. I, I've, I've heard that myself. Yeah. Right. It's funny, you know how Fred read the encyclopedia, became incredibly smart? You yeah. looked at every video. He's I'm the, telling he read you. the encyclopedia of sex. Because I know I don't have any natural ability to turn a woman on. They look at me, they're like, he's not hot. So I got to learn every two-handed finger technique on the planet. Oh, I'm like the yeah. ninja. Robin, let me show you something. Uh, I no. could sh- show, show me you. on Artie. Artie, <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> spread your legs and pretend you're a woman. Listen, that's not, oh, what, I, that's yeah. not what I signed up for. <laughs> All right, we'll be back right I after. Don't you do anything for this? We'll show. be back right after these words. Bill, yeah, Bill. What do I got to do? Bill, Ronnie. Uh, Salami, is that? Salami? Yeah. Salami? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. No, he's not there. Okay, thanks, Lyle. I'll, I'll see you later. I'll be down later. Right. Right. Music Alternative, 92.3 K-Rock.
this week after this is the Howard Stern Show. Stop the bully with Joey and Star tonight. Baba Booey goes head to head with a dude, chicken snake, and you know the drill. HowardStern.com has uncensored e shows now you can check out as well. Uh, Stump the Bowie and Benji Stickcomber tonight on E is Benji also. This is bonus footage of Benji at that poetry slam. Hello? Yes, hi. I was at your restaurant yesterday with my mother, and she thinks she left a couple of her rings on one of the tables, and she was wanting to talk to somebody about that. She left something? Yeah, a couple of rings. Can I put her on the phone? Uh, you mean the earring? Or we, could, uh, we, we, we didn't see it. Uh, hey there. Man. <laughs> Hello? Hey there. Yeah? What did you do with my rings? Ma'am, listen, I didn't know nothing about the rings because when I left, uh, my partner stays here. I, I would ask him if he had find what we didn't uh, find anything. Well, I'm trying to find those rings. Yeah, okay, that's okay, you, you, you try, uh, that's okay, but, but uh, we didn't have any ring here. I took them off when I fixed lunch, and I put them on the counter. On the counter? Yes. Which counter? I, I never saw you, you putting on the counter. I was there when they charged, uh, I, and, and nobody came to the counter. Uh, you were three people? What are you talking about? Ma'am, ma'am, where you are, you are, I think you are uh, talking to the wrong number. You have no idea where you put the f***ing things. Ma'am, ma'am, listen to me. Which, which uh, restaurant you are talking about? Are you calling is, me stupid, you idiot? This is, this is India restaurant. I'm trying to make a point. My rings aren't there. Good evening, India restaurant. What did you do with my rings? Please, please let me explain. First, you know where you are calling from. Where you are calling? I'm, I'm, I'm talking from the India restaurant. Did you come over here on India restaurant? I took them off when I fixed lunch, and I Ma'am, put let, them on let the me counter. Know, did you, did you come to the India restaurant? Yes. This is India restaurant. When did you come to the India restaurant? Yes. When, when did you come to India restaurant? No, I've listened to you make that stupid point over and over again, and I'm tired of it. You come to India restaurant so we can talk face to face, so you know. We don't, we don't know nothing about your rings. I don't know where you put it, and I don't know nothing. That's okay? the stupidest thing I ever me. heard. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> don't know nothing. Uh, there's Robin. <laughs> That's from your book. Yeah. What the? I'm trying to figure out what rings you're talking about. <laughs> the anal, anal rings? Anal rings. The anal rings. The rings of your rings. Where did you put my rings? I put them on the counter after making lunch. No, no, no. You do not do that. Were you in the restaurant? <laughs> Yes. What, what, what was what was that all about? The rings. Uh, my uh, father, when he was suffering from Alzheimer's, uh, took some rings I had left on a counter, and he safeguarded them by push, putting them in a tissue box, and then he forgot where he put them. <laughs> <laughs> so that dude who just killed his wife, like the eighty-seven-year-old guy with Alzheimer's, yeah. when you read that story, do you do you believe that? I mean, you, you saw I mean, a guy with us. Certain- possible because yeah. they can't remember anything <laughs> but uh it's a certainly a convenient excuse though that's you? what i'm saying yeah like you think i could kill someone and then go have alzheimer's well you better have some symptoms beforehand that's what i think i forget fred's name regularly <laughs> that's a good phony phone call richard christie checking in with that took your voice chopped it up called an indian restaurant I said, that's inventive yeah, yeah he's good He's good, that guy. You can use that over and over. Call every restaurant in the city. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure we did to get that. <laughs> Hello, this is Danielle. Where's my rings? <laughs> Ring. <laughs> yes, Jeff. Hey, Howard. Good morning. Morning. What's happening with the Clear Channel suit? My lawsuit with Clear Channel? I'm still suing them. I mean, you probably, don't think these things happen quickly? It's probably going to take years, but I'll get my money. 
guys. Yeah. Are you? Have you started Discovery yet? No, I can't wait for that. That's that's where I come to life. First of all, this is the weird thing. Lawyers try to tie me up with deposing me. Uh huh. I love being deposed. <laughs> you don't realize who you're dealing with. A guy who wants attention 24 hours right. a day. Sitting there with a group of high-paid lawyers while they ask me questions, I live for it. Most people are intimidated. You're right there. My agent has said I'm one of the best in depositions. <laughs> and w the, w the day I'm looking forward to is when I haul this guy Lowry Mays and Randall Mays and all these mazes. Because you can be for there for the deposition. Right? Oh, yes. I will be in the room. I'll be, yep. I will go, I'm going to have a party with these I'll guys. I'll be there. We're going to ask questions like you have never seen before. I might bring Chris Rock with me, <laughs> who isn't exactly a big fan of Clear Channel. I might bring Pearl Jam. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, people who could be in that room with you. And bring Neil Young. But the better be a party. So you better get the party started. Get, now, now in retrospect to years later, Artie, aren't you embarrassed you bought that record for that song? <laughs> well, I had my mother go in to get it. Oh, okay. You're not still listening to it, are you? No, I. <laughs> for a while in my in my CD changer, I had Pink and Pink Floyd. <laughs> These That's new jeans I'm wearing, my I can't get a good position on my penis so that I'm relaxed and comfortable with my balls and penis. You know what? You know what I'm oh, talking about? Sure. Um, you know what happened? <laughs> Beth kept saying to me, you know, your jeans aren't that great. I always have these big baggy jeans. Right, I know. I don't look good in jeans. So she says, you should get some nice jeans. So I got some nice jeans, and they look good on me. In fact, some some chicks came up to me and said, your jeans look nice. I thought uh -huh. I thought it was like a goof, like people were like goofing on me. But but now I, I find it a little, you know, they're a little tighter. Uh huh. And my balls and penis <laughs> are like all pushed around in there. And, and it's I can't find a comfortable, like, everything's pushing against my leg and, 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 and my Bowls There's not enough room for everything that needs to be yeah. in there. Yeah, <laughs> my my meat and potatoes are not nestled properly. Right now, that's the I got. I'm up every minute adjusting. You can't concentrate on anything. These are diesels. These jeans here. Oh wow, it does look like Did a. Did you hip see these, Robin? No, jeans. I haven't seen your jeans. Let me step out and model for you. <laughs> it's Fashion Week. <laughs> Ralph's doing a kick-ass job. Oh, they are nice jeans. Dog. Yes, they are very nice jeans. I'm proud of you because your jeans were terrible. What the, what size waist are you sporting there these days? 36. Really? Same as my same waist I had in high school and in the <laughs> army. 36. I had, yep. Oh. 36, 36. When was the last time you saw 36? <laughs> Actually, I my jeans are 36 too. Yeah, Get you're five foot yeah. three. <laughs> I'm six foot. He couldn't five. wear those jeans. Well, so, I couldn't wear those. No. I don't understand how that works. Like your waist is probably 36, and mine is. I the but, jeans I love. I love these these Lee Carpenter jeans. Yeah, and in well, those, that's in, what I wore when I was fat. In carpenter those, pants. In those <laughs> jeans, I can wear a 36. Yeah, remember my green carpenter oh, pants? Sure, I do. Lots I, of room for expansion. I love those things. <laughs> Okay, but there's a bunch of people on the phone we got to talk to. First of all, Six is on the phone. Ah, the guy who crashed the MTV Awards again? Yeah, he's crashed the Grammys a couple of times, and he was up on the... Uh, he was... Hey, Six, how you doing? Yeah, I'm here. I was watching the MTV Awards. I didn't even realize it was Six. I thought he was Puff Daddy. <laughs> So at the end of the awards at the night, they, they announce uh, the winner is Outcast, and uh, a whole bunch of black guys get up, <laughs> and Six is wearing one of those Puff Daddy Rock the Vote t-shirts oh, that he makes. Yeah, vote or die, baby, vote or die. Yeah, and then he gets up, and he beats Outcast up to the stage, because he runs up real quick. Did you tell me he took the trophy? He took it from Gwyneth Paltrow, yeah. He yeah. took it, and he got up, and he, he makes like kind of a normal statement. And Did he kiss Gwyneth? No. No. No, no, no. And I was sorry I didn't I didn't, I was sorry I didn't get to do that. I used but, to like when you'd say stuff about BB King, but you don't do that anymore. Well, you you know what? You know, I, I I was going to and I was it was crazy because I actually came in with Shaq. Well, you see, you see he even said ahead of time on this show, I'm going to be going to the VMAs and really? I'll probably accept the uh, best video award or yeah, something. Okay. Of course, Howard. Come on, man. It doesn't matter. And, he got, and how did you get in? You walked in with Shaq? I walked in with Shaq. Shaq had a big entourage. Me and him struck up a conversation. Uh, we went through, of course, you got to go through the metal detectors. We went through the metal detectors, and I went right to my seat. <laughs> really? And, and how do you get a seat? 
Well, I mean, there's really no assigned seats. They, they only have, like, VIP, you know, like, they have, like, a little VIP section. So I went to the VIP section. And everybody Pat. sees a black guy, and they go, well, he just must be in someone's posse. Right, he must belong here. They don't want to be Howard, I had to do it. You know, I have I have the DVD, From the Hood to Hollywood. This is the second volume. I want everybody to go to MTV6000.com and buy the DVD. Yeah, but this is funny. So here, here I'll play your speech. So he goes up, he grabs the, he, gra- he gets up before, he juts up there before Outkast can get up. He, <laughs> and what does Outkast do? Are they looking at him like he's crazy? No, they're applauding what he's saying because they, they think he's got something. They don't even know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know who's in there. Because he doesn't say anything real dumb. Here, here he is. He's just plugging his website. And meanwhile, you think the website has something to do with MTV. It's his website to sell his DVD. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner is... Gwyneth Paltrow. Outkast. Hey, y'all. Uh... He bolts right out of that chair as soon as they say outcast. And the outcast dudes are just, you know, busy, you know. Yeah, they're taking their time and congratulating each other and getting to the stage. He's, now he's got now he's got it in his hand. Outcast is still walking up there. Give it up for Outcast, y'all! <laughs> That's him. <laughs> There's a few things you gotta do. Go buy all the albums, cause they classics. Log on to MTV6000.com and vote or die. Give it up for Outcast. Yeah, yeah. Now, did you hand them their award? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, he gave it to them. He basically did exactly what Will Smith did in the beginning of the show. Right. He was better than Will Smith. <laughs> Way better. Will Smith at the beginning of the show just keeps yelling out, Miami, I love you, Miami. Yeah. <laughs> And they'll, uh-huh. they'll scream for everything, but you know you know the directors were, were you know, they were peeing in their pants because I had the New York Yankees hat on, and when I got to the stage, I took the hat off, and it was like, oh, my God, it's six again. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, six got us again. <laughs> they, they, they have no clue. Any black guy can do what six does. You just don't, because every no, Shaq no, has no. 57 black guys with no, it. let me tell you something. No black guy can do what I do. Howard, I am the best that ever did it. Howard. All right, Six, thank you. Three times, tell them to buy the DVD. Right. Got to give it up for MTV6000.com. I was telling you the king of all media. Hey, yeah, and next time, uh, make a nice speech about king of all media. Yeah, how Howard, us, I got something coming up that's going to be so grand that they're going to throw a parade for me in, in, in New York City. I, and, and it includes you. So when the press come at you, Howard, just tell them, you know, that's my boy Six, man. You, you know? got it, pal. I got something real grand coming up for you, Howard. It's going to be the grand finale. Uh oh, you're not going to like kill someone, are you? No, 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 no. no. never that, never that, never never that. Kill yourself on the (laughs) Grammys. No, 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 never that. But I I tell you what, Howard, I want to thank Brian McMonagall, Perry and McHugh, those the guys that keep me out of jail. My man Tony, Tony, uh, you know that does the reggae music. But Brian McMonagall, Perry and McHugh, those guys are like the, you know, the high-powered lawyers of Philadelphia. Those are the ones that keep me, you know. Why do they yeah, try to? Yeah, what happens when you go off stage? Yeah, do they try to put you in jail? Well, no. Let me tell you what happened. Outcast bodyguard, you know, he grabbed me. He's like, "What the f was that?" Right? And so when he grabbed me, right, the security guards, you know, they, you know, they came over, and I'm like, "Hey, he's been drinking a little bit," so they grabbed him. <laughs> <laughs> And you got into that, too. Man, he had, like, all these naked women. It was food all over him. You could eat the food all, you know, off the naked women. It was crazy, man. All right, dude. Later, Six. All right, Howard. Hold me down. Buy the DVD, America. You know, it's only nine ninety nine. MTV dollars com. Howard Stern, I love you. Thank you. Bye. That's Six, the Grammy crasher now, the Video Music Award crasher. You become the only reason to watch award shows. <laughs> How about I met the guy 20 times and I didn't even recognize him on the video music Yeah, you went right by him. I don't know. He just blends in. Yeah, I guess so. He looks like any sort of I couldn't black tell you guy what six part looks... of entourage thing. Yeah, I couldn't tell you what Six looks like. Yeah. I could. I wouldn't recognize him. I'm a little more respectful of our guests. I... <laughs> he, he has that unique... Ab- hey, by the way, speaking of desperate moves, now, I got to figure Tiger Woods is worth a couple hundred million dollars. 
Oh, yeah. His Amex contract alone, I think, is 50. There is a huge picture, a full, uh, 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 what they call a quarter page ad in the newspaper today. Um, big picture of Tiger Woods golfing, and it says, okay. It, it's got his signature, and it says, your name here. The exclusive signature service offers you a once in a lifetime opportunity. Send in your memorabilia or choose from one of three photos below and have it personalized by Tiger Woods. For ordering information, call 1 800 551 8220. So you can either send them crap for, for him to autograph or you can get one of three pictures and he'll put your name on it. Uh, all items, $1,500 a piece. What? To get this dude's signature, fifteen hundred bucks. Ugh. God damn, man! That's are dude. there people who actually answer that ad? Who is he? Rush Limbaugh? I mean, wh- how much? Wh- what is that? Does he have any shame? Obviously not. We heard yesterday that he doesn't tip. <laughs> but I mean, fifteen hundred bucks. He must need the money. And who's the putz that pays that? Well, that's what I'm saying. Who I want to meet the guy. Who pays fifteen hundred dollars to have something signed by Tiger Woods? <laughs> oh, sorry, Tom. <laughs> hey ya, hey ya. That's a good song, but it gets a little played out. Well, that's I was listening to. I said, "Man, that was a great jam," but don't want to hear it anymore. <laughs> mm. I got a whole bunch of stuff from that. A whole bunch of tape. JD pulled a bunch of tapes from the Video Music Awards. And then you ask J.D., would you pay 1500 for Tiger Woods? Not signature? even close. Good. Not even close. <laughs> I just had to make sure nobody took that seriously. No way. I, I wouldn't spend $5. Okay. Hey, Tom, what happened to Dunkin' Munchkins in the morning? Uh, yeah, I'm on a diet. Mm. I ain't. Yeah, Artie's not. What the hell is that? <laughs> I go back there, no Munchkins. You know who's got some? I, I was in Starbucks yesterday. They have these... Um, my daughter goes, oh, I want a cup of coffee. My 11-year-old. I go, you, you drink coffee? When did this happen? A cup of I'm coffee? I'm giving her coffee, too. But you go in there. There's no coffee. She's ha- this thing was a dessert. It, it is. Right, was, those frappe, fluffle, fluffle, Frappuccino. Oh, it was so unreal. Those things are so good. And it must have, like, 9 billion calories. <laughs> it's got, like, whipped cream and chocolate. And then she goes, wait, I have to go do something. She goes over. And start sprinkling additional yeah. chocolate, chocolate crap. and cinnamon or whatever else. I go. I, I would have there. approved a dessert in the middle of the day. I'm trying to be responsible. I go. I, I thought you were having coffee. <laughs> they got a whole way of getting that dessert without your knowing it. I'm addicted to. But they sell these cupcakes. Oh, yeah. they're called like triple chocolate something. Unbelievable. I bought one for Beth because yeah. I don't eat that stuff. She likes chocolate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like an addict. I, I never. I took one bite. It was the most rich, like rich, fifty times richer than Hagen does. Uh huh. Killer. You liked it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm addicted to the caramel macchiata things. They whatever put, that but that's is. Not even What's coffee. a macchiata? They just have. I, I don't know. I just something they call it. I got to say. You feel like a, a, a fruit because you got to <laughs> say that word. But they just take the caramel thing. Which comes in what looks like a ketchup bottle, right. and they just pour caramel in it. It's got to be forty-five seconds. He just holds the caramel. Yeah. Wow. It's, in other words, it's caramel. Yeah, and then you put cinnamon on top with sugar, and it's mixed with co- a top of coffee. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's like a shot of espresso. A shot of espresso. You'd be fair, you wouldn't even taste the coffee. Yeah. Tom came to me with a big announcement today. You let me in on. Are you going to make your announcement? Uh, in about an hour. Yeah. I heard saw him whispering to you. I said, oh, what's And I was like, oh, there? Tom goes, I'm making a big announcement yes, today. I, I want to tell you first. And I was like, oh, this is good. I'm going to get some inside information. Uh oh, so there's a new afternoon job. No, no, no. It wasn't even that <laughs> no, good. No, it, was, it, was, it, it was so lame. It was like, he goes, <laughs> I've appointed, can I say this? I've appointed a new general sales manager. Vice president of sales. Just oh, vice that's president too of sales. funny because somebody was asking me if somebody had come into that position yet. So you got I go, somebody? I go, Tom, I didn't even know there was an opening. Well, that yes, was Frank you did. You Flores' Frank job. Left. Oh, yeah, like I, I thought about that for three seconds. I don't, if you didn't tell me, I still would think Frank was working here. <laughs> you know, but, but I figured you should know. I was waiting for some big, like, I, I, I have resumed pleasuring myself. <laughs> That's big. You know, something big. <laughs> or he, what he just said, I have given up coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going back to Montana on my next vacation. <laughs> no more Dunkin' Munchkins. No more Dunkin' Munchkins for me I'm and or our diet. <laughs> I had lunch yesterday with our Heineken client, really nice guys. The guy said, I have a question for you. I said, if it's whether I masturbate or not, I'm not answering. Tell him I had a big clam bake uh, over the weekend for some of my friends. And uh, we drank Heineken. Nice. Very nice. All Heineken party. Oh. Very nice. nice. Went over big. 
Clam bacon Heineken. Then I was loaded. People in White Plains very happy. I had people over and I said, come on, we'll drink and stuff. By 10 o'clock at night, I was asleep unconscious. Right, you were under the bed. Yeah, so I was like, <laughs> what kind of party man am I? Yeah, you're just inviting them over so you can get drunk and disappear. Yeah, they were like, well, we came to hang out with you, now you're asleep. <laughs> we provided the house. <laughs> yeah, I, I provided a place for them to drink Heineken. Right. <sighs> yes, John. Hey, now. Hey, now. So I noticed something about your name. Uh, a homonym for Howard Stern is the words, how it's done. So you're how it's done. There you go. I don't believe in any of that. What is, oh, yeah, what is that supposed to mean? It doesn't uh, mean I anything, because my parents came up with a dumb name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw my parents over the weekend, I was like, you know, I hate my name. And then my sister started in two. She goes, yeah, you were going to name me Fern. I would have been Fern Stern. My mother goes, I knew enough not to name you Fern Stern. <laughs> what do you think? I'm an idiot. I just happen to like the name Fern. <laughs> and I go, well, while we're at it, how about the name Howard? We had to use an H to name you after your great-grandfather. I go, yeah, well, well, how about maybe the guy had a middle name? H. I go, there's nothing good with an H. If your name is Fern Stern, how, the heroin can't get in your body quicker. <laughs> you wouldn't have liked Harry? Nah. Well, I even said, like, like maybe Hank or something. I don't know. Nah, man, you're how it's done. I had a friend named Henry. Mm -hmm. Kid was, like, overweight. Mm -hmm. One summer, I see him. The guy lost tons of weight. All of a sudden, he was a stud. He had the hottest girlfriend. And he goes, um, don't call me Henry anymore. I'm Hank. <laughs> Oh, he turned into a Hank. And he turned into a Hank, and I went, you're kidding me. Hank the hunk? How am I going to call you Hank? Hank. Like, we've called you Henry forever. <laughs> and then he wouldn't have anything to do with us. Right, because you wouldn't call him the right name. He was now Hank. Henry. It was like a, a guy who gets a sex change. Call me Lucille now. Yeah, okay, right. You know what? I'd rather just not have you as a friend. I don't want to deal with that. That might be easier than calling a guy you've called Henry Hank. <laughs> have you ever gotten a letter from someone you know saying that they decided to have a sex change? No. I Did you? Yeah, you know that. I know. Did I ever tell you that story? No. It was a pro I don't want to give too many details. No, you don't want but, to tell uh, me. But it was a project I was working on. And I was I was writing the project with this guy. We decided to write something together. This is six somebody months, wrote with? Six months we worked together in a hotel. Guy was uh, divorced, two kids, and he had the hottest girlfriend you ever saw. Mm -hmm. Regular guy, whole thing. We were, and we were talking bitches and everything else. Hot, wet bitches. So... One day, you know, and then we were riding and it didn't work out for whatever reason. You know who I'm talking about, right? I think so. Yeah. So, I think? Yeah, no, I do know. I do yeah, know. yeah. So, so, but, but we were done riding. It didn't work out and I didn't like the way things were going and we kind of just went our separate ways. Nice guy. A couple of months later, I get like a form letter to my dear friends. I've decided to uh, become a woman. What? <laughs> and I just need you to know this and support me and blah, 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 blah. Now, I mean, I was done with the guy anyway and I went... Thank God I'm done with this guy. You, you don't want to have to go through all that. Can you imagine in the middle of writing? I had no freaking idea. The guy was a total, like, he was, I wouldn't say he was a man's man, but he wasn't, he wasn't, you know. Right. It he wasn't didn't have a... any femininity to him. Uh-huh. Have you seen him since? No. And never said anything to you, like. I was, like, 40-something years old. Never said anything to you, like, while you are writing, like, you know, anything that would tip you in any way? Nothing. Oh, no, he was talking bitches and everything. And I was like, well, what you know, what a time to pick to become a woman at 40. Like, who wants a 40-year-old woman? Well, that's when they do it, though. Yeah, yeah. that's when they do it. Because 40-year-old women look like guys. Well, you know, I have a similar story, Howard. Uh, uh, Thank you. People, like, people I know, and i, I got to be vague about this, they live in a very residential neighborhood. And they're there's a married couple living next door. And, you know, there's kids and everybody. And they get the note that, you know... Uh, Bill and Bob, or, you know, Bill and Jane are about to become, like, you know, Aaron and Jane. And they, mm -hmm. get, the, they get the note to tell them, everyone in the neighborhood, that they're, this person's in the middle of a sex change operation. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever I go to the house, I'm always, like, looking around to see, you know, what level's going on there. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that's great. That's startling. You couldn't send out a better letter than really, that. Really? I'd have to be over that person's house <laughs> you know, every day. I was like, thank God I don't have to see this guy anymore. Because, uh, you know, it's difficult. Like, I, 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 uh, I got this friend, uh, Lee Masters. He's the guy who hired me at E, him and Franche. He didn't do this, though. Well, he changed his name. I know. To Jarl Moan. <laughs> That's stupid. So I was talking to him the other day. I'm with about five guys. Jarl Moan is there. Why does he have to be Jarl Moan? Why? Because, all right. Is that the name he Lee has a whole story about, you know, he was, a, he was in an orphanage mostly. Right. It's actually kind of a touching story. He's a great guy. And he became a billionaire. And, uh, you, you know, I would never be happy for anyone who became, like, a billionaire. But Lee became a billionaire, and I'm actually happy for him because he grew up in an orphanage and uh -huh. didn't have anybody. 
So I think his real name was Jarl Mohn, but when he went into radio, he changed his name to Lee Masters. So he actually lived as Jarl Mohn. I thought this was some name he discovered. No. Okay. Oh, you mean like Eric and Fred? <laughs> yeah. Or, so, or Mukshagun? Yeah, well, no. So now he decided, wait a second, I've kind of not faced my roots, and, you know, I'm Jarl Mohn. So I'm sitting there with him the other day, and the other guys are calling him Jarl. <laughs> And I go, listen, I'm having a hard time here. I feel really goofy calling you Jarl. You remind me of these guys who get the sex change, and then you got to call them, you know, Susie. I said, it's not quite as extreme, but right. it feels that way to me. And uh, he was complimenting his friends for for being able to call him right, Jarl. Right, to and, help him out. But you were basically saying, I'm a dick. Yeah, you weren't one of the friends he complimented. I go, you know what? I'm sorry, Lee. <laughs> I can't go along with you. It just doesn't feel right. I don't know Jarl Moan. <laughs> It's not Cabby, is it? Yes, it's Cabby got a sex change. Well, you know, the other day I was in a <laughs> store, and uh, there was this woman sitting at a desk, and, you know, there were just guys. You know, the, the rest of the employees at the store were guys, and there was this one woman sitting there. And I'm not paying attention to her because the salesman who was helping me out was a guy, and we're talking. And then at the end, when you're, you know, filling out all the paperwork, the woman started to get involved, and I realized it was a guy. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of that in stores now. They almost think it's cool. It's like, oh, 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 let me help you. Oh, 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 MasterCard or oh, oh, Visa. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, Howard, the kicker to the story I was telling you is that the people that live in that neighborhood that are getting a sex change, you know, yeah. the people I know have kids that are like 7 and 10. So now yeah. they see this letter and they don't know what a sex change is. Now you got to sit down and have that whole conversation with the kids explaining what they're doing. Yeah, I know. Hey, uh, John, go ahead. You're on the air. Good morning, Howard. Morning. I've been a uh, big fan of your, your e-show. Now that I get to see it uncensored, I'm flipping out. This is great stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and I, and I think the technology is pretty damn good. The, the quality is great, great, I think, yeah. I also yeah. think that we sometimes, t we see it every day. We take for granted what we see, and we forget how much people want to see that. Right. Oh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I'm very happy about that. You can you can get all the uncensored e-shows on the web at howardstern.com. Not, not all of them, four I, right now, but right. we're going to add more. When, when, how much longer before we start to see more of them? Uh, uh, I think I think I think as early as next week we have four more to go. Right, right. And so, um, is, is are you going to do like special segments in, in the website too? Or? Yeah, we're working on a whole bunch of things. Is That's why you're going to put cameras in that kid's house or no? What, what kid? kid? Ah, see, I didn't think that was true. There's some guy posting on the site that you're going to put cameras in his house. We're, we're thinking uh, of putting cameras in Fred's house. What kid? He's not a kid, he's an adult, but he acts like a child. Right. Well, anyway. That's that. I'm just trying to move this along. I'm turning oh, into hey. a chick. There's a, guy, there's a guy on the phone. This guy just wrote a book. Wait a minute. Wait, just back to your story for a second. You don't know if the guy actually went through and went all the way with his sex change or not? I, I heard he did. Oh, I heard okay. a couple of people tell me through the grapevine. Eh? <laughs> Like, how, how weird would that be if you met this person now? It doesn't matter. I mean, it was years ago, and I don't know. No, but I mean, if you met them, and, you know, now you're meeting this woman. It's always weird. I mean, even you know a guy, a guy you know, you're yeah, talking, now, you can tell. Yeah, now, do you greet the guy like a woman now? Like, you, oh, this is a woman I used to know, and you give her a kiss, or no, what do you do? No, you don't kiss that. <laughs> I try to, like, I even try to visualize him as a woman. I mean, he's not even going to be hot. Hi, Howard. It's Glenda. Remember? Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> and David, what's up? Uh, hey, now. Hey, now. Howard? Yes. Hey, big fan. How are you? Good. Just wanted to let you know, the E! Uncensored videos are fantastic. Great, good. The quality great. is excellent. Good. I'm glad you're enjoying them and pick and choose from there as we create a library for we you. We need more, Howard. Rule you... the internet like you rule the rest of media. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. The, the, this guy wrote a book. His name is Chris Schultz. Mm. It's called Don't Do It. 101 Reasons Not to Marry Her. Chris dedicates the book to all the men who discovered the woes of marriage. Like, I, I just said to some guys in here, do you know anyone happily married? And they were like, yeah, me. And I go, get out of here. <laughs> I mean, seriously. If you, Let's say you and your wife, let's say your wife died tomorrow. Would you get remarried ever? See, I'm being totally honest. I, at some point, I probably would. Probably like in like 10 years. Why? I you don't need any more kids. I, I sort of like the idea of it. I really do. But I would wait a while. Thank you.
I just, you know what? I was with a guy. It's cool if you want to be a homo. I was with a guy yesterday <laughs> who's 60 years old. What's the point? Been married uh, three times. And I asked him if he's ever going to get married again. And he goes, oh, maybe at some oh. point. And I'm like, why would you? Hey, Chris. Yeah, Howard. How you doing? You must have been married, right? I actually I haven't been married. <laughs> <laughs> how did you get so smart? How come you're such a genius? <laughs> uh, just uh, been around a lot of people that were married, and uh, the guy that I write with was married. And um, <laughs> so why are we talking him, to him? The guy he went through a bunch of you know trouble with his divorce, and so as a as a result, we decided to write a book to. Uh, it's a really good book because it's you know it's not a goof. It's like they lay it out for you. Like here's some of the chapter headings. Okay, right. financial reasons not to get married. Selfish reasons not to get married. Statistical reasons, you know. Statistical. Most... They usually say you live longer if you if you get married, you'll be happier. No, they. What the truth is is that sixty percent of the marriages end in divorce. Oh, well, that's statistic. Yeah, <laughs> emotional reasons, <laughs> genetic reasons, because man is meant to have sex with different women. Uh -huh. Legal reasons, sexual reasons, you name it. Hey, what are some of the selfish reasons? Well, there's just too many women in the world. Uh, to be booked up with one for the rest of your life. When marriage was designed, we were uh, had a life expectancy of 40 years. That's right. And we, you know, we weren't meant to be monogamous for 50 other years. You know what? If our life expectancy was 40, my marriage would have been a huge success. Yeah, you would have been great. Yeah, I would have been like, hey, I was married my whole life. You're married oh, you died. You'd have been, you'd have been divorced yeah. uh, two years after you died. Yeah, you know when people <laughs> say life's too short, it is. It's too long. And it's, you know, it's at 80 years marriage. old, we yeah. can take the hours and, and, and do whatever we like. The book includes uh, 50 reasons why not to get married. Some of the reasons include weddings are expensive. True. Mm -hmm. Way too expensive. Divorce. Chick That's even more expensive. Chick flicks. I don't mind watching those. You love those. I do. That You know, that fits right in with your conversation yesterday that you should have been a gay man. Yeah. You have to be nice to her friends. Oh. Women are never wrong. <laughs> Oh, what was that, Artie? I'm sorry. <laughs> She'll try to change you. There are more fish in the sea. She is not your soulmate. Describe that. <laughs> she is not. Describe she's not your soulmate. Yeah, guys, guys buy into the fact that, like, oh, that's my soulmate. You know well, what? Well, I was, you used to say that. Yeah. I could be, oh, please. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, now no, wise. You made a movie about your soulmate. <laughs> I, well, look at me. I'm divorced. No, I know. I know. Well, you've uh, known that for a while. Let me, tell you, let me tell you what I've learned, okay? Because yeah. I'm always learning. The chick you think is your soulmate, I guarantee you, a week later after you break up, you can find a new soulmate. Absolutely. Hold on a second. First of all, she was, she was your soulmate for a long time. I think that what you're trying to say is maybe there's three or four soulmates in a lifetime. No. I'm saying when I'm horny, I can find a soulmate. Is Beth your soulmate? What? Night, is Beth your night. soulmate? Yes. But let's just, <laughs> let's just go with the premise that there is a soulmate for you out there in this great big universe. What are the chances that person went to the same college as you? Chicks believe that there is such a thing as a soulmate. Guys don't. I was just wondering, because you used to say, yes, I'm her soulmate. How old was I when I said that? <laughs> oh, it's an age thing? Yeah. <laughs> and you got to say that when you're with a chick, that she's your soulmate, or else it kills them. What do you mean I'm not your soulmate? Oh, no, no, you are, but, you know, I'm just saying, hey, probably could find another one pretty quick. <laughs> what? You're my soulmate in New York. So, do you, in other words, you spend a lot of time lying when you're with women. Exactly. I see. When we say you're our soulmate, we really mean you have a nice ass. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by this? Skeletons in your closet. Well, women always dig, and the fact of the matter right. is they're going to find out stuff that you did that you never told them. Right. You're going to be at a party, someone's going to slip up, and the next thing you know, you're in a two-week, month-long fight or something you did when you were 18 and drunk in Cancun. Really? Yeah, I know. And you know what? You know, you're so right because, like, like I had uh, like I had Beth convinced I was, like, a really cool guy and everything. And then you go to a party and you meet some old friends and go, oh, he was a big douchebag. <laughs> and then, then they, they find out everything. I don't think that's you what, what he's talking about. He's not talking about that, no. but that was my problem. I, I, oh, I, I don't have the same problem. No. I got one of those. You know the one thing that we talk about on the air that makes my wife crazy what? that I did long before I ever met her? The... What, throwing up on oh, the girl? Yeah, threw, that, that's the one. During sex? Oh. Yeah, the girl who threw up during sex. Yeah, they tried to throw up. Not my fault, but she's like, that's disgusting. I was like, did I? Yeah, I don't know that I made her throw I up. I know. But you kept going. That was and, the and the other thing is, like, why do you continue to talk about it? That's what makes it crazy. <laughs> Funny. Like, like, for right now. As oh, a it's a great uh, uh, story. What are you talking about? Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> there shouldn't be a day that goes by, guy, where you don't bring that up. You're absolutely right. Because, like, like, uh, I, like, like stuff came up, like, chicks I had sex with. Like, 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 she goes, you, you, you know, you, you had sex with a you know, stripper or something like that. Right. And then it's like, yeah, so it's like, 
It's disgusting. You know, right. it's, you know, it'd be like, oh, yeah, I, I agree. I must have been out of my mind. My, my wife would hear my friends talk about stuff. You know, my friends are like, you know, have no governor on them. So they'd start talking, remember when, when we did this, when we did that? And she goes, did you really used to do that? And I go, I did it. And she goes, why would you do that? I said, I'm a guy. You put your penis in a vacuum cleaner? I mean, my wife said to me, she goes, did you really have one night stands? And I go... Yeah. yeah. Well, she goes, why? And I said, because I could. And but you know what? A certain friend, we, a certain you know what? You should have been a one night stand. <laughs> a certain friend we have who has done every, you know, every disgusting thing in the book, probably. And now he's about to get married, and he keeps saying, but that guy's dead. The guy who did all that stuff is Please. dead. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. That feels yeah. good. Oh, I know that guy. <laughs> Look, we've all gotten the speech where they say, I can't believe you got ripped off by a whore in Vegas. <laughs> all right, here's the one. Yeah, I'm sure Dana throws that in your face all the time. Oh, oh you think? <laughs> Sex gets boring. Prenups don't hold up. Courts favor women. That's a biggie. Yeah, you know, that's a big <laughs> swing that has happened way yeah. uh, in women's favor. Yeah. She will get old. She probably will get fat. <laughs> That's great. Sounds well, like a good book. Well, with her, it's probably Dana knows I'm definitely fat. <laughs> to purchase. But this is not about you, Artie. Exactly. David, how long did it take you to write this book? Oh, uh, we wrote it in about uh, four or five Ten months. Ten minutes. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't take me very long. Actually, uh, maybe, actually, about an hour and a half. To purchase David Sloan's and Chris Schultz's book, don't do it. One hundred one reasons not to marry her. Go to don'tmarryher.com or call one eight hundred. Four three four zero four eight seven. Think- so, what is this? A good gift uh, when a guy tells you he's engaged? <laughs> yeah, it's a good engagement for any gift. any guy. Yeah, any guy. Even married couples can laugh at it. It's a good stocking stuffer for your girlfriend. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, it works with mine. Yeah, I think the one hundred one number is ghastly low. <laughs> <laughs> There's only fifty and a half. David's <laughs> wife got the other half. All right, buddy. Good luck with the book. Hey, thanks a lot. Right. Take care, Howard. Take care. Yeah, Jim. Hey. Hey. Uh, uh, is this Howard? Yes. Howard, uh, I just wanted to uh, add a, a story for you. Uh, I actually knew a uh, priest that uh, had a sex change at age 70. Whoa. <laughs> See, that's funny. Those I mean, what priests... do you do then? Why, you know. And did he become a nun? He, he did. He went through with it. The whole thing. It was like, you know, I don't it... know, six months worth of operations or something like that. I can't imagine it. Father Mary. <laughs> How does the church accept that? They don't. They kick you out. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, he's done. I mean, you know, he was a priest up until that day, and and the, the Catholic it. Church isn't real understanding. I mean, it's a religion, and yet they don't understand. Like the guy goes, "Well, I became a woman. You are out." <laughs> Fifty oh, years. He's, of- he's all done. Yeah, he's done. Imagine at seventy though, like you have to act on that urge. No. You yeah, because what does it get you? You know, like maybe the guy's gonna live another five years. Uh, so ridiculous. But he'll die happy. An old woman. Happy. He'll die an old woman. I want to die abroad. I don't want to die an old man. I want to die an old yeah, woman. I heard I'm, chicks I'm live not longer. I'm going to die a man. That yeah. I won't do. As I get older, I learn that chicks live longer, yeah. so I'm going to I'm gonna become one. That's at, 80, at 80, I want a vagina. Because <laughs> I need five more years. I need an 80 year old vagina. <laughs> All right. We got to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. All right. Music Alternative 92.3 K-Rock. Be very conscious of it. Feel the presence of it. Check this out. The Howard Stern Show. <laughs> Too many good docs are getting out of business. Too many OBGYNs aren't able to practice their, their love with women all across this country. Come in. Hi, Casey. Are you ready for your massage? Get undressed and lay on the table. Oh, yeah! Let me spin on it. Walk, 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 walk. <laughs> oh, yeah! This is the best massage I've ever given. Walk, 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 walk. <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Tomorrow, Chris Rock will be here today. Evil Dave Letterman. Hey, Dave. Good morning. How you doing? David Letterman, you've had a show on TV now. Uh, You lost the Tonight Show to Jay Leno. 
But uh, I, th- I and I have gotten more mail. People love when David Letterman is on our show, even more than when he's on the David Letterman show. Yeah, I, I just want to say one thing, Howard. Before we get started, can, you better call security because there's a, there's a black woman who just broke into the studio. She's behind that glass booth over there. <laughs> is, is that Robin? Oh, That's Robin. Is, is she housebroken, by the way? Oh, you are. You are so much more edgy yeah. here. Yeah. Why don't you say that to Biff? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, how come it's like you're so different on the TV show? I don't know. I just, you know, I, I just, you know, you, there's certain things you've got to be careful with the censors, and and I'm 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 happy being a father right now. And, and by the way, I, I want to tell you something. And I, I've mentioned this so many times on the show, but you know, I love the smell of my uh, my son's, uh, you know, duty diapers. You know, really? I like, I, I like to stick my head in the in the hamper and inhale until I pass oh. out. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's great here. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I know that uh, you're in a ratings battle with right. Jay Leno, and that's got to be a lot of pressure for you, but you continue to succeed, and yeah. uh, you know, good for you. In fact, Jay's ratings are an all-time low. Oh, so you... God. And, and by the way, is it just me, or, or did all those uh, those male gymnasts uh, at the Olympics look like a bunch of fags? What do you think? <laughs> I don't think it was just you. It's not just yeah. you, Dave. No. All right. I wasn't sure about that. Speaking of Olympics, Amanda Beard's going to be here. She won a bunch of, you know, she almost canceled last night. Uh, that's what I heard. I heard Baba Booey saying something about that. What went on? I think she won a bunch of medals and then figured maybe I better not show up here. Really? I think so. <laughs> How dare she? This isn't the place to come if you have a gold medal. Evidently, Gary yelled and intimidated the people and they, they booked her again. Wow. Do we have to point to all the other gold medal winners that have been here? Yeah, go ahead. Name a few. Uh... I don't have any off the top of my head. <laughs> Dave, do you know any? I, I know, Howard. I, I, I just had an accident. I, I don't know. What kind of accident? Huh? <laughs> I don't know. No, I do. I smell it. <laughs> well, Dave, thank you for being here this oh, morning. It's my pleasure. You know, and, and by the way, before we get started, I want to mention now, uh, just to get this clarified, I, I am against Bush. I, I hate Bush. And I think all all women, uh, you know, should shave their private so they look like, you know, six-year-old girls. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what is with that guy? He's a, he's, a, he's a former drunken cheerleader, for God's sakes. <laughs> right. All right. Look at Dave. On fire. On fire this morning. Doing a little monologue. Dave on yeah. fire. Yeah. Well, it's good to have you here. Thank you very much. And you still have Paul Schaefer and Biff oh, and God. that whole crew. Get rid of Paul. Ah, uh-huh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what surprised me about this whole thing, Howard? It's 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 been five minutes, and I'm surprised that 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 fat uh, you know CBS ass kisser uh, Benny Vivali hasn't called to say I'm not the real <laughs> David Letterman. Ah, uh-huh. <laughs> Benny. Yeah. Vinny. Vinny. <laughs> Vinny <laughs> Yeah. Guinea Favali. That's Favalli. a little, You call him Guinea Favali? <laughs> a little out of line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guinea. He really let his hair down. <laughs> Boy, that that one almost passed me by. Guinea yeah. Favali. Guinea Favali. That's racist. <laughs> Whatever. My house now. Look out. Ah ha! Guinea Favali. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I just want to say one thing. You know that 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 restless restless song that from Vinny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, sure it was a piece of crap. Uh, you know, I've heard. You know, Paul and I uh, made more uh, musical sounds uh, when he and I uh, double dated a young Hungarian man. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Dave. Yeah. Is that your Paul? <laughs> the best uh, Paul I can muster up. That's pretty good. <laughs> Who does a Paul shave? <laughs> I mean, that's all I do is the ah. What Artie was doing at first. Hey. I was like, wait a minute, is he doing Paul? Everyone else got it. <laughs> yes, Sharon, you're on the air. Ah. <laughs> yes, Sharon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I love you, but I have to say, I really think you're a fraud when it comes to marriage. Yeah, I'd say so, too. A because, fraud? Well, you might as well be married to Beth. What's the difference from what you're doing now and, and being married? There's a big difference. No, a piece right. of paper. Yeah, I don't believe that. That's just my point. What do you need a piece of what paper if you for? Stay single for about a week and then she moved in. Fine, but the point is, I'm not married. Yeah, but you do all the same things. In but what? Are, no, I don't, because I'm not married. Yes, you do. No, you don't. All women always want to make you believe. Yeah. It's the same thing. You might as well be married. I go, no, it's a big difference. The difference is when he decides he's tired or yeah. she's tired, they just walk away. Yeah. 
I don't have to get yeah, involved. With the there's no paperwork. Call anybody, and that's the point that he uh, doesn't like about marriage. I don't like being tied down to she like. Lived so, with you, Howard. So what? She lived with you, Howard. So, we ah. all understand what you're saying, my dear, but the legalities are what he was trying to. I make on. women nervous because they're like, well, wait a second. If enough guys listen to Howard, we'll never be able to sit at home on our fat ass and not work. Right. You're ruining <laughs> yeah, it for me. Yeah, you're ruining it for me and millions of other women who are looking for a daddy substitute. You're a fraud. I need someone to take care of me. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, go take, take care, care of yourself. Go make no, a fluffer you nutter for your old man. Yeah, How it isn't really your problem. It's the women who go along with him that have, yeah. uh, have the problem. Go take care of yourself. <laughs> go tell it to your father. Oh, Howard. Mary, please, Mary. <laughs> You're trying to kill me. Mary, just... Why now? Because two years ago, I slept eight hours... A year ago it was 12, it's up to 15 now, but he soon's going to be 24. What are you trying to do, scare me? I need a life. Get a job! I don't want a job, I want you. I'm taken by me! Get out of the house! Do something useful, goddammit! You wouldn't let me work when I wanted to. That was a year ago. Throw a tantrum every time you call and I'm not home. Look, sister, I'm out there in the jungle, eight hours a day. You wouldn't even let me canvas for Kennedy. You want a job? I got a job for you. <laughs> Fix up this pigsty. You get a pretty goddamn good salary for testing out this bed all day. You want an extra $50 a week? Try vacuuming. You want an extra 100 Make this goddamn bed. Try opening some goddamn windows. That's why you can't stand up in here. The goddamn place smells. Like a coffin! <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> the goddamn thing smells like a coffin. <laughs> hey, Dave, you're not even married and you had a kid. No, I, you know, I, I'm not bringing that up, but, you know, I just want to say one thing. We are. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. You know, I, oh. Yeah. But, you know, to, I'm, I'm getting ready for this 9-11 uh, thing, and, and to commemorate 9-11, uh, you know, this year, I, I'm going to go bowling. I just thought I'd pay. Oh, that's sensitive. Ah. <laughs> that's right. The What anniversary is it of 9-11? Oh, three. In the third year. Three years. Right? Wow. You, you've forgotten? I thought it was actually two. It was 2001. Yeah, three years. Thank you for reminding us, Dave. Yeah. Uh-huh. David Letterman, everyone, make sure you watch his show. It's 11.35 or something. Yeah. <laughs> CBS. I need all the help I can get. I know. I, I'm. So... Are you struggling? I thought you were doing well in the. Well, no, it's, it's not that, Robin. It's just I, I'm so sick of my freaking show that I kicked Paul Schaefer uh, in the nuts uh, the other day for no reason. You know, and it, it made me feel better, and I'm going to start doing it every day. Ah. 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 Nuts. Well, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Evil Dave is brutally honest on this show. Yeah. Hey, CJ, what's up? Hi, Howard. Hey. How's it going? Uh, I just want to let you know, I tried for two hours last night to get on the website. It was absolutely down. Very disappointing after you guys promoted it all day. HowardStrew.com was down? Yes. Well, what would happen? And actually, I'm in the e-commerce business, so, so I kind of know what was happening. From 9.30 p.m. till about 11.30 p.m., the base page would come up. But none of the links were working. You couldn't get to any of the movies. Nothing. Mm. Very frustrating. Wow. All right. Well. And I just want to say, wanna, can I'll I, go I, yell at some people. All right. Can I let you hear my my imitation of Tom Brokaw with the Bukaki thing? Sure. The plane crashed forty miles south of Abu Bukata. Abu Sir, do you have an agent? Abu Bukaki. <laughs> hmm. Great. I was going to attempt that. Good job. Hey, uh, JC, you're on the air. Hey, good morning. How are you? Hey, bro. Uh, hey, I just want to let you know, I was listening to the radio yesterday in D.C., and them fat pigs, Don and Mike, were just busting your chops yesterday big time. I guess that, that, that you had oh, a, gee, I'll a have lady to... from uh, Everybody Does Raymond show, Liam Leah or something. Remining? Yeah, Leah. We don't. Yeah, where, I don't know. I've never seen the show. But anyway, they were talking to her, and basically they were saying that she just didn't have the trust and confidence that they, she was loyal to their show, and basically they were busting on Big Bird, saying, "Why are you going to do Big Bird's show?" No, who cares, dude? Yeah, every every boring. radio guy is so jealous. Yeah, and I guess I guess Leah Remini can't do any shows, but 
Well, that's what they're saying. The they're Don saying, and Mike for 15 show. Fifteen years you've been ragging on them, saying if it wasn't for you, well, it's that true. You'd have no career. Well, I, I agree with that. No, I mean, I, I I remember when I was a disc jockey in Washington D.C. on DC 101. Uh, one of those guys, I don't even know, Don. He was a top 40 disc jockey playing um, like Britney Spears, mm -hmm. or whatever Britney Spears was at the time. Whoever, you know, I mean, Debbie who, Gibson. Debbie well, Gibson it wasn't like, and, yucking, and yucking like, you know, hey, oh, oh, Debbie Gibson. Now, you know, trying to syndicate and failed at that. I mean, well, all, these, all these, I mean, let it go. There's, a, there's a, you know, there's a Jimmy and Bob, a Don and Mike, a, a, a Lou and, and Betsy combo on every, in every market in the country, and it drives them crazy to distraction that nobody's as successful still in radio as me. Well, the thing was, she was apologizing for being on your show. No, hey, that's her problem. Don't, don't come on. Who cares? You got a big star like Leah Remini. Yeah, I mean, Leah Remini's tearing up the show business world. I mean, <laughs> uh, what can so I tell you? She can't take the barbs about Scientology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, sorry. Yeah, sorry, we're not going to sit there and kiss Leah Remini's ass. I'm, <laughs> I'm really, I'm really, I, I'm really hurt that she won't come on the show anymore. I mean, I can't tell you what that's going to do to my ratings. It'll probably crush me. <laughs> Please don't tell people mm -hmm. we can't get her. Uh, yeah. No, well, anyway. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice syndication effort that went on there. A, a massive rejection. Don and Mike. I mean, all these guys. Just waiting to take our guests who decide they can't do this show. <laughs> I caught a little bit of Don and Mike once driving, for, I think, like Philly to D.C. or something. It is, uh, it is. It's unlistenable. Grotesque. Well, they tried to put it on New York. It was unlistenable. Ugh. It's Howard Stern, but it's like a weird, like. It's embarrassing. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. It's, it sounds like the show, and then it, but it doesn't quite. Yeah. There's no honesty. But it's not only them. There's so many goddamn Howard Stearns out there. I've had it. Time to go create other things. I mean, it's it's just become ridiculous. It's getting to be goddamn ridiculous, right, Dave? I mean, exactly. You know, and by the way... I think Jay copies everything you do. Oh, he's, he's a thief. He just takes yeah. everything. By the way, has anyone uh, ever ordered a pizza from Domino's and answered the door <laughs> while pleasuring themselves? I have. Here. Yeah. I know oh, Beetlejuice. Geez, Beetlejuice. It's yeah. like a, an epidemic. Beetlejuice has done that. I've <laughs> seen it on his tape. Yeah, Beetlejuice has it on yeah. tape. We're, we're thinking about that, doing that for November sweeps. I don't know. Well, you've already been uh, <laughs> topped. Yeah. Yeah, Beetlejuice thought of that before you. <laughs> All right. I saw Beetlejuice do that, and then he answers the door naked. And he's completely aroused. Hey, say oh, what you want. No. That, Beetle goes, just, that Beetle just DVD is hilarious. Yeah, and then he goes, yeah, put, put that pizza on the table. Let me ask you something. <laughs> then he wipes. Hey, does he have normal size? Yeah. Oh, he's pretty big, actually. He's been really? in here. I yeah. guess you missed it. You know, I did. I, I don't he, know. Then he, I got to put one of those on uh, the Uncensored on the website. Yeah. I'm going to prepare one of those. The oh. one where, where I think it was Beetlejuice that gets a carrot eaten from his... <gasps> right. Uh, oh. I, I don't even know what you can say, but... So the guy walks in from, like, I don't know if it's Domino's or some delivery thing, and uh, Beetlejuice takes the money and wipes his butt with it and then hands it to the guy. Oh, man. <laughs> That's good stuff. Horrible. How about when Beetlejuice was in here, Fred Durst is sitting here trying to promote an album, and Beetlejuice is naked next to him. <laughs> Drunk. I, I mean, remember. that might be my favorite thing of all time. I don't remember Beetlejuice being naked. Yeah, Fred Durst requested Beetlejuice to be here, and God, he didn't know what he was getting into. <laughs> Yeah, Dave, so that's been done. Oh, God. Well, you ought to get rid of him. You know, you know, I finally got rid of that idiot, uh, Craig Kilborn. You know, I've had hemorrhoid uh, attacks that were easier to sit through than his show. <laughs> <laughs> well, who are you going to replace him with now? I yeah. Who are you going to get to replace Craig Kilborn? Any rumors I, out there? I don't know. Artie, you hear anything? Uh, no. No. I haven't. They've got some guest hosts coming. I, actually, I heard Dia, uh, Dia Ugly. No. Well, he's I one heard, of the guest hosts yeah, that they're going to try out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know who he is, and that sounds bad. <laughs> I've had him on the show. Huh? Oh, have we? Oh, <laughs> he's doesn't... funny. He's he's very funny, actually. But uh, you know, I'd get he... George Takei. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good idea. Welcome to my show, <laughs> the Late Late Show. <laughs> Yes, right there in the Starfleet uniform. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't you love that? Yeah. You there, drooling from your mouth. Anyone with a voice that deep must have a big dong. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll ask uh, Robin if she wants. You to there go. with the chronic acne in the back hair. Uh, do, uh, uh, under the uh, the uh, 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 um oh. Uh. <laughs> uh. There's a show I'd watch. 
Why wouldn't anyone make him like the neighbor on a sitcom or something? Yeah, why are they not using him? I mean, that's just a no-brainer. He should have been that guy that, who's, uh, you only saw the top of his head on that Tim Allen. Hello, Tim. <laughs> well. How are you? That's my plan. <laughs> that's my plan on HowardStern.com. In addition to uncensored uh, e-shows. Yeah. I might, like, do a George Takai movie. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just take Joy Takai, George Takai and put him in shows. Like George yeah, Takai. Yeah, it's insane. And... I'll, like, I'll, like, get this, one of the old scripts from All in the Family or something. George yeah. Takai and Terminator. Like, I'll yeah. be back. <laughs> yeah, any of that. Oh. <laughs> and may the force be with you. <laughs> and also with you. <laughs> What, Dave? No, I just, you, you got me thinking. We, we do have to get somebody for his show. Yeah. Put him in Gone with the Wind. <laughs> ah. Maybe maybe Leslie will come up with something. Ah. <laughs> Dog. You with the large cranium. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that laugh is a little demented. <laughs> <laughs> that, sounds like a, that sounds like the last thing John Wayne Gacy's victims hear. Nice. <laughs> Before I kill you, I'm going to play George Takai's laugh. Uh. <laughs> it will put the shampoo in the bucket. Let me give a shout out to uh, Robin's Booyah, Schmoozy, Shroomsy, and uh, uh, Allah's Moist Camel Toes. Yay! Those are some of the people I was talking to on HowardStern.com. Uh, that right. sounds like bulletin board people. Yeah. And Cabby's mom, hi. <laughs> and sorry. Yeah, since he's not talking to you. In the, new, in the weird news, not the real news. Well, it is real. I mean, it's over the wire. A father who allegedly tried to circumcise his eight-year-old son in the bathroom after reading selections from the Bible has been charged with first-degree assault of a child. You know, because in the Bible, the way circumcision came about, he, God told this guy to... Uh, what was that guy's name? Moses or something. And Abraham. Abraham, that's Lincoln. it. Oh. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> he to God told Abraham Lincoln to take his son up to a mountain and kill him. Oh. Yeah. Do you know the story of this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so... God says, kill your son for me if you really love me. Oh, oh and By the way, this is why religion has totally screwed up this world. Uh -huh. These Somebody wrote these cock and bull stories. There's absolutely no truth to any of them. God with a good imagination. And then we raise our young to read these stories over and over again. And then when they become schizophrenic, they start hearing God's voice telling them to kill their kids. Yet, we never say we should ban the Bible. No. If a movie had as bad a track record as the Bible... People would be screaming that it never be shown. The again. Bible's the most dangerous. If there was a movie out there that was so real that told people you're going to hear voices and kill your son and uh -huh. it's voices from God, we would say, look, it's irresponsible to put that out. They, right. would, they would boycott the movie studio. So this book, we, we form, we take our children when they're young and we go, listen, there's going to be a voice in your head. And it's going to tell you, if it tells you to take your son and kill him, you do it. Yeah, listen to if that. I ever commit murder, I'm just going to use that as a defense. I go, sure. wait a second. I heard the voice of God. <laughs> Got to say that word, religion. <laughs> so anyway, then at the last minute, God goes, okay, I was just testing you. Don't kill your son, but cut this, cut the, that really sensitive piece of skin off his yeah. penis. Hack off his penis. <laughs> Hack off a piece of his penis. <laughs> now, you'd say to yourself, look. I think I'm hearing the voice of God, but he's telling me to do crazy things. <laughs> he's nuts. He's, he's nuts. He's, okay. I hear God, but I'm not going to listen. I understand killing my kid for God, although I really don't. I'll go that far. I'll go that you. far. But to hack off a, a slice of his penis. <laughs> and now, and people buy this. They actually buy it. If yeah. you put it in a movie, they'd say, man, weak premise. Right. Uh, I give it a D minus. <laughs> what a stupid horror film. Two thumbs down. I mean, the 12 apostles just got drunk and wrote a bunch of crazy stuff down. Well, how about President Bush says God told him to invade Iraq? Yeah. He's another whack job. Yeah. God. All right. Yeah, hi. <laughs> Howard, this is God. I want you to kill your son. No, God, I can't do that. No, I told you to do it. All right, I'll go kill him. No, 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 I was just kidding. I want you to paint your son's toenails multiple colors. <laughs> oh. But he's going to be a big homo. Uh, <laughs> Dress your son like a ballerina and take him trick-or-treating. You know, Howard, can I say something? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I, I just want to say that, you know, I was a draft Dodger Jew, too. Can I? A draft you know? Dodger Jew? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. David Letterman? I thought Letterman was a Jew. I, I, said I, was a, I said I was a draft Dodger, too. Can I oh. join Bush's cabinet? Sure. <laughs> Maybe if you were a draft Dodger Jew. <laughs> <laughs> but you were yeah. going on. This, it was at the end of the story. No. Okay. So the guy goes and circumcises his son because God told him to. You know, I guess it was the same oh, as... Oh, yeah, he yeah. read the... 
I would say, well, I better do this to my son, too. He became concerned and called 911 when the boy appeared to be losing too much blood. Yikes. Oh, my God. Uh, Baxter told deputies he had no medical training. Well, that's good. Well, they neither did Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Uh, so now I guess the guy's up on charges, but he shouldn't be because he was taught as a youth that this is what you do when God Absolutely. talks to you. He was trying to make his son conform right. with the law. <laughs> you should be allowed to do whatever you want based on that. And all those that. religious yahoos should be defending this guy in court. Yeah, the same way they put down homosexuals. Since the Bible says it. Yeah, he's trying to work by that word. Uh, the whole world's so screwed up with wacko just dummies. Hey, uh, we played a tape yesterday of... What time is it? Is the Olympic chick here? It was Amanda. Amanda Beard. I got so many good things to tell you, though. Is the chick here? Hello? Hey, did you ever uh, hear of Amanda Beard? Oh, by the way, I got a picture in the mail. I'm all over the place, but I got a picture in the mail of the... Is she here? Just walked in. Just walked in? Is she hot? I think so, yeah. Yeah? She wearing a bikini? No, but she's wearing like a little, like sort of tank, t the tube top, you know, a little spaghetti strap on the uh -huh. back. Spaghetti <laughs> strap. <laughs> High in carbs. Spaghetti strap, both. <laughs> Yesterday we played a tape of, um, you know, from the Star Trek convention. Gary Garver went there to tape George Takei. Yes. Oh, God. But uh, after the tape, uh, they the press interviewed uh, the guy who played Scotty on Star Trek. Doohan. James yeah. Doohan. And James Doohan evidently has Alzheimer's, so his wife and his son stands there and answers the questions for him. So, wait, should I play so that again? Sad. Yeah, I mean, it's, All right, it's wait, wait. Fascinating. Let me just do this answer. setup. You got it? All right. So I got a letter from Chris Doohan. That's Scott. That's Mr. Scott's right. son. Yeah, he was there answering questions. Howard, I missed the show today, but I heard that you pretty much trashed me and my dad. Oh, no one's trashing your dad, trash dude. It's like we don't know your dad. What, what are you doing, man? You gotta. Well, in his defense, you know how people talk crap after we talk about him on the radio. You know, it gets confused. It gets a lot worse when we're not saying. Being a fan of your show, I know that's what you do, so I'm not terribly offended about the things you say about me. But my dad is another story. Well, I didn't trash. Definitely your dad. didn't trash Scotty. We yeah. felt bad for your dad. I'm sure, but then he goes, this is weird, like he's pissed off about me trashing his, him and his father, and he goes, I'm sure you don't have the balls for this, but I'd like to challenge you to a battle of the bands. The mud flaps against the losers. If we win, for which I have no doubt, you will give my dad an apology. We only challenge celebrity bands. That's stretching it celebrity-wise, the son of <laughs> <Yeah>. Doohan. <laughs> the son of Scotty from Star Trek. What? I've spoken to him a bunch of times, uh, Chris Duhan. You know what he does, right? What? No. He runs, I wish I could remember the exact name of it, but he runs like Scotty's Restaurant or... Yeah, it, there's a restaurant. It's a, a theme restaurant. It's a theme restaurant. We took all his dad's stuff and it's up on the wall. It's a Scotty restaurant. Cool. Well, so that's not a celebrity. He's invested heavily. Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> but he's invested heavily in the whole Scotty thing. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, Scotty. <laughs> so anyway, it was pretty bad. Uh, what time did we play this yesterday? Same time? Probably. No, it was, it was earlier. earlier. We play yeah, like we 7.30. we were talking about oh. the Star Trek stuff early in the day. All right, if you missed it. Uh... Well, first off, I'd like to, to uh, welcome all of you, and thank you for coming. Uh, obviously, we're here to honor my dad and his long career in the film industry. And uh, I... They always do that. I pointed this out yesterday. He always says, like, in the film industry, because Scotty doesn't want to what be known. What movies do you know him from know. besides the Star Trek? He probably did a lot of them, but, you know. You don't know him from mm -hmm. those, though. I'd like to introduce you to the family that's up here, obviously. Mr. Oh, James Dewan. Here in the middle. Don't squeeze. Why not? His beautiful wife, Wendy. What is she saying, don't squeeze? What's going on there? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Must be squeezing her. Because he's got Alzheimer's. Don't, don't squeeze. 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 With an E. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Chris. And anyway, I'd like to open it up. Anybody else have a statement they'd like to say or just open it up for questions? James, uh, what's the Associated Press? Uh, you can tell us what this weekend, weekend means and, uh, and how you are feeling these days. How do you feel these days? How do I feel? Yes. Great. <laughs> That's a lie. Now, is that little kid singing in the background, Scott? He's kid? Yeah. He's got uh, like a four-year-old. He's 84 years old. He's got a four-year-old. Uh, do you like all the attention this weekend? Hmm? Do you like all the attention this weekend? All the attention you're getting? Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. 
Uh, I really don't think he should be at Star Trek conventions. No, you know, he shouldn't be uh, anywhere. That was my point yesterday. That's not trashing him. It's, you know, it, let us remember him the way he was. At this point, he thinks he's a tribble. <laughs> <laughs> Let us remember him in that embarrassing uniform from Star yeah. Trek IV. That's right, not like this. Yeah, that proud moment when he... Yes, right there in the Starfleet uniform. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, you in the Scotty mustache. Yeah. <laughs> what is it like to see your fellow castmates from the original Star Trek? All right. Was it fun to see everybody from the original Star Trek, George, Walter, and everybody? Yes, yes, there were uh, people of an age... Did you say they have AIDS? George sounds a little fruity to me. <laughs> I never really spoke to George on the set, but oh, Christ, he sounds weird. None of them even liked each other. A lot of them didn't. Well, I think you know? all of these guys liked each other, and they hated Leonard and, and Bill. How did they get a whole bunch of reporters to even show up for a, a Scotty interview? Because he's got Alzheimer's. You think that's it? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be a bunch of positive articles coming out. But how do you, you know, how many times do you get to interview somebody? Was it good to see your former Star Trek castmates? Honey, I've been seeing them for the last 30 years <laughs> at every convention. I don't know what you're talking about. Jimmy, Star Trek Monthly here. What, what is your memories of Star Trek, your favorite part of doing the whole show? He's never answered that before. Your favorite memories of Star Trek. Well, see, now it's a challenge. Do you have a favorite memory of Star Trek? Actually, no. Uh, I remember making out with Sulu by craft service. I don't remember yesterday. In fact, I don't remember ten minutes ago. Was I in Star Trek? What's your favorite memory about the ride over here? Yeah. <laughs> we stopped at a red light on Coanga. Yeah. I, I don't care about you, but uh, you know, I don't care if Florida gets hit by hurricanes. Ask him a question like that. What, Dave? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> going off book. Yeah. Oh, I, I tell you, it's just marvelous. Really marvelous. <laughs> and, uh. Yes. You know what? It is, it's marvelous. George Takei is thrilled because now yeah. he's the only guy at the he Star just Trek. Moved up. He's, he's up the only guy that, oh. Because Scotty was a principal. George yeah. Takei wasn't in that many episodes. Now Sulu has suddenly become the featured guy at the Star Trek convention with Scotty out of commission. Absolutely. Nimoy not showing up. Shatner doesn't show up. Ahura's nobody. I'm hitting cleanup. I believe the whole Star Trek franchise is mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I mean, you know, you're not going to play the whole George Decay thing, but he says that he worked on the subway of Los Angeles, <laughs> and they employed the Star Trek philosophy. Well, oh. I, can't, I can't play now because Amanda Beard's here. I worked on the gay train. <laughs> oh. I finally get the big cabin on the cruise. Oh, he's great. Talked about it. Well, yes. Good to be a no. part of it. Yeah, because we're we love being at the conventions as children. Oh, we loved it. Rubbing shoulders with people in the Klingon uniforms and <laughs> yeah, we love that. His dad loves the fans. Yeah, that's too well. weird. It's, you know, it's uh, but you know, we liked hanging around, yes, especially in this very, show. Like, it's very nice to look out over fifteen to twenty thousand <laughs> people, hmm. and that's a, an audience. It is. Mm. Yeah. He loves yes. his audience. And that's kind of what this whole convention here is about, too, is just, uh, you know, giving the fans a, you know, a, a last, last uh, sort of a... Before our dad dies, we want to give him a look. I well, you know weird. what? We should have pulled the tape of him when he was on this show to, to show people how quickly this happened. Yeah. This was just a couple of years ago that he was here. Yeah. Hey, hey look, we got to bring him in. Yeah, Dave. I just want to say to Artie, you know, it sounds like somebody needs a drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ah. Why do you think Artie's a drunk? No, I just think that Scotty sounds like Artie needing a drink or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Ooh, becoming like hieroglyphic. Got to know what when to come in with those lines. Be? Oh! <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and take. Welcome. It. Last hurrah. Last hurrah. Last hurrah. <laughs> last hurrah. Yeah. yeah. So, what's your lasting thoughts you can give the uh, fans? What? Oh, what's the question? Do you, have a, do you have a a lasting thought or wish to? I haven't had a thought in weeks. Last hurrah! <laughs> I thought the last hurrah was when you're supposed to be having the good time. I don't think Scotty's having a very. Any good last hurrah? Yeah, hurrah! <laughs> I'm thinking my diaper needs changing. <laughs> give the fans 
the fans of Star Trek. Well, of what? <laughs> Say it again. Keep on Funny. doing it. There you go. Well, keep, keep on, on doing, doing what? Right. Thank you. That's keep great. on doing nothing. It's Keep on doing, staring at the wall. Keep on not getting laid. <laughs> <laughs> keep on wearing those Klingon outfits and never getting laid the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Keep on learning Klingon. <laughs> keep on taping the middle of your glasses and not talking to women. <laughs> Howard. Keep on growing that back hair. Yeah. You know, Howard? <laughs> yes, Dave. You know what? If I was at that Star Trek convention, you know what I would ask, Scotty? What? what? You, know, where, you know, where does uh, Dick Cheney hide his dyke daughter? Is she hot or does she look like Rosie O'Donnell? <laughs> hey, listen, let's take a look at... Uh, I know it's been a while since we took a break, and I know we have to take one, but you I... You know, Dave started off hot. Let's get Amanda Beard in here just to look her over a little bit. All Amanda right. Beard. I'm just saying that Dave's uh, material is cooling a little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, you were good in the beginning. <laughs> now you suck. I know. Here she is, an Olympic... Is she a gold medalist? I think she has gold medals, yeah. I don't know anything about her. I didn't even know she was a swimmer. Yeah. But... She's been swimming for a long time. She's been in a few Olympics. Wait, don't move. Let me look you over, baby. Hold on. Oh, my. She is very pretty. Oh, you're not bad at all. Hey, you're hot. Good. We're going to have sex today <laughs> with a gold medalist. That's cool, a gold medal. I have a tally. <laughs> she what got is it? multiple medals. Yeah. How many you got, she, she Amanda? Won, she won, I have seven. Yeah. Seven, cool. She won three in this Olympics. Hey, Baba Boo, shut up and let her talk. Crying and help her with the okay. headphones. <laughs> you know, for someone so coordinated, you're having a lot of trouble with those headphones. <laughs> in the water, I'm oh. coordinated. <laughs> you're like Aquaman. In the water, you're cool, but you get out and then things get hard. I'm a little clumsy out of the water. When did you start swimming? When I was four. Cool. I started swimming when I was four, but I sucked. <laughs> Just like everything else. <laughs> and I got taught by a bunch of drunks. I, I, I'm being honest. Drunks? Four was the age I started stealing. Yeah. What do you mean drunks <laughs> taught you to swim? Went to a summer camp that was a welfare camp. And uh, the guys who taught you, they taught me how to swim, but I... What were you doing at a welfare camp? Well, it was $300. My dad didn't have any money. It was $300 for the summer. <laughs> now it's got... time for the breaststroke. <laughs> yeah. You went up there, and these guys <laughs> thought you had it, and they were goofing on you. They go, okay, in time for instructional swim. <laughs> Come here, fruity. Come here, ass. We're going to do the butterfly. All right, a-hole. Let's see the breaststroke. <laughs> you probably had, like, real good instruction, right? Um... Actually, I only swam in the summers up until I was about 12 years old. And when did they realize how good you were? When I was about 12. Yeah. What, it happened in school or something? You are in a little race? and. Um, well, I was, no one could ever beat me. Yeah. So they are like, okay, you're kind of good. So When I was 12, <laughs> I was good at nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you know what? 12, 15, 22, it nothing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so you were 12 years old, and they were like, wow, she's a pretty good swimmer. And then your parents said, hey, maybe we'll get her some really good lessons. Yeah, definitely. I started swimming year-round, and then when I turned 14, I made my first Olympic team. Where'd you, where'd you grow up? In Orange County, California. Well, no kidding. She looks like an Orange County broad. Yeah, you're pretty wholesome. I don't wholesome. know how to take that. No, you're, that, that good that's or bad? a huge compliment. I've heard good and bad things You kind of look Sheryl Crow-ish. Yeah. Anyone ever tell you that? No. I've never heard that. That's a good one. thing. I, I take that as a complete compliment. You know what I like about you? For a swimmer, like you don't have that big, broad back, like a guy. I feel very muscular and like I have a big back. You don't. Nice. Do, you feel very, do you feel fit? I feel fit, but I feel like too manly, not very feminine. Let me say, are you crazy? No, <laughs> she, you're real feminine. Why? Because you don't have big, giant boobs? You'll get, you'll get those oh, fixed well, yeah. when you, when you no stop swimming. I swim if I, I had big I know, boobs. when you stop swimming, we'll fix those. Okay. When you do the, uh, when you do the, uh, the hustler layout, we'll fix that. Oh, thanks, baby. <laughs> uh, Amanda Beard is going to have sex with an antelope in this issue. <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. No, no you got a really nice body. Your thanks. arms are toned and thin. Thanks. By Orange County chick, I mean, like, you just stunning. You look, you have a stunning look to you, like a permanent tan, like those eyes. Like, those California chicks all look like that. Like, yeah. really good. And you got nice hair, too. Yeah, good It's not oh, all kinky. That's good. Yeah. yeah. It's not all kinky curly. That's hard curly to do to... when you're in the water all the time, too. What do you do? Do you ever, like, shave your head so you get better trajectory? <laughs> no, don't you wear <laughs> those caps and all that? Yeah, yeah, I wear a swim cap all the time. And then I yeah. have a lot of people working on my hair. So. You know what I love? And I don't know how intentional it was, but like when you guys were, you can't wear bikinis at the um, at the Olympics yeah. and stuff. I mean, you can if you play volleyball. We'd get more uh, attention if we could. But what I like is your ass is in such great shape from swimming, which we I have can't even. Small asses. Oh, but Swimmers they're tight. Have really small butts. <laughs> and then like I notice all your bathing suits, like they almost go into the crack of your ass. Uh -huh. And then your whole like the whole like your whole behind kind of like is like Sticking your thigh out. and your behind. The it's best nice. is the Brazilians. 
Yeah, they they go crazy. Yeah, they have, they have well, they have one. They have nice butts, and two, they just yank them right up their ass. So. Yeah, and you can see camel toe also on some of them. And then that's real hot. Yeah, that's so hot. <laughs> I love Brazilian camel toe. Me too. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> Let's have phone sex. Give me your phone number. I'll call you. <laughs> so how old are you now? 22. Yeah, that's hot. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. It's a good age. Don't get older. So how many Olympics I'll be 22 you? the next time you see me, too. Have Go you ahead. been in? How many Olympics? This was my third. Wow. Let's talk about your ass. Never mind the Olympics. But that's, I mean, three different <laughs> Olympic games. That's amazing. Yeah, Thank congratulations. You. I mean, yeah. that's such an accomplishment. You know, I'm just not good at it. I can't that imagine being... dedication over a long period of time. Yeah. Something you never learned. See, I don't know if I'd <laughs> want to be that accomplished at 22, because where do you go from there? I mean, three Olympics, Wheaties that's... box. I guess so, but... What are you going to... Are you getting any endorsements? Um, yeah. What do you, what do you have? Uh, Speedo and nice. Red Bull. What's a thing like Speedo? Red Bull. Put? Yeah, Red uh, Bull. Wow. Do you, do you, oh, you, yeah. You don't really drink that stuff. Mm. You, no, you do. Yeah. I do. <laughs> Look at me. I do. Yeah, you're kind of wired, had one actually. Before I got in Did here, you actually. really? Yeah. But but speedo, like, how does it work with speedo? You have to wear their bathing suits at the Olympics. Yeah, I wear their swimsuits, their cap, and their goggles. That's cool. Even yeah. if it sucks, you wear it because they pay you, right? Um, I would. Well, if you didn't, you just paste their logo on. I don't know. Then I wouldn't be very fast if the swimsuit sucked. Oh, what? The swimsuit matters. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A lot. Oh, I didn't know that. Really? What do you mean you have to Cutting the right? down friction. Oh, yeah, please. well, the, the, the swimsuit fabric is actually a lot faster than your skin. And you have to shave off every bit of your body hair, even your, your mom's pubis. Well, if that's <laughs> showing. <laughs> no, but because you don't want, the suits the are so skin tight, you don't want, like, popcorn in your pants. <laughs> popcorn. Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah, I would think so. Right. I mean, you don't want a little extra something. No, if you get some major camel toe and you see pop. I don't know. So you're telling me that, like, Speedo just will pay you. How much do they pay? Yeah, what's that pay? Can um, you make some decent bread? It's not It's not something like you're a basketball player. Right. But I can definitely support myself and live nice. pretty nice. Now, I didn't think so. you were allowed to make money uh, uh, in endorsements if you're in the Olympics. Yeah, you can. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, please. you got to make some money. Yeah, I mean, I how do you to swim for I think it's be great, swimming. but... I'd be... I don't know what I would be doing if I could make money swimming. What were you? Uh, you were an FHM or Maxim or one FHM. of them? FHM. FHM. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the spread. You looked pretty hot. Thanks. I liked it. Thank Because you. you didn't look all muscular. Well, that's good. How are your legs? Are they muscular? Um, I don't think they're too bad. Yeah. They're what do not, you weigh? They're not. I weigh about 130. And how tall are you? 5'8". Yeah, you see, that's all muscle. Yeah. That's good. Athlete. Yeah. So what do you do, like swim all the time? Um, What's I the guy got to do to get into your pants? <laughs> yeah, how long are That's you in the pool? No, do I have to be a swimmer? I'm in the pool about four hours a day, and wow. I lift weights for about an hour a day, and then I run a couple times a week. So your whole life is devoted to I the swimming. I train a lot, yeah. Do you and date? what about... Oh, yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. But who has... To, what, do you but have, I can't... It's. Are you exhausted? I don't have time to go out and find the dates. Right. But I'd be also, like set up or something. Look no further. Do you further. drink? Do you smoke? You can't do any of the fun stuff. Oh, I mean, I... You can't smoke I a little weed? Let my, I, if, I, <laughs> if I only just swam, then that'd be pretty boring. Can you smoke some weed or like that's no. against the rules? <laughs> you can't you can't. Like we get drug tested all the time, uh, so... So what do you do, just drink? Um... <laughs> Occasionally. Yeah. You know, yeah, God so, forbid somebody get into the pool high. Yeah. Yeah, you know how dangerous that, that is. I've done time. that. I tried a, on a booze cruise in the Bahamas once. I, I go, went swimming drunk, and it was a glass bottom boat, and I tried to moon my buddies, and I got caught like a dolphin in a tuna net. I don't know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I almost drowned. See, that's why you can't smoke. Yeah. See, Stuff we like should've, that. We should have we should have uh, had a swimming contest today. <laughs> a a pool in here. In the yeah. Hudson. Would have been nice. And ew. So, like, you don't meet a lot of guys except for like Olympic dudes, right? I, I meet a lot of athletes. Have which you ever? Is don't want to be fine with. You me. never dated oh, an athlete. Um, I have dated athletes. Yeah, that must be hot because both of you have like really good bodies. Both really strong. That's why I like athletes. They have wonderful bodies. Yeah, you wouldn't so. like me much. I'm pretty soft. <laughs> I haven't seen your body. Oh, uh, you're lucky. <laughs> you ever date someone who's the direct opposite of an athlete? <laughs> no, I haven't. Right. I don't like, think I could handle it. And like, is the pool like almost like your religion? Like, would you ever f a guy in a pool, <laughs> or would that be like sacrilege to you? <laughs> like, would you ever have sex in the water? Have or, I? No. Yeah. Or would you ever do? Or would that be like? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Man's a professional. Yeah, who does those That's things? That's Fred. Fred, That's take a bow. Go ahead. 
The genius but who's Fred the chick that's on that doing it? That's Fred, actually. That's Fred. Fred does the voice, too. <laughs> yeah. Fred we recorded nice Fred voice. getting banged in the Hudson River. <laughs> so that's hot. W- you would never have sex in a pool? Um. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I... That's a category I haven't even thought about. But really. you're more comfortable you in a pool than you are even in, on land, which is odd for a human being. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Well, I'm in the wa- I'm in the water so much. I know. Are you sick of the I'm water? I'm like a fish. I'm a dolphin. Do you think when you retire from like Olympic stuff, you'll just forget swimming? Because um, what can you do with it anyway? Are you? I mean, yeah. yeah. Do you love it or do, is it just a job now? I, well, it's both. I do love it, but it's also a job. So uh-huh. it's kind of like. You go to, it's going to work for me, yeah. which isn't bad because I get Like, what's nice a fun hand. day for you? Is a fun day for you like, you know what? I'm not going to swim in the pool. I'll swim in a lake. And like, I won't <laughs> no. have to do laps. Yeah, I don't want any lines no. on whatever Because then I, I run into, ugh, you know. A pool's like a nice, clean pool. You like the, because you don't like lakes? Do you ever swim in the ocean? Yeah, yeah. I like to go surfing and stuff like oh, that. Oh, no, oh, man, that's hot. <laughs> you wear bikinis when you go surfing? Of course. Oh, yeah, you got some little body on you. Why? That's if hot. Everybody else is wearing the skimpiest of outfits. The swimmers have to wear a whole suit. I know. Yeah, that would be hot if you didn't wear a suit. That's naked. hot. You know, at, at Scott the Engineer, when he was in high school, because he's like 52, yeah. <laughs> they used to make the boys swim naked. Oh, the boys at no. the school across from really? us? You don't want to see naked. that, though. Do you ever swim naked? No. Never? Well, so... Have you ever been in the water naked? Yeah. Oh, you have? Yeah. You ever pee in have a pool? Have you ever skinny dipped? Yeah, once. It, was, it wasn't was good. I did it with a girl and I... I uh, wasn't a good sight? She just laughed at what I looked like. Okay. That's, <laughs> if the water's cold, it's all over. And, um, and but, but do you ever pee in the pool? Everyone pees in the pool. Did you pee in the Olympic pool? Be honest. Oh, yeah. You do? Everyone oh, does. Man. I think every single athlete there peed in the pool a couple times. Oh, but you don't do, do you it ever, while you're swimming. Yeah, do you ever pee? No. Do you pee during an event? <laughs> no. No. That'd be impossible. You can't relax to actually go. Wow. Oh, so like when you're waiting to go, sometimes you just let it out? When you're warming up or something. That's hot. And, do you and what, what do you do when you have your period? Can you wear a tampon when you compete? Yeah. Oh, you can? Yeah. In the pool? Yeah. What do you get, mean? Does I mean, it, can you bathe you can. with it yeah, or take it, a doesn't bath? It, but doesn't it get all, yeah. like, doesn't it expand and the slow you down? The tampon is no, inside. It's inside, yeah. You're good to go. It's fine. I, see I Dave. can't stop swimming for a week every month. I, 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 I see Dave Letterman <laughs> once. Can, work. can Dave Letterman ask you a question? I just want to ask you a question. Yeah. Now, now you, you, you're allowed to have uh, tampons in the pool, right? It like I floating that. around oh. in the Cause, pool? Because can they float up to the to the you know the water? Dave, I just asked oh. that. I just I, want to know if they float like jellyfish. This is such separate. a guy question because All they right. don't clearly understand ha, yeah, the whole. They, don't, they have a clue about the. No. Right, right. So when you were when you you swam in high school? Yeah. And then, like, a lot of the girls would be naked and stuff in the Hot, locker room. Wet. Yeah, you got to change out your uh, suit. Do you ever get attracted to any of the other girls? No. I definitely think they have nice bodies, but I don't have attraction to them. You've never made it with a chick? No. I don't believe that for a minute. I, it's true. Really? I don't. I, there's nothing there that it makes me want to do that. So when did you start going out with guys? Um, I started dating when I was like 13. Oh, 13. Yeah. 13. You started doing it at 13? No. Howard, I'm a good girl. <laughs> are you? Yeah. I like that. How good are you? I'm oh. Sure. <laughs> oh, Artie, come on. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. gold medalist. I'm sorry. It's it's matter, that was very disrespectful to you and the country. Right. <laughs> Does President Bush call you when you win a gold medal? No. He's a dick. You don't know, get on the phone. I care. <laughs> What a dick he There's is. There's so many people. You'd have to call so many yeah. people. Yeah, so get on the phone and call. What is he? He's at the ranch. He's busy. <laughs> it's not like he's working. He's at Camp David. So how long can you hold your breath underwater? Um, just sitting there, I could probably hold it for probably two minutes. How long can wow. you hold your breath in the, a trunk? <laughs> Why would she do that? <laughs> Already thinking okay, of you taking need to her move further down yeah. the couch. <laughs> so you started dating when you were 13, but you didn't have sex till what, 19? Um, I was a lot older. That was... I w- was probably like 17. And her guy's like, wow, I'm doing an Olympic gold medalist. No, I don't think it's anything like that. I would be doing that. It's a lot of pressure. Was. Was <laughs> but that's why Olympic I probably medalist. didn't have it sooner, because that's the kind of guys I was meeting. You know, you're not, yeah, uh, guys like me who would just want, to, want you for, to be because you're a gold medalist. Yeah, yeah, those are the guys I stay away from. You do? Yeah. Yeah, smart. <laughs> and stay away from me. <laughs> <laughs> so you, like, so you don't have a boyfriend now. Mm-mm. Did you ever go out with a guy for a long time? Yeah. What yeah. happened to him? Where's he? Um, he, we're, we're best friends. Yeah. Now, did, so. was there any dating going on in Athens with all these athletes together? Oh, I'm sure. I you mean, you have all any... these beautiful bodies walking around. Yeah. It's bound to happen. But you didn't have anything going on over there? Me, no. I was too busy, which sucks, but <laughs> I was oh, definitely oh. looking, but. Yeah. You know, it's funny, just because the chicks are really good athlete, I think guys think they can't be sexy. 
You know, that the chick can't be sexy, but you you got a real sexy smile, body, you know, got a good face. It's nice. Yeah, but swimming is one of those sports where you could tolerate. It's not like female wrestling. No, come on. Have you seen some of the chicks she swims against? Some of the chicks she swims against have bigger backs than any guy I ever saw. I'm one of the smaller girls. You're smaller. It's hot. And you can beat them. So what did you win? What races did you win? Um, I won the 200 breaststroke. Breaststroke is the one where you go like that? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could do that. (laughs) I bet. I do it pretty I'd fast. I'd like to see that one, yeah. Oh, I'd show you my breaststroke. <laughs> yeah, you would. <laughs> What's up? We we uh we heard a rumor. Did you ever date uh the track star Alan Webb? Did you date that guy? Uh-uh. Oh, cause I've never even met him. Oh, because we saw a picture of him, and I was thinking, if that's the guy you dated, then anybody could get you. Oh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Who's telling these rumors? Hey, Brian, you're on the air. Hey, now. Hey, now. I saw her FHM magazine, man. She was hot. She was definitely yeah. hot. And I was thinking, you know, I could sit by the pool while she, you know, does her thing and sit margaritas and cheer her on. Yeah, sure you could. Hey, why can't yeah. black people swim so good? What's Is up with that? I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, really, I, how come there's like no black, like, like blacks have a hard time in the water, don't they? Um, well, they haven't been dominating the sport, no. Right. Well, that's cool, because yeah. like, white people need a sport. We do. It'll happen. Robin can't swim. I can too now. Oh, you took the she lessons. She probably can yeah. swim faster than you. I don't no. think I can I swim. Think that would be a good race. No, 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 no. We'll be. We we'll, won't oh, be come racing. Come on, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see any uh, blacks in the uh, in the, the swimming uh, events. Just wait till they get pools, Howard. Right. <laughs> well, how's that going to happen in this country? <laughs> Where's a black man going to find a we pool? We got to elect some Democrats. <laughs> so, like, did your parents pour tons of money into lessons? No, not really. I mean. It, swimming is a pretty expensive sport to get involved with, but... Right. And then you go to... like, what, what was high school like? Every day after high school, you got to go to the pool and... Yeah, gotta... I mean, I'd go to workouts. I'd start workout about 5, 15 in the morning, wow. and then I'd go to school, and then I'd have workout after school for about three hours. Would your parents push you? No. I bet you they did. No, actually, that's probably why I'm still doing it, because they didn't push me at all. Really? Like, I would take days off, and I'd go to all my high school events, prom, and all that stuff. I wish I was motivated like you when I was a kid. All I did was smoke weed and take oh, LSD. You don't want to see me in the mornings, though. That why? was not a pretty sight. What do you mean? Well, waking up at like 5 or 4.45 in the morning. That's yeah. what we do. Kind of grouchy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you're prettier Wait, than do us. Do you have to go get in a freezing cold pool? Uh, it's not fun. What, what is it, Dave? I'm just saying she's she's I just want to say that she's a very lovely woman and Amanda I just want to ask you some some questions here. I just uh, want to let you know that you know first of all some of my best friends are gay. Uh and and I think it's kind of neat that your last name is Beard. Isn't that a, a code word in your community? Is that it? <laughs> Not all Olympia Olympiad and, girls are yeah, gay. Yeah, and I, yeah, I, I want you to know that I support gay marriage especially between lesbians. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask, because swimming is not like gymnastics where the girls actually leave home and go live with somebody no, else. No, okay. no. Right. They, uh, you get to live home for that. Bob, you're on the air. <laughs> yeah, how you doing? Good morning, everybody. Amanda, you were fantastic in the Olympics. Your, your moves under the water were like a dolphin. Her moves. Her moves in the pool. Thank but you. But aside from all that, I was yeah. curious. I didn't even see any of the swimming. What kind of what? Underwear is she wearing like thong? Do you, wear, do you wear a thong? I would uh, imagine you do because you got a sexy body. Thong or like cute boy shorts? Something. It has to be sexy. But what are you wearing today? I don't even know. You don't know what underwear you? Oh, okay. I'm wearing cute little boy shorts. What are little boy shorts? Well, they're like they show like the nice bottoms of your cheeks, but they're cut real sexy. They're sort of like Daisy Duke underwear. Let's see. Oh. Yeah. Wow. That's, not That's hot. That's Me not too. happening. <laughs> we can't see that? Mm-mm, That's not, not going to happen. Mm-mm. Maybe if she was a silver medalist. Well, she has silver medals, too. I got a silver medal. Those silver medalists are desperate. Yeah, the gold do medalists don't have to show their underwear. <laughs> We're we'll above do it. Right. Will you ever do Playboy? Oh, no. No, that's not your thing. So you're going to go for the clean cut? And, and I think it's sex. Well, for me personally, I think it's sexier to do something like FHM. It's kind of sh- showing a little bit, but not the whole thing. You got an agent? Mm-hmm. And then, and then, we, what do you got to do? I mean, you got to yeah, parlay, parlay this. Yeah, how do you parlay this into something? What well, are you going to do? Mark yeah, Spitz is still looking for something to do. I know, he, he had to go back to dental work. <laughs> yeah, you got a fallback plan once you're done with um, the swimming? Well, I'm in college right now. What college you so going to? I go to the University of Arizona. You got a roommate? I live by myself. I have a house. You got a house? Yeah. Wow. Oh, you do make some serious dough. How many college girls do you know have, have a house? <laughs> I'll you, give you a fall black plan. What do you? I what is that, Larry Flint? Black plan. Defecation. Oh, <laughs> what do you? What do you major in in college? Retail. Retail. Yeah. 
Everyone says that's retail. What are you going to do with retail? Yeah, what are you going to do? You're going to work at Macy's. I can no. shop. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> if I was you, well, I'd, I'd go into business. pool maintenance. <laughs> hey, guess who? My, I'd be pool like, hey, guess who maintains my pool? Amanda Beard. Nice. There you go. Yeah. I would charge a lot for something like that. Honey, get that chlorine level right. <laughs> guess who's peeing in our pool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wouldn't be that clean. <laughs> She'd strike her own line of pools. Yeah. Telling you. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Amanda Beard yeah, pool. The Amanda Beard pool. <laughs> What's up? I would imagine Amanda's got a decent amount of money because I was talking to her this morning. She's got a bunch of endorsement deals. She's got this mortgage company, Argent. She's got Speedo. She's got Red Bull. Then you get paid by the U.S. Olympic Committee to be a swimmer, and then you get like bonuses if you win gold and silver and stuff. Uh-huh. So she's probably got a lot of money. You'd be loaded. Are you a millionaire? No. You're not? Yes, she is. No. I don't believe that. She turned down Playboy. <laughs> well... <laughs> Yeah, but that's a smart that's move. That's more of a then, then Nike thing, and all of them will thing. drop you if you uh, if you've been Playboy. Yeah, see, that's the thing. You have to also be very aware of your sponsors. Right. So yeah, you gotta be. You gotta. You gotta you keep got moral that image. <laughs> okay, Weber, go ahead. We're running out of time. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing? Hey, uh, my buddy Todd was Amanda's neighbor growing up, and I remember when she was fourteen, we knew she was hot when she won her Olympic medal, and we were a few years older. But when her parents were gone, she used to skinny dip all the time. And she knew we were watching her and did it anyway. It felt kind of wrong because she was like 15, That's hot. 16, but she was so hot. Is that had, true? No. It is not yes, true? You no. know it's true, Amanda. I'm not using my you buddy's know, I, name. I'm, yeah. I listen to your show all the time, and guys call in and Amanda, they say the most Amanda, random thing. <laughs> Amanda, I'm not going to say where we live, but I, I'm calling for the nine from the 949. Let's just leave it at that. And... Uh, Oh, Howard, All right, thank you. Yes, Olar, go ahead. You're on the hey, air. Hey, good morning, Amanda. It's an honor to speak to a gold medalist. Thank you. Swimmers have phenomenal bodies. I want to know, are you flexible, too? Can, like, you do a split and stuff like that? No. You're not flexible? Oh. I can't do splits, no. So you've been listening to the show a long time? Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Oh, that's hot. Yeah. Yeah. I, that. yeah I, was watching it. I was watching it last night. What was on? Some porn stars. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's every night. She yeah. could be guessing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, I, no, I don't know exactly who they were. It was a brunette or a black-haired girl and it a was blonde. The, it was the one with Artie's girl, the girl who was interested in Artie yeah, yeah, and the yeah, porn yeah. star the came chick. in. Yeah. yeah. She got naked. So you're not attracted Ella. to me, are you at all? Well, you are cute. Really? But I think you have a girlfriend. I Wasn't know that. she on the cover of a- FHM? Yes. She's beautiful. You're so... Well, I'm just trying you, to find out. You've if, done good, boy. I just want to find out if you're an option. If any, if she ever falls through. Are you an athlete? What? Are you an athlete? Yeah. Oh, really? What? What sport do you play? I'll tell you my sport. Sex. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you something. Gold medalist. I gave it to Angie Everhart, the best she ever had. <laughs> you can be ready for that. You better start training for that. What is it, Dave? Please. I just, I just want to ask Amanda a question. He's raising yes. his hand. Yeah. Like well, you know, school. do you ever have uh, sex for money? And would you consider cutting on coming on our show and, and letting Paul Schaefer give you a, a grumpy munchkin? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm an athlete, baby. You don't have to worry about that. In fact, I have athlete's foot. I don't know if you know that. Ooh, that's, that's right. That's hot. Do, do you have that at all? That's so hot. In the showers? No. No. I, I, I'm pretty good with that stuff. I don't get it. Uh, Remy, you have the last word. Yeah, Amanda. Yes. How you doing, baby? Okay. I'm okay, yes. <laughs> Come on, go ahead. What's your question for Amanda? This is an Olympic... No, no question. I, I had a one-night stand with her about... You did? A year ago. Did you have a one-night stand with a guy named Remy? Uh, Me and Lindsay, remember? Have you ever had a rem- one-night stand? <laughs> no. Me and my Never? Lindsay went out with no, not usually. Up in no. Vermont? No? No. Come on. Don't remember me? Uh, no. <laughs> went, went on that tube in the pool? That was Amanda <laughs> Pete. <laughs> when you're out in the pool in the tube? He's calling from the 949 area code, yeah, so he must be telling the truth. Of course, they all know me out there. Right. Well, I got to tell you, uh, Dave, go ahead. Why don't you have the last word since that I made just, no sense? I just want to no, say... No, not you, Dave. Oh. I meant, oh, but go ahead, yes. <laughs> yes, Dave? Well, I just want to say that you're, you're a lovely woman and, and you're an inspiration to us all. And, and I just want to <laughs> let you know that I, I, I plan to start a, a cancer ranch uh, just like I must. And, and I can think of nothing hotter than, you know, an army of, of, of sick, bald children to service my every need. Well, I'm glad you told her that day. I am so I can go. Dave on, on the my phone. Day. Dave on the phone. You're talking to Amanda Beard on the cover of the August issue of FHM magazine, and she looks great in it. And I got to tell you something. Some of those other chicks, I saw some of the Olympic chicks pose in Playboy, and they looked mannish. I didn't think. Did you look at that layout? I did. What'd you think? Not um, that good, right? I thought some of them looked. I thought some of them looked very nice. And, and some, then some of them. Dog. I wasn't too thrilled to see. Right. So. I see. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, congratulations, Amanda. Howard, just a stat for you. 
you know, the Olympics is like the largest handout of condoms ever. That's true. Yes, lo- I remember doing that story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like 122,000 or something like that. Anybody hand you condoms? That's funny because I keep hearing that, but I didn't see condoms anywhere. Yeah, I guess because you're not a guy. I guess they yeah, hand them out to the men. probably. Yeah, that's it. They probably didn't hand it out in our area of the village. And what happens when you go to Olympics? Like when you live in that village, you have to have a roommate or you get your own place? No, there's... It's re- it's really awful living. You have a really small hard bed. You just have like a sheet, and there's about ten girls in our suite, and we oh. have two bathrooms. And so you're probably not real rested when you. Um, it's not the best living situation. Is yeah, everybody... I was gonna say, why wouldn't they take care of you better? You got to compete. Yeah, there's people... so many. A- there's so many. Do athletes. people party all the time and like keep you up and try to like? Um, people are pretty good about being quiet, but definitely as the it's two weeks long. So as the weeks go on. It gets it's worse, yeah. so it's hard to get your sleep. Um, I had no problems. I'd take sleeping pills and be out. So. Oh, I see. Are you allowed to do that? Yeah. Oh, you are allowed to take, take sleeping. sleeping pills. Yeah. <laughs> you got any on I got to fall asleep, so. Oh, what do you take, Ambien? I just take melatonin. Oh, I take Ambien when we fly. Well, melatonin's a herbal thing. Yeah. I know, but it knocks me out really fast. Oh, that's so. good. Oh, God, it I can't believe me. that. Yeah. <laughs> Melatonin knocks her out. <laughs> well, that wouldn't have an effect on me. It will put my foot to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a question for her. Home. Yes, Dave. Has she ever dated black guys? <laughs> have you Have you ever dated black guys? I had one boyfriend. Uh, no kidding. Ru- yeah. That would ruin it for me. <laughs> Why is that? I have no idea. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> He's just talking out of the top. Dave Letterman. <laughs> she likes athletes. Hey, you went out with a black guy? Yeah. No kidding. How long did that last? Um, not very long. We're, we're just friends now, but... Better than white guys? I didn't really tell the difference, to tell you the truth. A real black or like a mulatto? No, a real. <laughs> a real black. Not like a Brian Gumbel. Yeah. No. Not like a... a Brian Gumbel's not really black? No. <laughs> mm, hardly. <laughs> not like Star Jones's weird husband. <laughs> You're talking about like a Wesley Snipes type. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wesley Snipes. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, I am. I get you. I get a dark-skinned, you. real African man. <laughs> Are your parents still talking to you after that? Oh, come on. They weren't this mad? horrible. They, they don't have a problem with that? you? No. Oh, I've man. been to Orange County. I think some parents might have a problem with that. Uh, I don't know. My my family, we're not the typical Orange County family. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. No. Amanda, was was this guy's name Kunta? Oh, oh Dave, you're being silly. <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, it's Dave Letterman, save that for your own show. All right. Uh, yeah, All let right. me hear you do that tonight. Oh, so let's sure. see you do that on your show, dude. <laughs> he changed his name to Toby. It's well, not I'm going to tell you something. You are okay. a beautiful woman. Thank you. I saw the FHM. I was quite taken Thanks. with the cover. Thank you. You really What's in the future? I mean, for your immediate future, what are you doing? Yeah, we got to figure that out. Um. Well, I have a hopefully a couple more photo shoots to to do and mm-hmm. i'm in new york for about a week so i'm doing a lot of work out uh-huh. here and it's fashion week coming up so or gonna, it is now fashion week, right so. right you're gonna go so to the fashion there? shows i'd like to well i don't have that much time but i'm definitely gonna hit at least one show do you have any cellulite on your body or is it completely toned it's pretty much toned like if i touch your arm is it like muscle like do you feel the muscle no, it's not that. That's i'm not like you're not hard i'm not solid. like dehydrated like, right do you muscular. have a six pack Probably not right now. I haven't been working out for a couple days. I wonder if you have a six pack. I usually do. Can I see your stomach? No, that, <laughs> not that wrong? now because well, I've been on. like sitting here. Stand up. Uh, let really me see your stomach. Awful. Please. Oh no, it's gonna be so awful. Come on, let me see your stomach. I'm sure it's great. Come on, <laughs> let's see. It is nice, but I'm not gonna show right now. I'll show you mine. You've seen it on the. It's on I know, the but I want to see it for real. Okay, I'll show you later. I'll let you touch me later. Okay. That's got to be a thrill for you. <laughs> Later right. on. Anyway, Amanda Beard, you are delightful. Thank and you, you are representing our country, and you are to be congratulated. Thank How many you. gold medals? I ha- Well, I have two gold medals. That's nice. I don't have any. Howard, could I ask one thing? <laughs> I'm just trying to wrap up a go ahead. <laughs> but, 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 Amanda, but before you go, can I ask you a question? I could, I, could I sniff your taint? Oh, oh wow. <laughs> You're disrespectful. I'm you got to sure. throw in this nasty right. stuff. Amanda, please forgive me. You are a hero to this oh, country. Thank you. And ignore that awful man back there. <laughs> Don't look behind the curtain. Yeah, just ignore it. She won't show us her abs. What makes you think she's going to let you smell her taint? I mean, that's really out of line. Come on. <laughs> well, can he or not? I, mean, I guess not. All right. I've never been this close to a gold medalist. This is exciting. <laughs> Have you ever been this close to a fat comedian? <laughs> <laughs> Have I wanted to? <laughs> well, you are lovely. <laughs> were you a good student? Mm-hmm. How were your grades? Bad for grades? Typical uh, jock. Didn't do that good in school, but... Uh, decent. See? I don't fail out. No. SATs? Better than me. 
Oh, yeah, those weren't good. I was playing Tetris on my calculator the whole time. What'd you get on your SAT? Not so hard. Come on. Enough to get into college. Did you break a 1,000? Right around there. Uh, join the club. <laughs> you know what eight times? Those time? are the worst tests. They're so... Eight times nine. Ones. 72. All right, you're not. You, you, at least you, you, you got that well, time. That I haven't her, been in school for a couple of She's while. brainy. That makes her hotter. Yeah. <laughs> Howard, where does she keep her mom. vibrator? Where do you keep your vibrator? No. Do you oh, ever use one? On. Be honest, no. Amanda. You've never tried it? You're no. a young girl. you got to try it. Okay. You don't know what now, you're missing. Would you have sex before a meet? Um, Probably not. Uh, really? Uh, yeah, because what you do before a meet, you rest completely. You When's the last really time you had sex? Oh, it's been a while. Six months? Uh, no. A month? I don't talk about that. Yes, you do. With no, me, I you don't. do. <laughs> with your hero. With your hero. My hero. No. <laughs> Did you have sex last night? No. A week? No. A month? I'm not going to Less say. than a month. We'll just put it at that. Was it the black guy? <laughs> no. So-called Frank. Was it Wesley Snipes? <laughs> well, that's hot. Good for you. I'm proud of you. Thanks. I mean, it really is an accomplishment. Yes, Honestly, it is. I could, you know, as somebody who has tried to be an athlete at times, at I times. know I know how difficult it is. Yeah, it's it's hard work. I love it. I'm still trying to break the 11 minute mile. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Is the black guy famous? <laughs> no. Ever date a famous guy? No. No. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> it's a whole nother level. <laughs> what I tell women. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. Amanda Beard, thank you. We will thank check you. you out on FHM's cover, and we will continue. To, will you compete again in the Olympics in four years? Uh, yeah, hopefully. You, you are planning on I'm that. I'm training for it, so. All right. The coach has said to you, I need you? He has said that, yeah. yeah. We're going for it. Coach or guy? <laughs> yeah. Do you ever check out your ass when you're in your suit? No. I bet you he does. No, I that's guess. gross. No, oh, no. That's disgusting. Hey, you know he does. He's a guy. That's so, I can't even think about that. That's gross. <laughs> Check her out in our black bin. Howard, can I just say something before she goes? Yes. I, I just want to tell you, you know, I, I love pleasing myself in front of a funhouse mirror. It makes my private parts look huge. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with an interview with a Jesus, Dave. Yeah, why did you need to tell her? Know. The most random things I've ever heard. I know. What does that mean? I mean, it's silly. Ever you use your, your metal for a diaphragm? Uh, <laughs> that's a, that's that Where are the Olympic medals right now? Um... <laughs> Right now, yeah. half of them are at my house in Tucson. I think the black guy stole them. Yeah. Oh, stop oh, it. That's outrageous. <laughs> that's outrageous. And then, yeah. there, I, I actually have some here in New York. You do? Yeah. I wish you, next time, if you ever come by and see me again, uh, bring, 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 them. bring them because I want to look at them. Totally. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's cool. Yeah, that would be real cool. Yeah, What's I've a, never actually seen one. It's like seeing an Oscar. Yeah. Would you ever next sell them time. on eBay? No. You know what? It's better than an Oscar, and I'll tell you why. Yeah, because those people don't deserve anything. Right, you're right. It means something. Oh. Yeah. She won or she won a goddamn race against some of the best athletes in the world. But there's no yep. way I could go and act. Sure you yeah, could. Yeah, but they're they not really they can't, competing. They can't swim. I can't act. Trust me. Well. You could act. Yeah, but you're doing something <laughs> that takes, like, you know, obvious skill. We have to beat somebody. You beat someone. They didn't beat, like, Sean Penn didn't beat yeah, Tim Robbins. Yeah, they got votes. Yeah. It's yeah. Right. It's a popularity contest. Thing. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> That's fine with me. No, man. You, you, want, you, mean you trained your body to the point that you were the best in the world. It's amazing. Believe me, you could play a retard as good as uh, Sean Penn. Yeah. yeah. Artie could win an Oscar. No, all you got to do is like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all simple. Right. <laughs> Amanda Beard, an honor to meet you. You too. What size shoe do you have? Eight. Eight. Those things are like flippers. That's cool. <laughs> They're not that big. Eight small, Eight's actually. Not, no, hey, Howard, big. she's wearing high heels. They're sexy. Look, look at those. See. Those are big. I like to see you in a miniskirt yeah. next time. All right. <laughs> Amanda Beard, the great Olympic medalist on the cover of FHM, will be back right after these words. How'd you read my book? It was good stuff. <laughs> Could add more lines. <laughs> you're, you're, I mean, you're very articulate and good at that. Like, a lot of people, books on tape, they sound mumbled. And... Uh -huh. Oh, Howard she took Co it very seriously. Howard Cosell's is, like, unlistenable. Is your book? Yeah, I know it is. It's really like he over dramatizes stuff and it's annoying. My favorite is uh, a talking thing with Joey Adams and and uh, Cindy Adams did <laughs> that, together. That the um, album they did. Yeah. I How long did that. that take to do, Robin? A couple of days. Yeah. Oof. You know what? They wanted me to do an audio book of my book. You know. I'm sure. Yeah. It, so I started to do it. I I was so bored. I stopped. Really? 
Who's going to read a whole goddamn book into a microphone? <laughs> but Cosell does stuff like this. He goes, I had dinner with Mrs. Jackie Robinson that night. She looked stunning. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, whoa! Oh, maybe uh, Richard ought to get that uh, tape. Yeah. Then I try to get James Earl Jones to read my book. Right. Because Letterman did this bit. <laughs> yeah. And then, thank you, Dave. The um, <laughs> and uh, we contact him. He goes, okay, I'll read it. And then, like, uh, really, Harper but he Collins, five million dollars. Yeah, exactly. No, no, he, yeah. They offered him scale, uh-huh. which is like three hundred bucks. Right. And he goes, "I'm not doing that for three hundred bucks." Right. And they were like, "He oh, was like, I'm not doing that." The guy's Darth Vader. I mean, they had such a cool opportunity. Mm-hmm. Who wouldn't have bought my book read by James oh, Earl Jones? Oh, it would have been people uh, would be playing it all the time. I pleasured myself over and over again. <laughs> I have you now. <laughs> Do you have those clips? It's wonderful. When he read it on Letterman, they were great. Yeah. Howard, can I just say one thing? Yeah. I think Robin reads very well for her kind. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and Jesus. also, you know, that Ashley Olsen is, is really becoming a pig. She should be more disciplined like her sister, Mary Kate. <laughs> hey, Fred, do you have the clips of James Earl Jones? Or? I'll see if they're on a bumper or something. On a bumper. Sure. All right, forget it. What Letterman did a bit where he reads your book? Well, James Earl Jones, because he's talking about hot monkey love. Oh, I okay. made hot monkey love. <laughs> I never saw that. Oh, it's funny. It sounds great. And I said, hey, that's a good idea. I'll get James Earl Jones. Why not? I guess we don't have the bit. All right. I was stalling. No big deal. Hey, Rohan. Yeah. Hey. Rohan. What's that, yeah, Indian? This is. This is. Is Rohan an Indian name? Yeah, an Indian uh, birth name, an Irish surname, yeah, something like that. All right. <laughs> I'm not Indian, though. No Irish. What can I do for you, Rohan? Yeah, I I was thinking that maybe you should put on the uh, we- on the website uh, a list of radio stations throughout the country that where I can listen because I'm I'm on the road a lot, you know, driving a truck and. I thought I, I had tried- that on there. They do. I thought so. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, I'll do that. That's a good idea if it's not there. But I was on one of the uh, websites. We're on a station named K. They, they named the station Howard. Oh, in Sacramento, I That's think. That's it, Sacramento. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called Howard. It's weird. you got to go on the website. I'm going to put a link on there from my mm-hmm. website. It's really the the greatest honor of my career. Cool. They, they, they got the call letters uh, W. Oh, is it K-H-W-D? Uh-huh. And it's K. Howard, you know, or Howard. Yeah. And they go uh, on Howard. To Howard. They go on Howard today, and it's like not even my show. It's just right. like on Howard today. So it's not one of those stations that has you on like 24 hours a day. Because I've heard they people started, do that. They started with 24 hours of Howard, and then they have Howard in the morning, and then they have other Howard, you know, right. you know programming. Oh, okay. It's very cool. Other Howard programs. I was on your site yesterday. I w- can we get their bumpers and all their station IDs and everything? Yeah, I mean, it's it's Howard's. It's it, You mean other radio programs? Yeah, but Howard programming. It's, well, it, it's not my program. Yeah, it's you're Howard. You're not clear when you're trying to explain it. That's you? right. I'm not. <laughs> How can I be? I don't have to be clear. Uh, I'm trying to understand here. You understand everything. <laughs> And so does everyone else. <laughs> we get it. Me and you, we we t- we tend to over-explain everything anyway. Oh, okay. I'm trying to make it uh, clear. That's all. I know. Who cares if anyone understands? All right. We'll just talk <laughs> to each other. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hey, Rohan, I'm going to do that. Yeah, because it's frustrating, you know, scanning around and finding all those uh, Christian fundamentalist radio stations out there. Here right you. now, I'm in southern Illinois. I don't know if there's anything I can pick up from here, though. I'm sure there is, but I wouldn't even know what it is. Southern really? Illinois, where is that? Isn't that That's Cleveland? By Chicago. Yeah, below Chicago, obviously. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that Cleveland, I, I, Illinois? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, man. All right, I'm... cool. Thank you. Yeah, geography ain't my strong smooth. Well, hey, Ian. Hey. What's up? Uh, I can't get your uncensored videos on the Internet. I'm from Canada. Nothing pops up. You're kidding. No, it says uh, you're unable. To, you're trying to access this from outside the country. That is World Wide Web. I uh, know that's what I was thinking, and I, I was typing in some stuff on your bulletin board last night, and uh, uh, many people had the same problem. I'll find out. You know, with any new venture, you gotta. There's always going to be a few glitches, a few bugs. I'll find out. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And uh, I just wanted to say hi to Artie. I have uh, Sulu here. Sulu. Artie, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, oh, my. All right. Those, Howard, know. can I say something? <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> no, Dave Letterman, go I, ahead. I just want to we... issue a formal apology to Gwyneth Pal Paltrow. I uh, accidentally mailed some of my feces to her. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for Why sharing. Why are you mumbling when you want to say something? Because like uh, you know what? This is Letterman, you're a great guy, and, and uh, I love your, sh your TV show and everything, but I tell you what, man. You, you are a totally different guy off oh, your yeah. show. You got to be. You really are. Well, yeah, you ought to shout it out. Your well, humor is much more edgy. <laughs> Mailing well, you know, feces I, to I am, I, actresses. I, I, I'm sorry I'm not racist, but, you know, Britney Spears should not be the stepmom of, of kids with afros. <laughs> <laughs> you may be right about that. Yeah. Every once in a while he makes a good point. Yeah, I, I think those kids need uh, some guidance, some black guidance. <laughs> not Britney Spears' guidance. I don't know that Britney Spears should be guiding any child. No. Well... Kevin Federloin should definitely not be. Hey, did you hear that tape of high pitch Eric having sex with Casey? I heard a little bit of it. It sounds fascinating. Come in. <coughs> Hi, Casey. Are you ready for your massage? Get undressed and lay on the table. Oh, yeah. Let me <laughs> spit on it. Wah, 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 wah. This is the best massage I've ever given. Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Robin, I know it is news time, and oh, yeah. people love the news when you... Maybe I'll even slip in a little email during that. I did get a lot of email. I'll try and read some of it to you. All right. Well, first of My all, Robin's news. You prepared the entire morning, and now it's time to disseminate your information to all the people. Go ahead, Robin. When I was a little girl in church, at some point during the... Um what do they call that? When the mass. The church? It's not a mass. Stations of the Cross? Communion? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Sometime during communion? The, the service. That's what they At call. some point during the, the service, service, the priest molested you. No. <laughs> that happened to me. During the service, they would always read a list of the sick and shut in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, like local people who are sick? Yes, yeah. And I don't know why they used to read that list, because you just listen to the names, and then you'd go home. Uh. But I'm going to read a list this morning. Of? and on Of the sick and shut in. I don't get it. It's people who are ill who are members of the congregation. Right. Okay. And there's a person who's ill who's a member of our congregation, Howard. Scott Muni. Oh, oh, I see where you're going with Is this. still recovering from a serious stroke. Scotso. Scotso. Things from England. <laughs> English things. English things. <laughs> Breakfast cafe with the Beatles. Two for Tuesday. <laughs> now, now Nor... I don't think he coined two for two. No, that. what was that Beatle thing he used to do every afternoon? Beatle break. Things a, that are British. Right. And British things, yes. And then there was one that lunch with the Beatles or something you were doing with the Beatles. Lunch with the Beatles. For the 800th time, I'm going to play Norwegian Wood. <laughs> <laughs> he and always he started off his show with a Beatles song. Tell yeah. you his Beatles stories. Mm, what's wrong with him? He had a stroke, a serious stroke. He's 98. That's what's wrong with him. That shouldn't slow him down. <laughs> that show, I don't think you need to really be able to speak that good. What are you saying? So, uh, Scott, so can't talk, I would imagine, now. It's weird when a cat who makes his living talking can't talk, but... What are you saying? Um, Twilight Zone. He was still on the radio. He was working at WAXQ. Q104, British things. Things that are British. And they say that uh, there is no timetable for his return. Oh, no. <laughs> what are the things what from England going to do? What do while we're waiting? No more things from England. Uh, they did have a... They they list an address here if you want to uh, send something to Scott. So it's in the... Uh, what are you drinking, a beer? Root beer. Oh. Every time you right. see Artie with that bottle. I've done it, too. I think he's drinking a I beer. Love, I love boiling root beer. 
It's in the Daily News this morning if you want to find that uh, information to send something to Scott Muni. Things that can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take time to describe to your partner things that can't talk. Things and that can't... speechless things. Remember you tried to beat me up? Yeah, I was going to say, you were in a fight with him not too long ago. See, now I think I can take him. <laughs> Actually, that was about 15 years ago. <laughs> Did he lose uh, use of any of his body parts? They don't have any more than that. It was a serious stroke. And a serious stroke sounds to me like there must be some paralysis. All right. Then let me say something here. Vocal problems. Dude, I challenge you to a boxing match <laughs> any time, pal. Let's go. Bring, Bring it, it on. on. Bring it on. Things that are paralyzed on the right side. <laughs> When I saw that, it just made me think of that moment in the service when they say, all right, we're going to read the list of sick and shut it. Well, he did a lot of stuff in radio. He was apparently on WABC. He was one of the top 40 jocks. And then when FM radio became sort of cool, he went over to the FM side and started playing, you know, rock records. Mm -hmm. That's his big claim to fame. And he had a real voice, a real gravelly voice. And he spoke real slow. And, and he always used to uh, remember he'd have a Yoko on all the time. That was like a big deal. Today, my guest, <laughs> Yoko Ono. <laughs> Yoko, so you, and he'd kiss her ass. Oh, Yoko, yeah. you've written a new album, and it's fantastic. <laughs> Yoko, what haven't we covered in the last 5,000 times you were here? <laughs> it was great. Log I said you smell good. Thank you, Yoko. You smell nice, too. Now, I know that the Olsen twins are in college. They're going to NYU. And the other day, I, Why heard, bother? I really? heard the name of their, like, particular school. It's a school where you can set your own curriculum. Oh, yeah. good. It's they called Phony no, Baloney School. Right. They have no requirements. Cool. They can just for take rich kids. whatever courses they want to take. It's for someone who's preparing for, for life of no working. Right. Right. Pot. So yes. I thought that was interesting. Why bother to go to school? Wow. I guess there was nothing for them to do right now. Well, you know what? They're killing time. Look, they're very wealthy girls. They have no acting talent whatsoever. They're not going to have a future in movies. So they're going to school. And you know what? Like an idle rich person, now go to school and like study the stuff you want to study. Like, right. you know, how much fun is that? It is, actually. It and is. show up when you want to. If you feel like reading a book, it's cool to have a professor say, here's a bunch of books you might want to read. And, and, and if you're interested, it'll be cool. Yeah, it's hard to get mad at you know, people like that who do it. Like Paris Hilton, her life is a party. Well, well I, I mean, that's just, what I'd be doing if I were her, just I having just a party. I was thinking, what instructor or, or professor is going to flunk them? Professor Feces. Because, <laughs> I mean, they've got yeah. production companies, they've got all kinds of mad money they could set you up in business with. You just want to be their friend. I'd bang them. Oh, yeah. So it's interesting. They're going Hot, to school and they can take whatever they want. Wet bitches. I saw them at Nobu a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah? How do they look? Hot. I thought they looked sexy. Yeah. Really? Yeah. They were in sort of, they looked, they had that thing where they dressed almost homeless looking, mm -hmm. you know? And um, I think they dressed too grown up. Well, that's when they're doing that promotion. He saw them, they, they just sort of, you know, they, they really get grungy. They were just hanging out, and one of them walked by us, and I thought she looked sexy as hell. Mm -hmm. I don't know, something about her. I would do them. I'd do them both. Was yeah. that skinny one eating? Did you see? Did you that's check? Hot. I just noticed that I was eating. <laughs> <laughs> you were too busy. Okay. It's weird for me to know, but I have to ask for a fork. Now, has anybody seen this Siegfried and Roy thing, Father of the Pride? I got it on tape. I hear it's real bad. I got to watch it. I hear it's it's just, it's pathetic, like... Like especially since the dude's accident, because it's all about him and his beautiful lines, and he's right. And he's the a lines puppet. who ate him. Yeah, and like it would have been great if it was like about he, a bitter Roy who's <laughs> like, I hate lions now, and I'm conflicted. No, it's about oh, it ignores the fact that the guy almost got his head bitten off by a lion. One of my best friends, David Herman, is the voice of Roy. Meanwhile, the the Roy in real is life. Is Siegfried doing his own voice? No, no. they're just two it's two actors. No, it's That's ridiculous. Weird. Roy in real life. He's got half his eyeball hanging out. I know, and can't move. Can't move. He can't move. He's sort of like Scott Muni. And it's evidently really weird to, like, watch this cartoon about this ideal life with these friendly the tigers. wonderful animals. Yeah. So, and I also hear it's real boring. Like, you know how Shrek, like, people dig that? Like, they don't dig this. Well, that's, I was trying to get a bead on what it is, and it's like they've got the animals talking... It's dumb. And they've got a whole family thing going on, and I'm like, well, then what does Siegfried and Roy have to do with all this? I shouldn't even talk about this, but I'm out pitching this cartoon. You know, I'm doing Howard Stern, the high school years mm -hmm. for Spike, but I've been talking to uh, various people about a cartoon where uh, it's Christopher Reeve and a bunch of horses. <laughs> See? And it starts out he loves horses. 
<laughs> and then he gets thrown from a horse, and then he's just pissed off at horses. Uh-huh. And the whole time he's trying to bang his wife, and he, you know, he's got. She sits on his lap. Nothing's going on. They got to wait for something to happen. How many weeks is this going? What this cartoon? Yeah. I'm just starting to write it. That's hot. It's thirteen week commitment. All right. So the Siegfried and Roy voices are hilarious though. Yeah. In the show, they're really funny. Hey, hey, I know Orlando Jones is doing one of the voices. Yeah, he's got. Who's something? that? He's an actor. Yeah. I was on Mad TV with two of the guys doing voices in the show. Hey, JD, why don't you pull some Siegfried and Roy tape so yeah. we can listen to the voices? I have to know what this is. My buddy doing Roy is hilarious. Yeah. I'm telling you. Well, because it's too clear. It's, it's not even funny. It's like, you know, Yeah, because the great thing about them was their stupid accents and how you couldn't understand them. And it's kind of like, hi, I'm Roy. Well, wait a second. What happened to your accent? I know they got a lot of money uh, sunk into that thing. Oh, man. millions. Sure. Yeah, they couldn't let it go. That's how, how much money How's it doing in the ratings? I don't know. I don't know. I know it aired because I got it on tape. Yeah, but I have no idea. I didn't see it. I don't know. I didn't see the ratings. Why would you put that on? It's so lame. Like, don't you want something funny? Was there a big clamoring for more Siegfried and Roy? Well, like, of all, like, if, to pump all that money into animation, they're doing the expensive kind of animation. Believe me, I know. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about a couple of million episodes. Mm-hmm. They've been working on it for years. Like, would you do that for Roy? And look at the cast. The cast, the cast like Carl Reiner, John Goodman. Yeah. Hold it. We have a bullet in. What? Hold it. We have a bullet in. A Howard Stern exclusive. A Howard Stern exclusive. We go now to our reporter in the field, Captain Jenks. Yeah, ha- hey, Howard. Yes. You know how you read the other day that Rush Limbaugh is going out with um, Darren Kagan, the anchor woman on CNN? Yes. That's hot. Well, I got a prank phone call that I did to her. <laughs> she, Howard, yeah. she is way too hot for Rush Limbaugh to be going he out He pranked with. Rush Limbaugh's new girlfriend. Oh, boy. We go now to the tape. <laughs> <laughs> military leaders on the ground in Baghdad. Brigadier General Mark Hurtland, he was with us on the line the last hour. We're bringing him back again. General, thanks for coming back. Appreciate it. Thank you. How are you doing? Let's go ahead and look forward toward this weekend, toward the religious holiday of Arbaeen, and what that's going to mean in terms of a military strategy Arbaeen. and a challenge as potentially more than a million people will be on the move. Would you bang Howard Stern? All right. Well... All right, that's a yes. There we go. Once again, trying to bring some serious news, and the Howard Stern people seem to um, find better things to do with their time. We're oh. going to take this uh, opportunity to get a break to clean up our airlines from that nastiness, and we'll be back after this. Oh, she's like, she I'm is a- way too hot to be going out with him, Howard. That was so great. And you know what? It's funny. It's like it's like you know now she's a ra- she's involved in the world of radio. Yeah. yeah. She bang Rush Limbaugh. Isn't that a yes for you? Can you imagine that discussion tonight over over some big <laughs> thick meat that, that they'll be eating at some horrible restaurant? It'll be like you know. <laughs> I understand that you received a Howard Stern call. It was very upsetting. Darren, Rush. I didn't hear this this morning. I was in a Vicodin frenzy. <laughs> I understand some nastiness went over the phone line. If it's bothering you, take one of these pills. You know, I used to be very liberal, but now that I'm with Rush, I feel very disgusted by some of the things that go on in the airwaves. I think I'm going to become a Republican. <laughs> hey, you know what, Howard? You think what kind of exciting conversation must go on there? That I was... actually have another call here that I did to her a couple months back. Let me hear that. She's like my favorite anchor woman on CNN. Darren, put in your excellence in broadcasting diaphragm and let's get busy. Last, but the the other Star Wars coming out in about two years, I think, year and a half. Mm, yeah, thank you for that. that. Hey, right, you'll have to come you. back when that comes out too. Will do. Right now we have on the phone with us the mayor of San Diego, Dick <laughs> Murphy. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thanks for coming back with us. We had a little bit of trouble with your line, uh, but we we're able to listen Dick to your news conference. And now I understand you have more news to tell us about the development in San Diego. Yes, we have three people in custody right now in connection with the fires. Uh, we don't know for sure. We don't want to give their names out or anything like that. But um, the fires were started by a blast of wind from Howard Stern's eye. All right, well, you know, that's the second time that's happened to me here on the air, and it just always amazes me that um, during this time when people are fighting for their homes and fighting for their lives, that somebody associated with Howard Stern... (laughs) (laughs) Do Do you notice how there's never a good time for a Howard Stern call? Not with her. She's even like, I'm trying to bring some seriousness here, and... Yeah. It's never a right time. Now, they took a break. You know, in the first one he played, she says, we're going to take a break so we can clean up the nastiness on these phones. Right. Clean up our airlines. Talk about nastiness. nastiness. <laughs> you're, you're giving oral to a blimp, honey. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a sweaty, fat Rush Limbaugh. That's nasty. Oh, how did she get? How did she slide <laughs> into bed with <laughs> you? <laughs> 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 way hot, man. Hey, dude, I'll tell you what. 
I went on Wire Image and checked out her, not her press photos where she's all dolled up. She ain't that hot. I mean, seriously, she's kind of... She looks good on TV. Yeah, I know. But... And Rush in person isn't nearly as hot as he is on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've never seen her from the waist down. It's only been, like, behind the anchor desk. But you're right. She's way too good for right. him. Rush hasn't seen anything from his waist down in years. <laughs> she's way too hot for him. And you know what? Actually, I have another prank call that I did to her. Yeah, you have a whole library. Did oh, she... yeah. This, this chick, I, this is my favorite anchor. Go ahead. Okay, this is... Um, after Bob Hope died. Oh, that's not <laughs> well, a good time. That's not a good time. <laughs> May God bless his soul. Thank you. Those are President Bush's comments as he headed to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're going to keep our coverage in Pennsylvania now. On the phone with us is Gene Perre, comedy writer who wrote for Bob Hope for 40 years. Gene, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. What can you tell us about Bob Hope's sense of humor? What was it like to write jokes for this funny, funny man? Oh, he was he was just, he was able to take the, the, the smallest thing and just turn it around and make it the funniest. He was able to pick out the, the best thing because he was right for him and he would be able to just, just make it completely go great on screen. He was the most incredible entertainer of all time. And we've all lost a, a great man, as President Bush said. Uh, just taking on a sense of humor for a moment, can you give us a sense of, of what it was like when you would write a joke or how he would see that something was funny or perhaps wasn't you funny? You idiot! Well, well, see, Bob would always tell us if he thought something wasn't funny, but, but generally, um, you know, he would improvise, improvise whatever we wrote for him and make it funny. So in other words, if we wrote something that wasn't funny, he would turn it around and make it funny. <laughs> So he was a pretty it's a, he was a pretty great guy to work for then if you're a comedy writer, it makes oh, you look good. He was the best. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to go yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Up there. Amazing that even at times uh, like this that when uh, the country is trying to mourn a great entertainer that uh, people try to take a very inappropriate time to try to be funny. So we'll just move on with that. Um, we have plenty of legitimate coverage for you right now. <laughs> 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 oh, what a loser. That's the funniest what thing a, I've ever heard. What a, what a nosebleed that woman is. <laughs> yeah, all right. Howard, can I say something? the same reaction. This is not the right There's time. There's never a right time. I, I mean, you would think the death of Bob Hope, it might be the right time. He was a funny guy. He died as a hundred. I mean, I just pictured Jenks, the whole, like, actual interview he did, like, huddled up in his kitchen trying to make stuff up. You know, in yeah. some bizarre way, Jenks, like a stalker, you kind of have a relationship with her now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's my favorite anchor, Howard. I'm telling you, this chick is gorgeous. And I guarantee you, like, she's talked to Rush about you and, all, you know. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, I'll do something about it. I know people over at Infinity. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we're waging war on a Captain Janks. I wonder if they've ever talked about me in bed, you know. Absolutely. Maybe not in bed, but I don't think you want to be talking to when, you, when you're when doing Let's a whale. Let's just get yeah. that over with. When you're, uh, when you're with a Rush limbo. I don't think she's conscious when they're having sex. Right, there's no way <laughs> she finds... The blowhole. There's no way she finds him hot, right? No uh, uh, Well, maybe, you know, she's looking at his checkbook No, or okay, fine, but, but there's no way he's physically hot. No. He's not even, like, quirky. He's... Like, no. I've known a few chicks who told me I'm... Hey, you know how odd looking, which is kind of hot. Hey, right? Howard. Yeah. Somebody just hit the delay on that call I just played. Get out! I swear to God, I just, I just, I was just listening. You know, after delay, out of my radio, oh. somebody hit the delay. Oh. What was wrong with that? What the hell was wrong with that call? I don't get that. Oh, You're kidding. Because of the word out. ball sack? Oh. Yeah. Oh damn! Holy cow! Oh, Tom, get in here. Oh, I'm so almost out of here. Howard, Man, by was... the way, on my website, in addition to seeing Uncensored <laughs> E, which is a breath of fresh air, you also can see the countdown to my days here. Yeah. 15 months left. And maybe I'll be out even sooner. Man, that was so funny, too. Ugh. Howard, can yeah. I just say something about that last call? You know, I, I, I had to have my, uh, my anal... They ruined the punchline. Oh, yeah. Hey, Howard, if you want, I'll call Scott and I'll play it for him and you can replay it and edit out whatever Tom didn't want on nah, the air. No, it doesn't matter. The moment's you know gone. What the people heard then was Captain Jenks doing a pretty good job of pretending to be a guy's writer. Right. They yeah. heard a writer being interviewed. <laughs> Way to go, Tom. And when you take out seven seconds, you take out like a lot more than just the punch. What, 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 ball sack? That, that, that's just too much for us, huh? Yeah. Oh, we can't defend. Okay. I don't care anymore. Yeah. Who hit that one? Dead Air Dave or the genius Tom? That would be Mr. Dave. <laughs> Mr. Dave. Good, good work, Dave. That's horrible. Oh, come on. Come on. That's not what they're talking about at the FCC. 
And, you know, I purposely uh, listened to it to see if it would I be... I mean, who like even cares out. anymore what they're talking about the FCC? It's just George Bush's right hand over there that Michael Powell, he's a pussy anyway. They, they notice they haven't thrown me off the air. He's a big pussy. They're waiting until after the election. Notice you don't hear from these FCC guys. Yeah, if it's so horrible, why aren't we gone? Why that? Do you agree with that? Do you, yes. you do agree with yes, that? Yes, absolutely. Well, I'm out of here just based on that. Don't even bother. Tell Joel he doesn't have to keep calling me, asking me to renew my contract. I'm Ruin done. My call. I'm taking myself out of the running. Ruin my call. You ruined the joke. Oh, Insulted man. Jack. You ruined the oh, joke. You ruined, ruined it. It was funny. Genius of the Sorry, Captain Tom. You Jack. don't understand. You think the Grease Man's funny. No, yeah. I think you're real funny. Thanks. Well, I'm real funny when you hit the punchline. I think Artie's real funny. I don't, but Good. I'm not going to be dependent upon Jenks for you know. Oh, Jenks, you don't think is funny. I don't. I, I think Jenks has no sense of what the lines are. So. I do. Too. I don't. Then I don't think anything was wrong with that. I don't think the FCC could find us on that at all. I'm out of here anyway. Oh, can I go? Can, please let me leave. No. I know I'm obligated no. to you. Why? Because it's not fun anymore. Fred, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm just asking you as a friend, can you let me go? And I'm I, asking you to fire me. You know what? I really like you. I really, really do. Can you let me resign? No. How come I can't resign? <laughs> because you're under contract. That's wait, a minute, wait a minute. Let me ask you We're something. We're ridiculous. You. I'm sorry. I feel ill. We're obligated to I can't you. work what if here. he had a stroke? I have a stroke like Scott Muni. <laughs> <laughs> Still wouldn't fire me. Keep me miserable. Exactly. What? Tom was sort of funny. You know, it's our new uh, set of interns. So Tom had to give him the speech yesterday. Oh, uh, I want to get out of here. And I just thought his speech was interesting. What was well, it now? Well, he talked about how he's the father figure of the show. No, you're not. But he's a reluctant father figure because he really feels that he's really immature, but he has to be... I'm really a cool, hip guy, but I have to play a different role. Mr. Belvedere. Yeah. He's Mr. Belvedere. I am cool. I am the coolest outside of these walls. I'm the coolest. Tom was so happy there wasn't a tape recorder, just me. Oh, just, yes. Gary, just Gary to, to misinterpret everything I say. How long no, that's did, what you said. How long did Tom ramble on? No, he, the, was, uh, he was quick. He was like two minutes. Thank God. I, it's the same speech to every intern class. Yeah. Well, give it to us. We'd like to I know you've the, heard it. I know the kids, the kids really look up to you. <laughs> Dad. You should play that tape again. <laughs> I am the father figure. <laughs> I, I think I, Robin, I you remember what your father did to you? <laughs> right. That's what Get I'm going to do here. to you. Get over here and sit on my lap. <laughs> no. No, not that kind don't of Don't say father, father figure. figure to Robin. She'll stomp on <laughs> your right. face. I'm exactly. not really into right. father figures. Exactly. Yeah, right. Robin don't need any more father figures. <laughs> she had one already. <laughs> Ruin my call. Ruin oh, the call. I feel really bad. Yeah, well, yeah, you should. It was funny. It was me. funny. It was just the yeah, right moment. A, a different time and place. The Rush Limbaugh's girl. You know what? There is going to be a different time and place. And guess what? Guys like you, it's over. I mean, don't give me I'm guys gonna bury, like me. I'm burying you. Bury me. What are That's you right. Me for? Wait, you'll see. We yeah, okay. will bury you. I'm moving on. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody give him an atomic right. setup. Oh. You want an atomic setup? I'll give you one. Now that's funny. Jack, oh, Tom, Jack's I know scary funny. individual. Oh, shut up, Dave. Oh, Tom, does, Tom didn't think Before it was funny. Before you say something really inappropriate. Yeah, yeah. Leslie will hear about this, Tom. All right, call him. <laughs> Tom thought number? the joke was, was Captain Jenks just getting on the air with him. Dave Letterman, you have a meeting with uh, Leslie yeah. Moonves, right? Yeah, we'll talk to him about that. All right, good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My God. And, and by the way, I'd like to ask Tom a question. Go right could. ahead. How big do those hemorrhoid, uh, hemorrhoid relief uh, sticks come? I, I've been using a, a frozen hammer for months now, and it's just not doing the trick anymore. <laughs> Can the CBS sensors do something about that, well, please? I, I highly right. recommend you switch to hemorrhoid relief because right. they have the device for you. All right. It's a family show. Okay. They're also sponsoring the wor our world's largest hemorrhoid contest. All right. But Dave, we're not a family show. Why can't I say uh, these things? Yeah, this isn't a family show. I right. don't know. There's we no, make no family on earth that should show. listen to this. It's right. Manson family this show. This is not meant for the family. Well, listen, if it'll make you guys feel better, I, I had to have my uh, my anus removed recently. I couldn't. Your what? Your I anus? had to have my uh, anus uh, removed. Oh. Anus. <laughs> anus. <laughs> anus. <laughs> right, right. Wow. Uh, Kenny Vivali, remove my anus. There you go. There goes the delay again. All right, hey, I thanks, got a meeting. Jenks. I got a meeting with Leslie Moonves. Yeah, Leslie. <laughs> hey, Howard, I apologize for not following FCC guidelines. You did. The yeah. delay Just got Tom hit. Tom being paranoid. The delay got hit again, Jenks. What's that? You just no. said the delay got it again. Vinny, go ahead. 
Yeah, I had uh, some information on Father of the Pride, if you're still interested. Go ahead. And, and, okay, um, so NBC got a head start on all the other networks because right. they were promoting everything at the Olympics. So they started like a week ago, and it launched so-so ratings. So it's a weird show because it's an, it's an adult show that looks like a kid's show. You know, it's all adult humor. Yeah, I don't even think it's that adult. It's confusing. It would have been I mean, cool if it was post the lion biting Roy. Then it would have been good. It should have incorporated that in. This bitter... Did you see the interview with Siegfried and Roy at the NBC of Front Howard? Did you ever see that tape? And, and do they pretend Siegfried and Roy are like into like into female relationships? And I mean, what, what is that? Your version of the show would be better. Oh, I would write it. I, call me in on a rewrite. Pay me some dough and I'll get that thing working. Um, another thing on your paper. Siegfried, you look really good. Roy, you've been a mess since the stroke. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with you. <laughs> Ray, there's that freaking tiger again. I want to kill it. You must get over your bitterness. I know, I don't know how I can. Manticore was trying to save you. Manticore, my eyeball is falling out of my head. What did you do to me? What did you do to my eyeball? You bit my eyeball. <laughs> then, then on an all new Will and Grace. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. That would have been the greatest show ever. <laughs> of course. Who's uh, replacing Craig Kilborn? Um, I don't know what we're going to do. I think um, Artie mentioned one of the guys. There's some names floating around. It's going to be guest hosts for a while. Uh, I think Dale Hughley was going to be one of them. Is, uh, Kilbor Kilborn left because he needed to go right. Yeah, what's he written yeah. since he left? Is Corolla's name in that uh, in that group of guys? No. I, you know, I saw his name in the trades, but I don't know. I don't, is this what he even wants to do? Isn't he with Kimmel? Like Why didn't you get uh, George Takei? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How funny would that be? Welcome <laughs> to the Late Late Show. Oh. Have I'm going to take questions now from the audience. You there in the Star Trek uniform. Yeah, in the Starfleet uniform. How's <laughs> Evil Dave do it? Exactly. All right, we got to take a break. And uh, thank you, Tom, for ruining the show today. Well, hey, never my pleasure. My competitors, uh, thank you very much for pleasure. clipping off those punchlines. Way to go. It is Tom's fault. The show has grinded to a halt. We'll be back right after these words. What's up, everybody? Round. I I got lucky that Walter Matthau didn't die. Why right. do I have to keep suffering? You guys want to continue to play. We never said we would. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Uh, I see it clearly. I'm with Baba Boo yeah, on this. You see it's it clearly because you're and you're bogarting and keeping Walter Matthau. If you could now buy, you could now buy. You could go to Tom right now and buy something from him. Oh, please, Tom's Rose? not selling anything. Well, He's Jackie or Fred. Gary. Hey, let me ask you a question. <laughs> That's the interest uh, of the game. I got a question. Based on what we've heard about Walter lately, mm -hmm. how much? By the way, I hate my list except for Walter Matthau. Uh, really? You, <laughs> think, you think that's? I look, read my list out loud. Well, how much would you sell Walter back for? To who? To Tom and I, if I wanted to still be in. Five hundred. You could get a thousand. <laughs> I see. Walter, the guy was eating a sandwich. So loop and lines. So then, what are you worried about? Loop and lines from. So from then, what? Then why don't you go back in with Tom? You're not going to lose. Where's the pastrami? Well, I don't know. Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. It's well, a crap show. That's it. So everyone's afraid of my Walter Matthau. Who cares? I'm not afraid of it. Get buddy. a microphone on him. He's about to talk. Yeah, I'll, I'll read it here, I All right, good. Okay, bring it over. No, but I'm saying, uh, read my list. Aside from Walter Matthau, who do I have? If there's 50 people on the list, Howard, Walter probably ranks in the top 20. Absolutely. That's why I'm in. All right. So your all star is Walter Matthau. All right. uh, Jack Klugman. He's mm, not a good. bad one. He's all right. He's got he had he had throat cancer, but they seem right. to cure that. He works. Right. Carly Simon, Boris Yeltsin. Doesn't Carly Simon have cancer? She had breast cancer. And that's Yeltsin. a good one. Yeltsin. 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 Oh, Yeltsin's, Yeltsin's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Yeltsin and Matt Thau are good. This game, you have a very strong list. No, no, I like Yeltsin. Listen, Carly you Simon got, is, is Richard Pryor. You have the I do. Yeah. You have the, you have an all star list here. Let me let me hear. Go ahead. Okay, Walter Matt That's a good I'm one. I'm going to give you the all stars. I'll tell you the good one. No, just give me all. That's good. Jack Klugman. Jack Klugman's bad. Yeltsin's good. Rodney Dangerfield. That's not good. Carly Simon. Shelley Winters. Richard Pryor. Ed Richard Pryor's good. Liza McNeil. Ed McMahon's no good. Riza Minnelli, I'm sorry. Yeah, she's uh, fine. Buddy Hackett. Buddy Hackett's fine. I just saw him he on the MTV well, Awards. Got a job. Yeah, Russell it's... Johnson, Tony oh. Randall, Robert Downey Jr. No. Um, Robert Downey Jr. Good one. Stabbed. He's safe in jail. DiCaprio, John Travolta. <laughs> Why do you think I'm always screaming, let Robert Downey Jr. out of jail? <laughs> let him take drugs. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, Who else I got? He's got Travolta. Travolta almost had a pr problem. Oh, if Travolta had crashed that dumb plane of his, I would have been <laughs> in the money. Would have cleaned up. Oh, and then Matthau um, could have kicked right after that. Oh, I would've... Bob Vila. Pop Vila, you say that like it's good. He could fall oh, off the roof. Uh, oh, and then you have the E crew. I have the whole E crew. Yeah, That's oh. good. And you have Aretha Franklin, Macaulay Brian, Culkin, Doug Ganji, and uh, and Scott DePace. Yeah. So oh, anybody that's in that crew. Hey, I'm not saying my list is horrible. It's fine. I'll play the game, and we'll keep going. 
And if you acquire properties, fine. Each time someone wants to drop, you got there's got to be a way for you to get out. That's fair. This guy, he ain't a millionaire. I don't say you can get out after you made a debacle of a mistake like he made. Yeah, but the mistake, the game has ended, Robin. The That's game between him ended. and Tom. Uh, Robin, if you, if you, it isn't ended because how because you say No, it isn't ended because you say it isn't ended. He Walter Matthau. Yeah, but you still have, who do you have? Tom is playing down right. one That's person. between him and it. That's what's great Just about it. It only affects Tom, not, not us. It doesn't yeah. affect you. It affects Tom. Well, it affects I'm Tom and Howard. I'm making Tom's argument. But. No, you want, you just want me to be in. <laughs> Suddenly, I don't want you in. I want to see you lose Sudden Robin's <laughs> like the most altruistic person in the world for Tom. <laughs> no, I mean, Do you think mistake. Walter Matthau is going to be the next person to die? I don't think so. But so it could, why wouldn't but, you stay but, in? I wouldn't. I, he's he's you got a good shot of dying, but I don't know. Come on. I wouldn't bet on it. Who do you think is going to die next on that list? Uh, Who do you think's got the best odds <laughs> out of every name up there? Yeah. Just give me two seconds to look. All right, go ahead. Take a look. <laughs> While you're looking, I'll sit here. <laughs> I got nothing better to do. <laughs> Such a silly game. I hope I win. I'd love my Walter Math out of payoff. <laughs> I, I invested $100. Counting 2500 bucks. That's yeah, you want a lot of money. Because oh, everybody stuck. paid me in 20s. And I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, you don't have to go to the bank for a couple of weeks. You look like a whore. Yeah. That's right. He looks like a drug dealer. <laughs> drug dealer. You got a big wad. At a quick glance, the two names that jump out at me yes. are Ronald Reagan. Who has that? The E crew. Okay. And they also have Catherine Hepburn. Who has that? E? I mean, she's got to be 90-something, right? Oh, please. Yeah, she's, she keeps going. She keeps but, oh, going. she's not going so well. He's right. Robin, yeah. does, does Alzheimer's kill you or just... Or it just, wastes you away. But does yeah. it, will it kill you? It will kill you, So yeah. Reagan's had it for what? And what years? doesn't kill you will make you stronger. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, Reagan's one of those guys that you have no idea how he's doing because he's hidden... Ronald away. Reagan will die soon. And also, you know what? You know who's another good name on there that, that I know has got to be close to death? Bob Hope. And is the yeah. Pope on there? The Pope? That's yeah, Fred. Who has Bob Hope. I have the Pope and I have hope. <laughs> I still can't believe that they're not dead. Right. Say Bob Hope, Ronald Reagan would be my top two choices. Right. So everybody here is the sitting pretty. There are names there for everyone. Oh, I thought they were digging a hole for Buddy Epson about a year ago. Yeah, 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 too. Too. I'm not sure he's not dead. Uh, and Glenn Ford, is. I, every time I hear his name, he's dead. He's not he's wearing not He has not been seen he's in public in it's got to be 10 years. He's like at a home or something. Here's 500 bucks. He's got to be next. <laughs> All right, so, okay, we're so, on, everybody's in, in Gary's area. out. I'm in, Gary's out. Good. All right, okay. enough of the death pool. Let me so. take that off my list of things to do. <laughs> Gary is out of the death pool. It was so much fun having him. Right. <laughs> and does anybody know why at CBS Broadcasting there are no pictures of me hanging in the hall? Haven't I done something for the company? I went over to that BlackRock. Yeah. CBS BlackRock. And whose pictures do What's they have? Uh, they have all the TV guys. What, 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 what? The radio doesn't count? It doesn't exist in the company? They have Lucy, uh, Jack Benny. Lucy? I'm the Lucy of radio. Ed <laughs> Sullivan. Years. And uh, the Honeymooners, I think, are some of the It pictures. sounds like all dead people on the walls. I realize that, you know, you can't put every radio guy up there, but I think I'm certainly the premier guy. Sure. I'm so insulted every time I go over there. I've only been over Is there two or three times. Is that they separated CBS from Infinity? <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, they're trying to separate me out. I know why they did that. <laughs> Ray Romano's up there and Fran Drescher. I've brought oh, ten times living. more money into this company than Fran Drescher or Ray Romano. Oh. I know. They booted her off the network. This is, you know, there's a whole building in the city. I'm like, I walk in and go, Fran Drescher? Is that show still even on the air? No. No, they canceled it. How do you know there's a building in the city? You see, you know what they do? They try to act like I don't exist. Oh. Jesus. I walk by, there's a whole... You walk in the halls and there's these big Hall giant pictures. Fame, huh? I got to admit, you know, at this point in my career, I'd like to be up there on the wall. I'll admit it. I'm not too uh, proud to admit that. Why not? Why not put my picture up at CBS when people walk through those beautiful halls? <laughs> CB. Oh, <laughs> Class guy like myself. I'm the bastard child. <laughs> the black sheep. I'm the black sheep. The black sheep of Black Rock. Right. You know, it's funny. If you died today, you'd be a legend. They put your picture up everywhere. I know. The well, King of Queens is up there. They do a uh, story about the merger or whatever. Howard's picture true. appears yeah. in yeah. the article. But no picture of me at CBS. Hey, you got to hear this. Forget me, okay? Hey, get off me for a second. Switch topics. Papa <laughs> Bowie just gave me this. So we're going to have it in a couple Bob of weeks. Bowie. Remember Bob the kid Bob on the Brady Bob Bunch, Bob the oldest brother? Brady Bunch. Craig. Barry Williams. Okay. okay. You know Brady Bunch? Yeah, 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 right. Pretty I gotta, bunch. You know, I got to get those different families taken care of. Okay. Right. So, uh, and by the way, I want to thank the E-Television Network. My picture is all over there in Los Angeles in their headquarters. Wonderful. Yeah, they're proud of me. CBS hides me. <laughs> I'm barely in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the newsletter ever. Really? Yeah, like I don't do anything. 
only bringing in a billion a month into this company. All right. Barry Williams. Yes. Brady Bunch. Put out an album. He's coming in a couple of weeks to promote it. you got to hear that. This guy's, really? I think this guy's insane. What is this album of? I want two guys in white jackets. To be, to be here when he's here? When he comes in here, I want him arrested. Because <laughs> he's up to something. You're going to sign him in. He was supposed Greg Brady, according to the E! True Hollywood story, he was the one that actually had talent. He could sing and dance. Supposedly. What were the others? The others can't even... Just cause, pretty face. Because the Brady Bunch, you know, cast used to go out and do shows, like nightclub acts and sure, sing and stuff. Sure, they used to have a tour, yeah. And, and in fact, the dad was all pissed off because he was an actor. He wasn't a singer and a dancer, and he, he couldn't sing and dance. And Florence Henderson could sing and dance. Yeah, but Greg was the one that actually, out of all the kids, of the kids that kids. could. Okay. So I guess he got somebody to put out a record. Let's see, what's the label? Good Guy Entertainment. I don't even know what that, that is. I even think, Jackie wouldn't work for that. Yeah, right. No, Jackie would work for these guys. I turned them down. <laughs> so he put out a... And I'm, I can't figure out what they're thinking with this. It's like all tunes from the 70s and 80s. You got to hear... Like... like <laughs> I can't wait till he comes in. <laughs> I don't think it's a goof either. I really don't. I think he's for real. I've paid my dues. First of all... Why this do this is, song? This is like Queen Karaoke. Yeah. It's the exact same arrangement, except with Greg Brady. Why wouldn't you just buy Queen? Unless he had a new arrangement. Time after time. Like he's a real good karaoke singer. I've done my sentence, but committed no crime. And bad mistakes. I've made a few. Wait, wait. Then, then he does. Uh, the, aim, the name of the album is "The Return of Johnny Bravo." I don't know what that means. It's, it's a reference to a Brady Bunch episode. He oh. joined a rock band, and he oh. was Johnny Bravo. Okay. Which was that other one? Sunshine Medley? No, you wanted to play uh, "Rhythm of the Night." Rhythm of the Night. Ooh. Ooh. What? What is that? Isn't that the Gloria Estefan? No, song? that's no. the Barge. Oh man, I don't even know that song. Oh, you do. <laughs> oh yeah, that. Yeah. This is a medley, though. Rhythm of the Night into All Night Long, the Lionel Richie song. <laughs> Anytime you got steel drums. Yeah, steel drums are funny. <laughs> when it feels like the world is on your shoulders And all of the madness has got you going crazy It's time to get out, step out into the street Where all of the action Right there at your feet Well, I know a place where we can dance the whole night away Underneath the electric stars What? <laughs> yeah, we gotta get him to perform Oh, you gotta put the, the losers, losers together Yeah, why don't we back them up? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we could, who plays steel drums? Me! I'll play them How hard could that be? It's a garbage there. pail <laughs> Oh man get I'll do it Hank could play them Man <laughs> Get a list of everyone who buys this CD. I want these people watched. <laughs> Howard, the choices yeah. of the songs on there are bizarre. Yeah. Like, you know that song, At This Moment? Do you know that song? Remember Billy and the Beaters? No. Cool. It's like a ballad. That oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Family like five yeah, I kind of remember that. Yeah, it's just... Let me see. Let's drift away. That's Give me the beat, boys. Thing. It's a free oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Weird selection. What did you think? Oh, jeez. I would do I got it. What do you want to back him up on? I want to do the steel drum thing. Yeah, you got to do it. Well, what about the, the uh, first medley, which is like song number two, which is like, uh, it's a sunshine medley. What's that? It's uh, four different songs that have to do with the sun, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can see clearly now. I can see clearly now. I can oh. see clearly now. Oh, good day, sunshine. It's a sunshine day. Song. It's a sunshine day. It's a Brady Bunch song. I can see all. My way. <laughs> He's funny, man. Craig Brady. Uh. <laughs> Gone are the dark 
clouds. I'm gonna have to buy this. Wow. <laughs> kind of digging it. I... Here's a good one. Slipping away. Things as good as share. He just needs some arrangements. He did Happy Together from the Turtles. They must be happy. <laughs> They're ecstatic. Yeah, we haven't heard from those guys in a long time. What are they up to? I'm not a clue. I saw Flo on Suddenly Susan or Jesse, one of those shows. Really? Yeah, he's fat as can be. But what was it, what was the premise? Was he Flo? Or was yeah, they were Flo and Eddie. I think, believe it or not, he's a college professor now. Is he? What? Who, Flo? Oh, yeah, you know. Oh. I, I think Lock I up that. your daughters. <laughs> When it's day after class, <laughs> man, he's got a really cool life. And the fact that, like, you know, he keeps getting older, and mm. all his girlfriends stay the same age. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, uh, he's great. We admire him. And there's no shame. He has no shame about it. No, why would you be shamed? I'm jealous. Just too happy. Yep. He's happy. Mm. That's great. <laughs> I'm a teacher, man. Hi, Pitch Shark. You're on the air. Hello. Hi, Pitch Eric. Hi, Pitch Eric is gone. He's so weird, Howard. Really? He's so weird. Why? Is I had an he? appearance last night. He, you know, he shows up to the appearance and he hangs around. What was your appearance? It was at a video store with Nikki St. Giles. She says hello. She's beautiful. She loves you. She, she loves, loves me. You. She's married to uh, Bob she Guccione. Bob Guccione's no. son. Yeah, uh, the other Guccione. Yeah. Bob. Michael. Yeah. Or something. Somebody. But what do you mean she loves me? What's she saying? She was just talking about Nick. She was just talking about what a great guy you are and how much fun she had doing mm. the shoot with you and how much she loves the show and she listens every day. <laughs> and then Nick was there too. He's the Guccione without the English accent and with the straight teeth. Oh, oh, mm. he's really he's, an American. Well, oh, nice he really guy. lucked out. Nice She's beautiful. She is a knockout. Just, yeah. She really is stunning. I worked with her. Uh -huh. she, I didn't think she liked me because she was all stuck up at the shoot. And she wasn't talking to me and stuff, and then she loosened Maybe up. Maybe she was in awe. Maybe she was nervous around a yeah. powerful man. <laughs> but she was just talking about how she <clears throat> listens all the time and yeah. she knew stuff about the show. Nikki saint -Gil. Yeah. And then Eric shows up. Nikki Sanjil married Nick Guccione, so they're Nikki and Nick. <laughs> Nick and that can make you throw up. She's hot. What was she wearing? She, you know, a little, uh, little like mini dress, you know, with a plunging back on. Mm. Oh, God, that whole deal. Oh, vey. That's nice. She's very pretty, man. Oh, please. Oh, please. Jeez. Police. Just nothing to say, huh? Speechless. What happened to Amy Lynch? She didn't show up? No, she's no actually, because she's of the gonna, hurricane. She, she's coming tonight. Nobody knows it. Oh. <laughs> you know I mean? She couldn't get out because yeah. of the this hurricane. This is funny. Anybody who asked for her last night, I was supposed to tell them that you can come back She'd tomorrow night. She'll be there tomorrow oh. night. Yeah, but <laughs> how would you know? Was anybody asking for her? Oh, uh, a couple of people. Yeah, didn't they? All right. <laughs> oh! So, uh, you, what'd you do? You just stood there and signed autographs? Yeah. So huh. then Eric shows up. I pitch Eric. I pitch Eric, and he's really weird. He just, you know, he's got all these ideas for the show that are just dumb ideas. <laughs> right, bad ideas. <laughs> trying to get on. Yeah, just trying to yeah. get on. But, you know, the one, well, he's talking about how, like, he saw Heather Locklear on Good Morning America, mm -hmm. and Michael J. Fox was right next to her, and he was shaking. And, you know, the reason he was shaking, because he was standing next to Heather, and he's, like, telling jokes. And he's also, there's something weird going on with his teeth. He doesn't brush them, so there's lots of, like, crud on him. Oh. Mm. How do you know he doesn't brush them, you asked him? Well, well, there's crud on him, so I'm assuming you can't brush your teeth and have crud on them. Mm. Like, like junk. Really? Like, it just junk right on his teeth. Does his breath smell? I don't get that close to him. I really <laughs> right. don't. And then he shakes your hand, and it's all slimy. Mm. But the great thing about him is he's really desperate to get on the show now. Like, I've been blowing him off, but he's so desperate to get on the show, he's into the I'll do anything. Uh -huh. And you know, the last time he kissed Benji. Last time I had to spank him. No, and then after that, he kissed oh. Benji. Right. And, and, you know, kissing guys. You know, he was talking about, like, eating, you know, Hershey kisses out of people's behinds. Uh, really? You know, Eric's, yeah. like, at that level. Well, let's make him do it. I know. We have to think of something really good for him. Uh, he just did. Let's make him eat a Hershey kiss out of a behind. He said he would do it. Now we got to find a behind. Jackie's retired his behind. I retired my ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Benji's behind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Let him eat a Hershey kiss out of Benji's behind. Oh. I'll see that. Nobody's yeah. taken up Benji on his offer of bone marrow. No. <laughs> oh. Matt, you're, what is it, Benji? Oh. Would you let him do that? Would you let Eric <clears throat> eat a Hershey, Hershey kiss out of your butt? When I let him kiss me, the agreement was you were going to help me get a girl. Right. And that was kind Ooh. of an ambiguous agreement. I, you, you, you know. I forgot but about But this that. time, I want a specific one Who? Uh, of actual intercourse. Nikki Sanjil? Oh. 
Poop. Or actual oh, something. Like how am I going to get you intercourse? Well, Eric will have intercourse. <laughs> yeah, does it have to be a woman? <laughs> it has to be, at least look like a woman. Right. <laughs> no, Do we, wait, wait, hold on a second. Did we bring you to scores and show you the best time of your that life? That was very nice of you. Yeah, I thought saying, I was going to bring saying, you to scores. There was, was this the, the, woman that I'm not, I'm not saying you did it. I'm not saying you did it. You couldn't bang one of those scores chicks? What's wrong with you? I didn't know we were allowed to. Mm-hmm. He was sweating. Well, you're not a, you got to ask him out on a date. Oh. Don't you remember Benji was sweating profusely and gawking at the girls? He scared right. them all. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'm, just, I'm, I've been, I, I'm. Tell you what, you let, you let high pitch Eric eat a Hershey kiss out of your butt, and I'll take you to scores again the next time I go. I, I come uh, on, Benji. Huh? <laughs> no, I, I'm holding uh, out. No? Okay, I'm, fine. I'm, That's I'm, right. No. Goodbye. All right. You're, and you're not going to scores anymore either. Mm. All right. Honestly, I, I, you're I not mean, going. Why not? Because I, because. Otherwise, I can't get you to do the Hershey kiss thing. <laughs> you're not helping out. Well, that's fair. I mean, it's your decision and my All right, decision. Fine. All right. Not your decision. I'm deciding you're not going to scores anymore. Good decision. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the next five dopey ideas for airtime stay out there. Right. Right. I, I would volunteer, but I really I am so repulsed by Eric. Yeah. I really, I mean, I'm not sure mm-hmm. I would let any guy do it. Right. But it'd be funny if you did it, especially him. And we can animate oh. it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I really, he, you know, first of all, like, Howard, the guy hangs around the building. I don't know what mm. when, what he does for a living. I know. I see him here all the time. Yeah. You know, and I see him all the time, and and I'm at the point now where I just walk by him because he wants to stop and chat for. He's like, hi, Howard. He's repulsive before he talks. Right. Right. Yeah. And then, whoa. <laughs> <He's> lurking. <laughs> Matt, you're on the air. How you doing, Howard? I was just listening to Greg Brady. That's unbelievable. <laughs> you know how, like, these childhood stars, you know, they, they, they like, grow up to be nobodies? Yeah. But they still have that circle of friends that are like, hey, man, you were really cool. So, yeah. you know, they're yeah. going to kiss their ass to do anything to hang out with them. Yeah. I could just see him, like, sitting around going, yeah, you should put out an album, man. You yeah, know, you're, you're really, really good. good. They're probably drunk at a karaoke bar and like, yeah. Exactly. When's he coming in? I can't get him in here I sooner. Think, uh, I think in about 10 days. Really? Uh, we got to get the losers. See, but he's done stuff. Like, he was in Joseph. He was in, yeah, a lot of Broadway, lot of Broadway productions Broadway. and toured with shows. He's one of the many child stars that was Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dream Yeah. Comic. I don't care what he's done. This is the funniest goddamn thing I ever heard. I don't know why he did this. This is better than <laughs> the William Shatner. Like Jim Neighbors. You know what's funny? People, listen to this. People, listen. People, listen. Ah, there you go. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Imagine me and you, I do. I think about you day and night. It's only right to think about the girl you love and hold the time. So happy together. Like, yeah, they're confused. Yeah. They don't know which version they like better, the turtles or this. But Howard, even if you could have this But this album, is like identical to what the turtles do, yeah. so like, why would you get this? But even if you could have an album with all the originals, right? The right. Originals, I'm not sure I'd want it. Would you want an album that had both Happy Together and Rhythm of the Night on it? No. no. It makes no sense. Uh, and you say you yeah. I think his chances would be a lot better if he did like a duet with Wood Yee. Right. <laughs> of La Vida Loca. Oh, <laughs> hey, why don't we get uh, Wood Yee and him to do a, a duet? Wood Yee together. meets Greg Brady. I like that. Right. Wood Yee and Greg Brady. How about I got you, babe? <laughs> I got <laughs> you, babe. Hey, say where you Start me on, Greg. So happy together. So how is the weather? <laughs> See you. Love and love. Ba, 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 ba. He's gotta be. That's excellent. That's the best. Hey, I'm, I'm calling from Philadelphia. <laughs> got a hurricane report? Yeah, we're going to get some hurricane reports on. <laughs> like in Orlando. Thanks, dude. Later. See you. Right. We should uh, talk to the trooper, Howard. Oh, where is he? He's uh, here waiting to go on. Oh, he's here? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were talking to him on the phone. That's what I'm waiting for him to put up. Oh, no, no, no. I thought oh, he's, he's here. here. I thought you knew he was here. This dude's a trooper. Wow. He claims when he, he was working. He says he worked for I got to take a break first. Clinton, right? Yeah, he worked for Governor Clinton. Listen to this. Wow. And then we got burping for breath. I'm way behind now. I'm dicking around with the Greg Brady album. <laughs> but who couldn't? Yeah, who couldn't? <laughs> <laughs> that was hot off the presses. I'm thinking of playing this back-to-back with Nancy Sirianni's new CD. <laughs> oh. One of these two has to produce a hit. <laughs> yeah. Out of the two of them, yeah, I'm sure I'm onto something. <laughs> uh, let's see here. This dude, man, this, guy's, this guy claims he came out with this stuff in 1993. He offered to take a lie detector test, but no one has taken him up on it. We no, should have given him one. We should have given him a lie detector Didn't test. Didn't he make these claims and then say right. that they were false? And then I don't the know who you're talking about. I remember about. hearing about this guy long ago that there was a, 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 an ex-trooper, and I remember thinking that he was disgruntled. But, of, right. of course, it, in light of everything that went on... Here's the claims he makes. Been. He says... Unbelievable. Uh, he had a special intercom system in the governor's mansion. 
that would warn Bill when women, you know, like like when he was with women, if Hillary was coming, That's they could right. warn him. He had a warning system to get rid of the women when Hillary was around. He claims he observed Clinton having sex with a woman other than Hillary on a security television. <laughs> Once he had a block off the roads around Chelsea School while Clinton received oral sex from a woman in a car. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> All right. He, uh... <laughs> That's balls, man. Yeah, right. He um, had he said Clinton had sex at every conceivable location, airport, hangars, etc. Um, <laughs> he claims he's been threatened, kind of veiled threatened, that he better shut up. Shut up. All right. He claims that he observed Clinton having sexual affairs four to five times. Uh, he says he w he was asked to get win women for Clinton fifteen to twenty times. Did he? Uh, I don't know. We're gonna ask him. <laughs> You know what I want to know? You know what I'd like to ask this guy, Howard? Just how, how much is Hillary in on this whole thing? How much does she know? Does she know and just turn a when blind eye? When did she know it? Yeah, well, maybe stay in here. You can ask him some questions. Claims he heard uh, Bill and Hillary refer to Jewish people as Jew bastards and Jew boys. <laughs> <laughs> Personally heard Bill refer to black people as niggers and telling jokes about niggers. <laughs> And, uh... Well, you know, did you ever see that postcard that uh, Bill sent his grandmother? Yeah. It was in one of those auction books. It's a, it's a black kid eating a giant watermelon. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Maybe he's been enlightened since he was younger. <laughs> Claims since that Clinton, Clinton would ask all the troopers to let, let him see naked photos of their wives. But he, Good Lord! <laughs> That's like our show. But, yeah. but, you know, Howard doesn't even do that. Oh, no. <laughs> That's next. How do you get naked pictures of your wife and bring them to the governor? Yeah, yeah. Uh, honey, you got to get undressed, and i got to take this Polaroid because the governor wants to see. Right. Could mean a, could mean a raise. <laughs> <laughs> it's a promotion. So, and, and then a million other things that we got to ask him about. I want to know if any of the girls were pretty. Yeah, yeah, we well, got to write know, all this stuff down, man. Don't forget. One has admitted to having <laughs> had sex with him was a miss... The one in the in Arkansas the limo. or a Miss America or something, and she's now an actress. And by the way, do you know it's Anne Marie's fantasy, Anne Marie, who works for us, to sing with Greg Brady? Oh, she's in <gasps> love with Greg. What? Brady. Yeah, does she sing? Oh, who cares? Right. She should sing with him. So Maybe this we'll, is a fantasy of hers. Yeah, she's a big Brady Bunch fan. So when he comes in, why don't we do that? Oh, we'll have the losers great. with uh, Anne Marie, and she can sing with him. Happy to go. She should wear, do wear a thong. She should just wear a little go-go <laughs> outfit, like now, a, you know. Stop. Right, why not? Stop, stop. She's giving the girl her fantasy. Cool. Give us our fantasy. Let's find girl. out her limits. Yeah. This is someone who works with She's an us. employee, not an intern, so yeah, we can go much farther. Oh, Whatever. I Leave hope that she says no to you. Hi, Emery. Marie. We respect you. Too. Is it really your fantasy I to sing yes with Greg Brady? I love him. You do? Yeah. Really? I want to sing Sunshine Day with him. Really? Yeah. I, I can arrange it. Much. Would you really? sing it in a provocative outfit? How provocative are we Fung? talking? Oh, no. You wouldn't? No. Bikini? No. One piece? Grass One piece? One piece. How about what I'm wearing? Uh, <laughs> no. I'm how gonna, about, then how I'm going to cut it. How about like um, a little white mini skirt and white go-go boots, like a little Marsha Brady outfit? That yeah. I would do. How about a very I would do a Marsha slip. Brady outfit. I don't want any go-go boots. I hate go-go boots. Why? I hate when it covers up a woman's whole leg, those go-go boots, up to the knee. Oh, I like those boots. I hate it. Oh, Bikini? Right. No, she said no to that. No, already. I tried that. Slip. How about like, a, like one of those short like tops, you know, where it shows the belly with a bikini bottom? Oh, I don't... How about a Come sports on. bra and shorts? Oh, wait, 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 wait. How about... Hot pants halter? No. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Hot <laughs> pants and a halter top. Like very 70s. Very 70s. Just hot how about pants. about a halter top and like... Daisy bottoms. Dukes. No. Hell oh, bottom. Oh. Like, how about a halter oh. top and Daisy Dukes so you can see be. the butt cheeks? Like they wear Oh, motors. God. You don't want to see my butt cheeks. Really? Are they bad? Well, I, I know what this is. I can't like imagine. That. you got a hot body. Yeah. You have no uh, idea what we want to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let us tell you what we want to see. I know what this is about, Howard. I think yeah. I, can, I can work some magic here. Right. You don't want your husband to be upset, right? So why don't, why don't I get him like a kill him, like a watch from... Why don't we kill your husband and then you'll be free? Oh, you're going to give your, his, her husband a present? Give him, let's give him a watch. <laughs> so like in the Philippines. Let's call him so what is she, a Filipino? Yeah. We're going to give you. We're going to give your husband a... a, a candy bar. A candy bar. <laughs> and then he'll give us <laughs> you. How about tickets to Woodstock? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why don't we send him to England? Really? And then, uh, I, have, I, I, I have trips to L.A. <laughs> Why don't we send LA. your husband to L.A.? Yeah, put him in a LA. porno movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Disney take him to score. Yeah, what do I have here? I've got a, a trip, a triple X porno vacation. Oh, yeah. we, can bring, we can bring our husband to the next score. He party. can direct a porn film. Yeah, you yeah. bring him. That's great. You do that. That's All right. Cool. In other words, you would wear Daisy Dukes and a halter if your husband said it was okay. Hmm. Yeah. I just, it, it's not really to do <laughs> with what he says is okay. Go ahead. I, mean, I, I certainly wouldn't want him to be upset. I wouldn't want to upset him. Right, right. Embarrass him. Um, right. right. But um, it's more like I'm, I'm also embarrassed, you know, I'm not... You don't think you're in good shape? Honey, oh, God. I, what I'm, from what I'm seeing. No complaints. I'm oh, telling man. you. No.
That's it's, sweet. All, it's all good to me. Do you walk on the street yeah. and look at what else is going on? Right. You're you're 100% better than anything walking down the street. That's very it, sweet. Mm. You know what her problem is? She doesn't think she's hot. I know. Yeah. Shame. <laughs> No, um, it's refreshing, actually. We it's nice when a hot chick doesn't think she's hot. Can I tell you something? Oh, that's nice. You, you mm. discuss, you're the topic of conversation quite a bit. Yeah. Really? About how pretty you are. Yeah, yeah. a lot of guys talking guys. about you. Oh, that's I'm not in on those discussions, you. but other people. Uh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I've heard them. <laughs> you just overhear them and keep walking. Yeah, right. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> it's not right. Mm. They usually preface by some sort of a groan. Oh. Mm. Oh, she's so hot. Oh. Yeah. Oh, pretty hot. All right, so let's finish this. You're going to sing with Greg Brady. Right. But the to. question is, what do you wear? Yeah, that's the question. I don't see why you can't wear hot pants and a and a halter. Yeah. That's no, that's good. Pants, we'll have to, you know, look for some outfits. We have some time. Yeah, we, All right. I don't want to do a little have, fashion show. Yeah, Gary. Gary and I. Yeah, we'll go, go shopping out. with you. Gary. Yeah, right, I'll go well. shopping with oh, okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Gary. Right. 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 wants to say something. Uh, 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 here's I, 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 I don't think. I don't think. I don't think. You look particularly handsome. Oh no. Oh no. You have so many sexy outfits in the office. What's the difference? Are you serious? Yeah. She has like these like short skirts. Yeah. You know, she barely wears a bra. Yeah. Oh, no, barely. <laughs> like, how do you barely wear a bra? Either office. that or it's mighty cold in the office. No, no. She wears, she wears, it is cold in the office. I think she wears bras, but there's, you can get those <laughs> bras that like your mom had that are right. made out of like rubber. Yeah. Or you can get the ones that are that are so sheer. and yeah, It's sheer. almost like not yeah, wearing a bra. It's like not wearing a bra. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like there's a hole in it. Yeah. Those are cool. Yeah, you wear good bras. Yeah, I don't really want to wear the ones with all the, the padding because then it gets all like that bumpy look. Right. So, I mean, yeah. Well, also, you don't need padding. You want a natural look. Well, that I do. But You want a bra that looks like you're not wearing a bra. That's right. Mm. Mm. This sounds like uh, the state trooper and Bill Clinton's discussion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she could help. All right, so you want to sing with Greg Brady. Brady, do you sing? Do you actually oh, absolutely give... not. I'll, I'll probably make a fool of You don't even care. No, I don't care. <laughs> but how, because I how know do you Greg love Greg Brady I mean, that Barry much. will appreciate Yeah, I don't know how you love Greg Brady. That's sick. <laughs> you know what I it love is? Marcia. The Brady Bunch <clears throat> is just the best show there ever was. Really? Absolutely. Really? Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. And Greg's very cool. He was always very cool. You like his new CD? Uh, <laughs> you know, the songs on the Would CD. Would you get this CD? <laughs> You like that? Yeah, I like that. You like the way he you does. You would actually take this home and play it. <laughs> I probably would. <laughs> I wondered who was doing that. Did you used to fantasize I'm that you were? I'm one of the people. <laughs> did you used to fantasize that you were Marsha Brady? Oh man. The, um. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, so all right, let's get an appropriate outfit. If okay. it's a hot enough outfit, I'll let you sing with him. Oh, okay. All right. Gotta be. Are the losers gonna back him up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to play Still Drum. You'll have the perfect band. We'll, we'll get to see Anne-Marie from the back. Then. Hey, is, is there a trumpet solo in Happy Together? I can't sure. remember. There is now. There is now, yeah. <laughs> Ever since you started playing the trumpet. All right, Anne-Marie, so you've got to get something really hot. Don't don't give us some bogus outfit. All right, well, somebody's got to help me out. Well, uh, Gary, you'll, you'll go shopping with her. Send her with a scores girl. <laughs> My job. Right. You yeah. wear a bikini? I mean, that's not embarrassing. Bikini? Yeah, why not? Oh, come on. Someone told me you dress in pajamas and pretend that you're Ally McBeal. Oh. oh. <laughs> Is that true? Is that really true? Do you oh. dance with the baby? <laughs> Who are you no, today? I have the lamb pajamas that she has. And yeah. They, and you dance, dance around? around. You know, when Where are those? Show, not, uh, Can we I, see I that? <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> you pretend to be Allie McBeal? No, no, no. I, don't I thought she was okay. Her. I thought she was pretty normal. <laughs> oh, God. I know Benji just said that. <laughs> I, um, I, 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 love, I love the show, Allie McBeal, and I think the, I love her pajamas with the little lambs on them. Right. I have them. Right. And then uh, I think <laughs> there's nothing wrong. That's the child within you. I'm home and What's the dance around. she does? I don't even know. You know, sort of dancing like baby? wild, crazy. Let me see. Oh, oh, I can't do it. Oh, come on. Oh, see. Okay. Yeah. 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 Give her some music. I'd have to have it. Play the play. I've been down this road. What are you singing? He's strumming the air guitar. I don't think I'm Allie McBeal. I don't try to be Allie McBeal. I just think the pajamas are cute, and I just. You got to lose about eighty pounds in order to be Allie McBeal. Yeah, Allie McBeal. Yeah. Being goofy, that's all. All right. Well, I'm really if you, normal. If you want to wear pajamas and dance around like Ali McBeal. You're not normal. If you love this Greg Brady, you're not normal. Right. Listen, you need a hot outfit to, to, to work with him. We need to see him something really hot. But you know, it's really okay. weird how all right. these older guys, like even like the guys from the Monkees, who, yeah. who are just downright ancient at this point, mm -hmm. I, they get like still like 30-year-old groupies who are cute girls who used to watch Watch them when they were yeah. five or yeah. four. And those guys are really old. Right. You could be getting that stupid. Oh. You ran off and got married. This guy had some life. This wasn't so bad either. What? I was 19. 
I know. You he gave up. Never a, had that you life. Gave a, I never had that life. You know, you're, you're the worst arguer out of anyone I ever said. You your life was any bad either. You no, gave, I was a 19 year old broke kid. You gave up on yourself before your life even started. Right. But you had a life and you gave it up. <laughs> Dope. All right, oh. let's uh, let's let Anne Marie out of here. Anne Marie, yeah. if you want to sing with Greg Brady, you know we do need a show business type of it. That's all we're you. saying. Okay, okay, thank you. You got it. All right, and put Greg Brady in something exciting. Oh, that's <laughs> put him, I'll make him wear the outfit. He'll wear the bikini. No, I'll make him wear that Johnny Bravo outfit. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty oh, funny. Dear. It's a headband and glasses and a fringe. Yeah, uh, yeah that'll be good. Yeah, the fringe jacket. Yeah. Mm. Whew. Man, what is it, Chris? I gotta get the trooper in here. Chris, go ahead. Yes, Howard. I like to challenge that sexy Anne Marie to a. Uh, Brady trivia contest, if I could. Hmm. And uh, I'll win. I'll, I'll wear the uh, thong if you want. No, that's all right. We don't want. Believe me, we don't want you in a thong. Nobody wants to see. You. But I'm a, the biggest Greg Brady fan there is. We want to see him in a thong. Oh, what do you see me? <laughs> that's okay. You sure? Yeah. Thank you. Thank we should you. ask Emory some uh, <laughs> Brady bunch trivia. Let's see how much she really knows. I don't know anything I about that. Know. Show. No, I, I know I know a lot. I'm trying to think yeah. of that. Uh, mm. We'll get some book or something. All right, listen, i got to take a break. When we come back, we'll meet the trooper. This cat's name is uh, uh, Larry. And he worked for Bill Clinton for like six years. He was a state trooper for 32 years, and he swears he's... He went to the press with his story in December of 1993, but everyone's blowing him off. Why is that? I don't know. Well, maybe they're afraid. You know, it sounds like actionable. I mean, can he corroborate any of this? Yeah, stuff? so we'll hear what he has to say. We'll be back right after these words. Howard is the king, and he stay brings more freak city and strippers and lesbians. All of us shall suck, so don't be a schmuck. The FCC hates him, but who gives a f Because Howard's Utopia. Ah, yeah, Jackie, the joke page Martling. Jackie Penthouse joke page Martling, your 79 minute raunchy joke CD, hot dog and donuts is only $12 plus $4 US shipping. Call 1 800 323 King. His three wild oleo CDs also available at all Sam Goody in the warehouse. For new jokes, filthy 3D joke man, visit jokeland.com. So, um, this guy's name is Larry. Uh,. He only goes by one name. Is like Cher? He trying to keep mm -hmm. himself. Secret? I don't know. I gotta ask him. Maybe he does. Go. I'm sure he gives his last name. He claims in 1993 he came out with about 20 billion uh, Clinton revelations. The guy was a state trooper for 32 years. This is no uh, guy who just you know was a state trooper for a well, week. He doesn't look like a kook. Doesn't look like a kook. But neither does Jackie. Or Anne Marie. Hi, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a Greg Brady fan, are you? <laughs> state trooper. <laughs> No. You're State Trooper Patterson, right? Retired. State Retired. Police. Well, let me tell you. Hey, shut up, Jackie. <laughs> Wacko. <laughs> Believe me, you want to arrest someone, arrest Jackie. You guys high on pot every Frisco. every five minutes. Don't frisk me. <laughs> I'm holding. <laughs> State Trooper, do you still get to carry a gun? Yes. Yeah, that's cool. That's what's so cool about being a retired cop or anything. Get to carry guns. Mm. I understand. It's the greatest thing. I understand you have a concealed carry permit. That's right. I carry guns. What caliber? Well, I got a thirty-two. I got a. Uh, I got a whole bunch of. I love guns. Yeah. I'm a big gun freak. Sometimes he just straps on a holster and walks yeah. down the street. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll, I'll 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 challenge you to a duel right now. You know, in Arizona, you can do that. <laughs> Arizona's a great state. I'm thinking of moving there. I really am, just so I can walk around with my guns. They shoot the cactus. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible what they do out there with the cactus. Honest to God, you from Arizona now? No. You are not. Live in Arkansas. Live in Arkansas. All right. So you were a state trooper in Arkansas for 32 years, and for seven of those years, you were with the governor, Governor Clinton. That is correct. And you made these releva revelations, and you, you said... You can verify that you were with the governor. Yes. Okay. He looks like a state trooper. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You ever pull over chicks, and they offer you sex if you, you know, you let them out of a parking ticket and stuff? That happened to me one time. Really? Uh, when Did I was you working take it? <laughs> Did you take it? Howard, you really don't want me to answer that, do you? That's a yes, isn't it? That's an affirmative no, officer, no, isn't it? No. It's tempting. Was the chick hot? Clint would have accepted it. She was, yeah. She, she was, was very pretty. Really? Very pretty. A, a student at, at the university, and uh, so she said, uh, you know, we can go down. I'm not approved. We can go down the street and work this out. Really? No. Yes. Wow. Yes, sir. And you said no, because she could have been undercover. She could have been trying to. That is true. Yeah. Uh, but, but maybe he just is a moral guy, 
and oh, wouldn't God. do something like that. No, there's no oh, such oh, thing. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Most guys would He's go. He's only afraid of getting caught. Yeah. And she was hot, huh, young girl? Yes. Oy vey. <laughs> Holy mackerel. That's hot. White chick? Yes. Oh, oh boy. boy. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you married man? No. Divorced? Really? Yes. Interesting. How long divorced? Ever since the girl pulled him over. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been divorced? Since 1986. Is that right? Yes. So you date? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You get some nice house for us, or uh, you get something better than that? Are you dating? What's the age range? Mm. You live in La Vida Loca? <laughs> <laughs> Howard, you're too bad. I know it. <laughs> so yeah. now, when did you work for the uh, Governor Clinton? What years? Went on the detail late in 1986 uh, and stayed on the detail until he left uh, to be sworn in as the 42nd president. I see. Actually, you say you were very disgusted by him because you felt like a pimp because you had to go up to girls and ask for phone numbers and things like this. Howard, he would see some attractive lady in the audience and he would get my attention and he'd say, Larry, the lady in the blue dress or black dress, go get her name and telephone number. She has that come hither look. Wow. So I would go out in the audience, pick out the lady, introduce myself, tell her that the governor was interested, get her name, telephone number. No kidding. Did you just say, hey, the governor's interested in meeting you? That, that he's interested in you. Really? Yes. Wow. I need, I want to hire you to do that for uh, our show. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a rock star, Clinton, because that's what rock stars do. Right, right. they single yes. out the women and tell yeah. the, the g guys in the crew to go Larry, get them. What was the percentage? Uh, that's a cool move when you have somebody else. You know, you know, when I was in high school, I should have had one of my friends go out and say, Howard Stern is interested in you. You know what? I was reading something in the tabloids the other day about Kevin Costner. They right. said he went to some party or some place, mm -hmm. and, you know, he surveyed the room. Right. And then he went back to his car <laughs> yeah. and sent a guy out to go approach the women he liked. Really? And how many? What is the percentage? He got nobody that night. Really? Aww. Yeah. Uh, what about Clinton? I mean, what was the percentage? Yeah. Howard, in the, the years I worked for Bill Clinton, doing this 25 to 30 times, yes. I never had one to refuse to give me her name. Is no that kidding. right? He knew how to pick them. That is true. Officer, this is incredible what you're telling me. He batted a thousand. I think it's because of the true. officer. I think you had a special technique. What do you think of that? You're a guy I'd hold well, on he's to. He's carrying a gun. What are you going to say? Here. No? Uh, honey, I got a gun. <laughs> now, I said the governor wants to meet you. <laughs> well, thank you, officer. You did a great job. I think you're terrific. So you're telling me, how's my Clinton? Pretty good? That's not bad, Howard. I, I like that. Thank you. I'm quite an impressionist. <laughs> I do that and Jackie the Joke Man Martling. So, um... You would walk up to these women and essentially say, look, I have a gun pointed at your vagina. <laughs> and if uh, you make a wrong move. No, so, so, uh, did you approach Paula Jones? No, I did not. That was Danny Ferguson who done that. Uh -huh. At a later period after this encounter in the Excelsior, I was with the governor. We ran into Paula in the rotunda of the state capitol. He called her by name, Paula, walked over to her took her into an embrace and turned to me and said, Larry, it's kind of like Beauty and the Beast, isn't it? Oh, my God. Jeez. Wow. Wow. Now, you offered to take a lie detector test, but no one will uh, administer this test to you? Offered to take a lie detector test. That is correct. You Nobody do. wants to know if this is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> you, is that it? Nobody wants to know. Nobody wants to think about it. Uh, that it, it seems to be... It's old news. Yeah. Yeah. True. But why did you come forward? Why, uh, why, why even bother with this? Well... Howard, originally there were four troopers that was assigned to Governor Security that came forward. Right. Uh, and we thought we had a story to tell that the American people would be interested in. Well, uh, this is one American that's interested in every kind of gossip how many there troopers is. troopers are there in the governor's detail? There was 11 uh -huh. troopers assigned. Wow. Wow. So five, four of us came forward. Later on, another one. So a total of five troopers have come forward to tell their stories about their experiences with Bill and Hillary Clinton. Boy, this guy gets laid a lot, huh? Yeah, this guy. Howard, I'm telling but you. But does he ever get it with Hillary? Nobody ever sees sex yeah. with Hillary. Do you think they have sex? Howard, can I tell a, a, a real quick story? Please do, officer. <laughs> <laughs> you go too, ahead. You're too bad, Howard. Go ahead, man. Too bad. <laughs> it was a late fall afternoon. We had a speaker at the back door of the governor's mansion, and the back door went right into the kitchen, so if the storm door was open, you could hear all the conversation. Nice. Another trooper and myself was working Sunday afternoon, fall of the year, you know, no traffic, very little noise. 
we kept hearing this conversation going on, and I asked the other trooper, I said, Ronnie, what's, wh where's, the, where's the conversation coming from? He said, it's from the kitchen. So he turned up the, the speaker. So we're hearing this conversation between Bill and Hillary, right. and she tells him it evolves into their sex life. Go ahead. And she says, Bill, I need sex more than twice a year. You have effed me twice in the last year. Oh, my goodness. Two times. So actually, they do have sex. But two times. She needs it, she is needs what it she's more saying. Than that. Holy mackerel. <laughs> what, what, what was that? What year was that? That had to be in 1988, 89, Whoa. something like that. And did he say, Hillary, how could I give you sex? I'm worn out from all these other chippies. <laughs> I'm busy. I mean, really, I'm busy. <laughs> I can't I can't. Full. Yeah, I mean, a man can only perform so much. Would, would you say that even there were days that uh, the, the governor would have two or three different sex partners within a day? Many days like that, Howard. Really? Many. If we were in town, this guy would get up in the morning and he would take off to jog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yet lose no weight. Jog, right? quote unquote. Yeah, how, this guy never lost any weight. Right. Out the back gate, Howard. He's gone 45 minutes an hour. He calls from McDonald's, which is 10, 15 blocks down the street. He right. Says, Come and pick me up. Right. You know, it's hot weather. It's 80, 90 degrees. The humidity's, you know, 60, 70 percent. We get him in the car. We start back. Not a drop of sweat on him. Mm. He said, Gov, how far did you go today? And he said, oh, Larry, I done five. I said, oh, come Five on. miles. Come on. Right. And you'd have to tell him, Gov, we've got to take you out to the office and clean you up before you go back in. You've got makeup on you. You've got lipstick on you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, he'd and so he'd have, like, lipstick smeared all over. <laughs> yeah, how'd you get that jogging? Ah, that's so funny. And, and makeup so. It's, I, yeah, I, I ran into someone at McDonald's, and, you know, these right. people, they love me. I, hu I hugged someone, and I said, she, did she also hug your shorts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so why didn't Kenneth Starr call on you, seriously, during these investigations? You would be the guy to speak yeah. to. Well, I was interviewed probably a total of six times, Howard. Really? By the, uh, by the Special prosecutor? By the investigators from the special prosecutors testified once before the grand jury. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, my God. Well, what else now? I mean, there's some uh, uh, amazing accusations of... He liked to do it in public. Yeah, he, this this guy was... I, he was he was brazen, you know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. And from blocking streets... Yeah, now tell me about that. At Chelsea's school, <laughs> you, ha you were assigned to cordon off an area so the president could receive oral sex? That is correct. In a car. In a car. In a car. Now, can does you he imagine? say, look, I'm going to get a little oral sex, so could <laughs> you cordon off the streets? Well, he said, we were, it was Chamber of Commerce, uh, the state banquet, so all the state Chamber of Commerce were in town, and we were going to all these receptions. So it's 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night, and he's, he's on the phone between yes. the different receptions, and he says, Larry, I, I've got to meet a friend. I, I need to, to visit with her. Right. I need to counsel her. Yeah, privately. So he said, uh, just drive down to Chelsea School. And so the lady was already <laughs> sitting in the parking area under a street light. She hot? She wasn't bad. Right. Right. Go uh, ahead. Yeah. yeah. Go she, ahead. She was an eight plus. Really? Yes. Nice. So he says, Larry, why don't you just stay here and kind of block the street and make sure that we're not disturbed? And I said, sure. So I pulled the car across the street. <laughs> You know, I'm stop in, traffic. What? Well, this was a one way in. Right. So, so, I'm sitting here with the street block. Two Little Rock City cops pull up, and they said, "You know, what's going on? Well, you know, what's what, what's with the car? What what are you doing?" I showed them my ID and said, "Well, I've got a friend back here, a, a trooper that right. he's he's meeting a, a married lady, so they wanted some privacy." And the guy says, "You know, I hope if the school is burglarized that you can you know fade the heat." And I said, "Well, I thought I think I probably can." Wow. So, when <laughs> do you ever think, like, didn't you say, hey, I got into being a state trooper, not so I could sit there and make sure there. the president gets yeah. laid, well, yeah. but yeah, I want to do something meaningful, right? And it gets to you, doesn't it? Well, it, I, I was a pimp. Right. Yeah. You were a pimp. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Simple as that. You're blowing the lid off this. Did the president have an unusual penis? <laughs> have you seen it? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I showered with him one time, Howard. You know. showered with him. And what are you doing in the shower? <laughs> we, we were oh. An athletic. Oh. Why'd you get that divorce? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a. Come on, Howard. Come you don't on. have a. Uh, what do they call that? Love me. saying the president goes both ways? <laughs> yeah, what are you saying? <laughs> no. I got something to tell you. We were in. Uh, uh, come on in here, <laughs> Officer Larry. <laughs> Trooper. Trooper. Larry, I dropped you. the soap. <laughs> Larry. Many times. Go, many girl. times I look at you and I realize. Feelings. I have feelings for you. You've always protected me so well. Go ahead. So you uh, we were in an athletic club in Denver, so it was open showers. I'm looking at you. you got a nicer ass than Hillary. I'll tell you. <laughs> he certainly does. Go ahead. So, uh, yeah, that's the only time I was ever around Bill Clinton. And did you see anything unusual about his penis? Small. Small. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> but when you say small, less than an inch, flaccid? Oh, no, no. It's... it's Longer than an inch. It is. Yes. Flaccid. Then it ain't that small. Yes. <laughs> then it ain't that small. Dude, I'll show you mine. <laughs> oh, we have some challenges. Unbelievable. Really? The room. And what about this black chick who was claiming that she uh, got and knocked up by kid. the uh, yeah. governor? Is that is that possible? Bobby Ann Williams, uh, and uh, supposedly uh, Bill Clinton fathered a child, Danny Williams, a uh, young man. I don't know. He's 14, 15, 16 years old now. A black child. Yeah. Scandalous. Yeah. But they did DNA tests, and it showed that well, he was not Robin, shot. this is the information I have. Uh -huh. At the time the house was burglarized, it was a simple burglary. There were two pictures taken. I think a 5 by 7 and an 8 by 10 picture of this young man taken. This is the only thing that was taken in this burglary. It appeared in one of the tabloids. Mm -hmm. This picture did. Buddy Young, who was the commander of the governor's security for the state police assisted the little rock city police in this investigation mm. so it was a simple house burglary so why would head of governor's security a state policeman assist the little rock city police in a simple burglary if there was but you never something? saw them together never saw them together okay. all right among your claims you also say that you observed the president on a security television set having sex with a woman other than hillary true you also claim that there was a time that Jennifer Flowers was uh, administering oral sex to the president while he was waving to Hillary Clinton? Now, that is Jennifer Flowers' story. I see. That's not your story. That is not. <laughs> <laughs> and you say you heard uh, uh, then-Governor Clinton say, Jew bastard and Jew boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've heard Jackie say that, but he's not the governor. <laughs> yeah, we don't expect right. much from him. He told a lot of ethnic jokes. He did. And, uh, and used the word nigger. He used the N-word, He did. Yes. Wow. If, if he was upset at... Like Jesse Jackson, you say, oh, that yeah. nigger. Yeah. Or we had we have a black activist in Little Rock, Say McIntosh, yes. that put out these flyers on Clinton and that he fathered uh, several children. Yes. So uh, he would use... Uh, the N-word for that? Yeah, when he was very, very upset. Really? My God. My God. Well, this is all uh, th this is all very scandalous, and it could even so, be. So wait a minute, you know we don't Jackie, know if it's true. Jackie wants to know just how much Hillary is in on this. Is she aware? Yeah. Of all this, while this yeah, what do you, what do you? I mean, you spent time with these people. What, what is she putting up with this? She's got to know. Howard, listen, this you, was, we were. At, did she have an affair with Vince Foster? Oh, there's no doubt about that. You say he, she did. Wow. Yes. No doubt. Yes. No doubt. No doubt. Why is there no doubt? Well, <laughs> I saw Vince Foster yeah. put his hands on Hillary Clinton's breast. Now that happens sometimes. Yeah, when does that happen? <laughs> I do that to Robin. Robin. Come on. He walks up behind her and he, you and know, palm them. Tom, um, oh. both of them, oh. mm. reaches down. Grabs, Demonstrate on me, officer. Grabs, <laughs> 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 Go ahead. Wait a second. Yes. Grabs her by the butt. Uh-huh. I'm seated in a bar. Mm -hmm. Only person in the bar. He looks over at me, gives me the high sign, big oh. smile, turns, and leaves the place. She Vince did, Foster. Yes. She did not protest. She did not remove his hands. Mm. She did not strike him. She did not say, get your hands off of me. She enjoyed it, in your opinion. Oh. Uh. She did not protest, Howard. Interesting. But that doesn't mean they were having an affair. Well, didn't uh, Governor Clinton want to see naked pictures of your wife? I wasn't married. He was oh. always interested in my girlfriends. And he, he was. Wanted, he wanted to know if you could get naked pictures. Did he pictures? want you to tell him stories? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. oh. Yeah. Oh. Right. yeah. He's, into, he's hornier than me. <laughs> yeah, he would say, Larry, have you, have you got a new girlfriend? <laughs> yes. He said, have you slept with her yet? And I said, no, not yet. You mind if I smell your hands, Larry? <laughs> <laughs> but I'll make a report to you. Really? But we would be at activities, and if, if Hillary was there and, and Bill was coming on to, to someone, I've heard her tell him, Howard, Bill, zip up your pants. You can't do anything here. Wow. So wow. she knows everything. Oh, sure. Certainly she does. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Kathy, you're on the air. Go ahead. I think this guy is full of BS. No. Why? Why? 
Because <laughs> all he hears in his mind is cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Oh, you think it's for money? Is there, oh, yeah. Larry, is there a money motivation in you telling this? Are you writing a book? Do you have a website? What, what's going on? Tell me what you hear before. Video tape. I mean, audio tape. Yes. Two uh, hours. Revelations. Yes. Really? How do I get that? Uh, you can... Let me see. i got to plug it. To order the audio tape, more, more Than Sex, The Secrets of Bill and Hillary Clinton Revealed, go to Newsmax.com. Now, you haven't been sued yet by the president, have you? No. You have never been sued? Have you never. seen him? Have you seen the president since no, you made the accusations? Have not. Have you been? Has your life ever been threatened? I was threatened. Yes. How? Oh, poor baby. I was told if I knew what was good for me and good for my family, that I would keep my mouth shut. You should. <laughs> well, what about that though? What about a state trooper supposed to keep his mouth shut and just do his job? What about that? Do you feel any like why are you coming forward? Well, Howard, I, I, you know it's abuse of power, abuse of people. Uh, you know. I you're said, not a show for the Republican Party? Are yeah, you a Republican? Yeah, no, no. I'm an independent. You, you are an independent. So an you're independent. not one of these guys who's coming forward because the Republicans are back of a you. right-wing conspiracy? I've been accused of being a right-wing conspirator. Like but, a John Burt Society or yeah, something? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? But, uh, wow. Wow. No, none of that. The uh, Monica thing didn't shock you at all. I knew it was going to happen, Howard. I, right. I predicted that there would be a major scandal with a female in now, do presidency. you think he's been continuing this activity that he did as Robin, governor all along? On. Do you think yeah. right now the president yeah. is involved with sex? There's no doubt about it. No <laughs> doubt. There's no doubt no about doubt it. No doubt about this it. This guy is addicted. Addicted to sex? Yes. Well, who isn't? Howard said to me, do you think he's gotten it since Monica Lewinsky? I said, when he was being interviewed for the grand jury, there was a girl under <laughs> <That's right. laughs> low camera level. <laughs> Well, listen, I mean, well, you know, I, I mean, yes, he is making money off the story, and yet he isn't being sued. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to I don't know if this is true or not. I'll be honest with you, officer. I don't I'm not a jury here. I'm not uh, someone who knows, but what can I tell you? It's certainly fascinating because the difference between a, a normal person and a sex addict is somebody who has to have, you know, have at some point when you're the, the governor. Obsessed. At some point when you're the governor, you've got to say to yourself, you know, I'm in a position where people know I'm powerful. It's like maybe I shouldn't take advantage of yeah. everybody. Or it's dangerous. I could be risking my own job, my life, right. and reputation. But he's got to, and he's brazen in front of the officers. He's like, hey, you know, I'm just going to do it. I don't, I'm, I don't even care if these guys know. Hey, guys, help me out is what he Help says. me out. <laughs> i got to get laid. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. No kidding. Did you ever want to leave this detail? I mean, were you disgusted? Yes. And Why didn't you? Well, I put in a request uh -huh. and was told I could not leave. Of course uh -huh. not. They want to keep your, their eye on you. Uh, John, Tom, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, Howard? Hey, bro. Hey, this guy is such a freaking liar. Why don't do you, you say that? Don't I, mean, you think I don't know we, if he is or isn't. Don't you think we would have heard about this, like, long before? Well, we have been hearing about it. We have been hearing about it all along. <laughs> yeah, but all this, all truth, this stuff about yeah, black girls. Guy. That's what everybody was saying when the Monica Lewinsky thing broke. Everyone says, oh, this is ridiculous. This can't be true. Don't you think we would have heard about this? And then the whole story broke, and it was true. Yeah. Right. Bum, we'd bum, always heard, no, we'd always heard rumors about him and women, and then Monica came out, and he denied it. And then he denied the Jennifer Flowers stuff, and he had to admit, admit to, to that. it in grand jury. Well, he, he, he gave Paula Jones a boatload of money. If you want the tape, you call a toll-free 877-NEWS-MAX. 1-877-N-E-W-S-M-A-X or Newsmax.com on the web. That's a lot of stuff you just said, baby. Officer, and this is I wild. And if I was the president and somebody was telling all of these stories about me, I'd sue them. Right. This guy's a lying douche. You think he's lying? Yes. You get a lot of that? You get a lot of people who get angry when you uh, go around telling these stories? Very few. Really? You know, the man has admitted already, Howard, mm -hmm. that he has lied. He shook his finger in your face and mine and all the American people, and he lied to us. Right. He did say, I did not have sex with that woman. He lied under oath. That's right. true, but so are you. You're doing the same thing. No, I'm, I'm not under oath. Are the other troopers mad at you for coming forward? No, they're not proud of me. They are. Howard, there was some 70 to 80 people that went through this detail. Right the 12 years that Bill Clinton was governor of the state of Arkansas. Right. All of these people know that you're exactly telling the truth. What happened? Interesting. Now, do you believe he raped a woman? I do not know. I do not have information about that. Mm -hmm. I think he is probably capable of doing that. Mm. Man. You know, JFK, the president, did the same stuff. He did. That, that, that they know. Yeah, sure. He was busy getting... I don't even know when these guys have time to run the, the office. They, they're very good. <laughs>
<laughs> but they need to be relaxed sexually. <laughs> Why doesn't he just divorce Hillary? Seriously, what do you think? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a a, a, a political marriage. It's yeah, a marriage business. A, so for, you think she's getting it somewhere else, and he just does his thing? Sure. Right. Hmm. Mm. And you were told lie, cheat, steal, or kill. Whatever you have to do to protect the president's ass. No, the governor. The governor at the time, yes. It was a conversation we had, and it was a time when he was doing something that was real risque, and he said, Larry, how are we going to cover this? And I said, we'll do this and this and this. And he said, good idea. He said, you know, Larry, <clears throat> you're required to lie, steal, cheat, or kill. Just uh, whatever it takes to protect my butt. Wow. Cool. Wow. Kill. I want to hire you, Larry. And what do you think? you think the president ever did drugs? Did you ever see any evidence of that? Never saw Bill Clinton when I ever thought he was under the influence wow. of drugs. The most I ever saw Bill Clinton do was consume two or three beers, two or three glasses of wine. Right. But never any Coke or anything. Never any mm -hmm. illegal drugs, no. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Yes, John, go ahead. So you can't blame Hey, hey Howard. Hey, this guy's got to be telling the truth. I voted for Clinton twice. I believe this guy. Not only did I vote for Clinton twice, I'd vote for him again. No, I voted for him, too. But, of course, he was getting nookie. A Yale Law graduate. He's got he's smarter than 99% of the people in, in Arkansas. I, who, who wouldn't get a couple of, a little bit of nookie on the side? Boy, this Thank guy, you. this guy loves nookie. Yeah. Oh, he did it all man. for the nookie, and you could take a cookie and shove it up your head. No. Uh, of, cor of course you did. With the libel laws, this guy would be sued by Clinton if he That's wasn't right. telling the truth. Who knows, man, but th there it is. The shocking revelations. Now, there's more revelations on the audio tape? Correct. In your own voice? Yes. Interesting. Got no, nice well voice. done, bro. Well done. All right. There it is. Melrose Larry Green wants to get on. Howard, I'm so glad you got Larry Patterson on the show. Why is that, Melrose? Well, I've devoted a lot of time to reading about Clinton, and I can, I can guarantee you that everything Larry Patterson is saying is 100% unequivocal of the truth. By the way, Melrose is a guy who stands on a street corner right, with a sign all day. And has an MBA from Cornell and a BA in political science. All right, science yeah, but what is your point? What is your question? Well, it's a comment. That, that if, if people should go to Newsmax.com, and I'll give you a name of a few books. That no, no, I, yeah, we don't need your books. Get out no, of no, here. not my books. Ambrose Evans Pritchard's book. Oh, he's so boring. What does he think this is, the McNeil Lehrer Report? Yeah, he's got research and documentation. Yeah. yeah. So you ever see uh, the governor with uh, any Hollywood actresses and stuff? We had some Hollywood actresses that were frequent guests at the... At really? The, do you name names? Uh the lady that uh, was, I uh, mean, I cannot. Uh, what was she on? Night Court. Yes. Marky Post. Marky Post was a was a frequent guest at. Really? She hot? Yeah. Yeah. Really <laughs> hot. Yeah. Oh, you ever get to see these broads naked? Clint never offered you Yeah, any? did they ever run through the governor's mansion naked? <laughs> <laughs> you have never an orgy? No. Did pictures? he ever invite you into his uh, shenanigans? No, he never did. He kept <laughs> telling me, Larry, you know, you, you guys are getting all this residual, you know, just because of me. Right. It didn't there happen. There was nothing. Yeah, no yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. It didn't happen. Hey, Howard. Yeah. Can I ask a trooper a question? Sure. What's your opinion on uh, all the people that have died around the Clintons? You know, all these different people who have been found dead, like Vince Foster and all those others. There's some of those deaths that are, that are questionable. Uh, you know, and I had a gentleman yesterday to, to say, you know, uh, he thought it would be really interesting to do a, a study to see how many of our friends when we're in the early 50s that would die in a given period of time. Some of those deaths are questionable. Uh, some of them are, are not. Wow, that's pretty well, outrageous. What, what, what are you saying, Gary? I don't well, think well, the, 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 there's a thing that goes oh, on. Come on, I don't buy that. Come on. Sex. One thing to be banging on. chicks, another thing to be killing them. Well, what was the deal with Hillary and Vince Foster? What was that all about? He, say, he just said they, they got it on. He thinks, that in his opinion, he saw him grabbing Hillary's breasts. Wow. Fondling. Ooh. You know. So wh why do you think Vince... She only got it two times a year from the governor. <laughs> in, in 88. <laughs> what in 88. What times of the year would he choose? That's what I want to know. <laughs> oh. What were the special occasions? I was reading on the Internet. According to the Internet, there's 75 deaths associated with friends yeah. of, yeah, the, right. of the... Uh, uh, friends of Bill. Friends. friends of Bill. No, but it is odd, Howard. Like, for instance, um, this is your inner circle, right? Right. Us here. Right. If Jackie committed suicide, mm -hmm. we'd be curious as to why... Don't you think? He's Is married. He Jackie having sex? <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, I'm curious as to one of the guy, why one of the key people, you know, committed suicide. What his thoughts right. are on that? Well, what do you think? You don't think you don't. You're not even drawing any conclusion on that. Is that correct? No. Right. 
I knew Vince Foster was around him several times. He was a very personable man. He was. Mm. He always came up, asked you how things were going, uh, yeah. if he could ever be of any service. A nice, nice gentleman. I wonder why the president didn't wear rubbers when he was with these broads. Why doesn't he wear a condom so he doesn't get him pregnant? Howard, I don't know. You don't we, know. we never discussed that. He seems to like oral sex a whole lot. Yeah. I mean, well, why not? that's not sex. Right. Well, he told me that, that uh, he had researched the Bible. The, he had talked to <laughs> ministers. This is what he's talking to you he about. He researched yeah. the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And he found that oral sex is not sex. It's, it's not a sin. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. You must have passed out when you heard that. <laughs> I'm thrilled because... I, asked, I said, what Bible now was this you were... <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, which Bible is that? The Playboy Bible. The Playboy, yeah, as written by Hugh Hefner. All right, listen. I, I, Officer Larry Patterson has come forward with a new audio tape. More than sex, the secrets of Bill and Hillary Clinton revealed. Uh, go to Newsmax.com if you want the tape, and you'll hear more stories. This is just tip of the iceberg. Wow. Tip! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Newsmax.com or call 1-877-N-E-W-S-M-A-X. That's that. That's it. All right. Now, Larry, did you know Jennifer Flowers? Yes. Okay. So she spent, was around. Spent many, many hours uh, sitting in front of Jennifer's apartment. Complex. You probably had a, you probably were freaking out when Clinton was on 60 Minutes saying he didn't even yeah. know her. <laughs> yeah. It was wild. <laughs> yeah. How about anal? No, Larry's saying no. He no, I mean you that. and me. <laughs> Come on, Larry. When's the last time you had anything? <laughs> too bad. Come on, you're wild. You're too bad. Don't worry, I'm all man. I'm completely <laughs> heterosexual. No, Just Larry making jokes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't know anything about his feelings on anal sex, do you? No, okay, not. all right. You know, here's the guy. He's an officer of the law. He he's busy running around with broads <laughs> for the for the governor. It's crazy. Yeah. All right, get his own broads. All right, Larry. Good luck to you, Larry Patterson. And uh, we got to take a break. When we come back, there's going to Larry. You're going to want to stay tuned because there's a big belching contest. One of the women's playing for breast implants, and the other one's playing for a CD player. A CD? Yeah, it's very what a exciting. Weird contest. <laughs> and also, uh, Mark Harris will stop by. Stephen Baldwin will be calling in, and that's uh, and that's that. We'll be back right after these words. Rock Radio. Hey, Rock. <laughs> the Howard Stern Show. Hi, I'm Carol Alt, the woman who everyone in the world thinks is a supermodel, except that dweeb Fred Norris. Luckily, I have way too much class to address his stupid opinion of me. But I just wanted to say hello to all my fans and to tell you all that I love the Howard Stern Show. And to say to Fred, Fred, go screw yourself with a log wrapped in barbed wire. And here's my pal, Howard Stern. Oh, she was supposed to use the F word on that one. She refused. She's too classy. She refused? That's not funny. Yeah, she refused. Take it out of rotation. Oh. You like it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's funny to hear her say the F word. I like when broads use the F word. All right, what's, uh, what's up now is a very, very interesting contest. Oh, wait, I got to hear this song. <laughs> Michael, that's good. That's good. And that's good. I go crazy when I hear his song. I mean, you like that, right? I uh, like that cowboy, cowboy song, too. too. Yeah, it's good. Uh, okay, so here's a, a woman contacted us. Her name is uh, Danielle. She says she burps well, and she's going to compete against Tay. Now, Danielle wants breast implants. And Tay wants a CD player? CD player. Now, the winner, you'll be the judge. Uh, I'll probably give them each three chances to do nice, deep, full as burps. As much as they can. Yeah, and you put on a nice little display, and then you'll judge who's the better belcher. Here comes Tay and Danielle. Hi. All right, girls. <laughs> Hi, girls. Hello. All right, this is exciting. I love a competition. You know that. I'm like an Olympic... Uh, I see the girls are getting ready. One is gulping soda. Right. And, uh, that would be Danielle. Danielle, hi. How are you? Danielle, you already look like you have big boobs. Yeah. You know what? How are they fake? Are they? Oh, Let me see. padding in there. What do you got in there? Big pads? Cool. All right. Well, there oh, you go. one of those. All right. <laughs> Take out your other pad and let me see what your breasts look like when they're not all padded up. You're a very cute girl. you got a nice body. Both oh, yeah. of you are very attractive. Portion. Yeah, I don't think you need implants. What do you got? An A cuff? Not even. You want to show me? Let me no, see what you no, got. No, you, you're too embarrassed? Because there's nothing to say. All right, all right. Where are you from? Staten Island. Staten Island? Yeah? You live next to the... To the uh... Never mind. You live, you live next to the graveyard? No. Uh. Or 
graveyard. Everything in Staten Island is a graveyard. <laughs> and, uh, Tay, you are uh, very beautiful as well, aren't you? Thank you. You don't need breast implants, do you? Uh, no, I'm happy. I can see you got a nice rack, but you want a CD player? No, no, I want to have my... Yeah, Honey CD played. Oh. Yeah, that makes better sense. Oh. Like a CD player. Yeah, well, KC described to me what you want. Actually, Gary described to me what you want, and... He got it completely They're wrong. A little confused. I, I can take both. <laughs> Who did it? At KC? What's that? It's out on the seat right there. You want the, Yeah, but you told me yesterday she wanted a CD player. No, a CD played. And didn't we say yet? Didn't I say to you yesterday how we, we you have to ask Tom if there's a CD player? <laughs> no, 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 no. And what did you think I meant by no, that? CD played. Oh, was CD played. But yeah. he didn't hear you when you said anything. No, you didn't hear what I responded with, did you? You did say that. <laughs> that was right. a whole other sentence. Gary, from now on, you explain to me what the show is about. Holy mackerel. <laughs> All right, Tay, so if you win, your boyfriend's CD gets played. Yes, my, uh, yeah. All right, I'm going to start with Danielle, who has blonde hair. I'd say she's about five foot, what, five foot five? I always say five to 103. It sounds good. Five to 103. You got a beautiful kick-ass body. You're wearing your short little <laughs> belly shirt. You got a nice ass. Everything looks pretty good. How... Now, uh, both of you are world-class belchers? <laughs> That's so they claim. Now, I'm going to ask all of my judges, Robin, Jackie, and Fred, and Casey, I'll even let you judge, to listen carefully. All right? Howard? Yes. Before they broke, can I just ask you something? Yeah. Just to make sure I'm not going crazy? Yes. Did you, uh, are you fooling around? Did you really say CD player yesterday? Yes, CD player. Did, I don't recall that at all. You said to me, one of the girls wants a CD player. And I said, oh. I said, but you're going to have to ask Tom to get us a CD player. I, I do not recall that at all. All right. That's okay. You're very, you're very you're out of it. You're a steroid head. You know, I, yeah. I, I, think, I think you might be imagining that. I know. All right. <laughs> He's been saying CD player all morning. No, Casey, yeah, and, and why did you correct me when I said it on the air 15 times today? It was a small thing. It's just like, you know. Like, Casey's having a great week oh. with me. I know. I, I got to tell you, you're really, you're really proving it, yourself to be stellar. an asset. It's a stellar week. Yeah. <laughs> Pay attention. All right. Um, Danielle, I'm going to ask you first All to right. give us your best belch. All right. Leo, All right here we go. This is for your breast implants. Let, you know, let it happen. You know, it'll happen. Uh, here I go. That was no me. Choice. No choice. Oh, Ow. did you guys hear that? Please listen. That was her? That was her. That was me. All right, All right let's hear Tay. <laughs> wait, wait, that, that was not All right, let's go All back right, to... Uh, another chance. You'll have two more, no, two more rounds. Right. Danielle, your second chance. All right, it'll it, happen. Wait. We have to keep the mic near you. Yeah, when it comes out, we don't want to miss it. it. She's laughing. <laughs> That one wasn't good. Well, let us be the oh, judge. You, go now. you know, you got to learn in an, in an event that you don't put yourself down. She does now. It's, it's empty. It's All right, let's go to uh, Tay. Uh -oh. I need more soda. Mm. Wait. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very, very nervous. Uh, oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. You know, the, the oh, girls have proof are There's so many people oh. that, you know, they, they've heard, heard me. But, yeah. Like crazy. All right, here comes right. Danielle for her third and final shot. Right, Danielle, come is here. It. You got to stay right here. Here we go. Okay. Do the oh, yeah, best. Yeah, you know, it has to come within. <laughs> All right. You have a boyfriend? Husband. I'll let you know what nope. I'm Nope. Keep I, the I microphone near your mouth. There, okay? Don't but push I, it away. Me breathing. That's okay. Just shh. We want to hear everything. That one wasn't good. All right. Keep saying that. You're going to influence the judges. Yes. I'm Don't trying to help anything. you. Tay, your final chance. Shh. You got to save yourself here. Come on. Closer. Uh, oh. No. Huh. Well, I'll go first. I, uh, I, oh, a little okay. more from Ted. <laughs> a little extra. <laughs> a little extra. <laughs> well, go ahead, Fred. I'll let you start the judging. Uh, you like Tay or Danielle? Danielle wants breast implants. Tay wants her boyfriend's band played. They're really good. Really, really good. Well, honey, I guess really we're not going to get to hear it. I, I, I think number one was a little, just a little better. Not much oh. better. No, they better. both were terrible. But yeah. I would have to say Danielle did yeah. a little better. I'll agree with you, yeah. Fred. Jackie, you have a different I gotta opinion? I got to go with Danielle because I saw her butt in the hole. And, uh, <laughs> there definitely should be implants on top of that beautiful Thank butt. You. And, um... 
They were almost in a d- well, draw. Yeah, I mean, they were. Really, I, I thought that Danielle's were deeper. Kind of they were just a little sharper. But I guess Danielle's had more. Uh, there's Tay again. Something Tay. to them. <laughs> See, so I'm going with Danielle. Way. Yeah, I think you have to go with Danielle, right, Casey? Yeah, you know, as much as you don't want it, you got to do it. Right. Uh, well, on our phone, Dr. Calabro is in surgery right now, but his um, his uh, secretary, Lillian. Oh, Lily. Yeah, right? <laughs> Lillian, hi. Howard. You're, uh, you oh, who's this? Melrose. I got oh, Melrose. Why is he on my phone every minute? Lillian, hi. Hi, Howard. How are you? Okay. Well, you know, I am Dr. Colabra's personal secretary, and I do work directly under him. And he has told me to tell you that he would definitely do her breast implants or whatever else you would like him to do. Wow, isn't that nice? Did you hear that? You're getting breast implants, Thank Danielle. You. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> yes, Dr. Colabra in Philadelphia will give you breast Thank implants. Thank you. That is quite amazing. <laughs> yeah, she's an attractive girl. Well, that's great. Um, Danielle, let's see the before, so when we see the after, we can, uh, let's see your boobies. Come on. No, oh, she deserves Now you're doing win. it. You deserve to win. Once I have them in, then you could all see this. Really? To see they're now. really that flat? They really are. What about your ass? Let's see that. That's nice. Yeah, totally pull in your pants. Let's see, what are you wearing, a thong? Get out of here. Oh, you're so uptight. Come on, he just gave you a pair of breasts. Whip that thing out. Oh, no please, way. Casey. Show us something. Tay, I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to hear your boyfriend's band. That's I the know. rules. I would love to hear it. I'm sure it's horrible. No, no, they're really good. But can I flash you then for them? Or yes, no? you can flash, but I cannot give you the uh, prize. I can't. But you should flash us anyway because we, we, we need it. Oh, wow. Danielle is really performing now. Danielle, now you're coming alive. All right. Well, I get nervous, you know. Right. It's well, you blew it. You blew it, Tay. I know. I'm sorry. Oh, man. What a shame. All right, uh, Lillian, thank you. Thank you, Howard, and uh, hope you <laughs> Thank you. You got a class lady come down here. All right, thank you. That's Lillian, Dr. Calabro's secretary, who has just awarded Danielle breast implants. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I hope that uh, implant doesn't wreck your belching ability. No, I hope not either. We're all nervous about that. Wait, all right, let me get back to Melrose Lowry. What is it, Melrose? Howard, listen. Was, sorry for that mix-up. You're going to keep bad-mouthing me on your website, Melrose? Is he bad-mouthing you? Yes. Yeah, he's bad-mouthing people on my show, so this will probably be his last time Howard, on the air. Howard, what is this all about, Howard? All right, go ahead. I don't want to talk about it. Go ahead. What do you got? I never bad mouth you, Howard. I've got tape from Martin Short. They've got a guy doing interviews, a direct steal from Stuttering John. Well, of course. What do you think these guys are going to do with these talk shows? They don't have any new ideas. I'm the only one with new ideas. Gotta they got whole tape. radio stations full with Howard Stern imitators. The guy says, big fan. Then he says, he stutters. And then you know how John says, uh, and you are so-and-so from your famous four? Right. <laughs> this guy was at the Emmy Awards. Let me hear it. And then, I never badmouthed you. I badmouthed Gary. All right, let me hear the tape. I never badmouthed you. All right, Gary. whatever. Let me hear the tape. I loved you from Freaky Friday because I thought that you were not. But when I was like, you could have been just the character. It's a parody. It's a parody of Stuttering John. My God! And for years after, I thought I'd say, "This is a Freaky Friday." Right. It's a parody of Stuttering. Short. Yeah. I hung up. I hung up on that. He what? He bad he badmouthed you. Yeah. He's he's just a jerk. Yeah. I mean, I don't care if he hates me, but you, you gave him. You care if he hates you. Okay. You gave the guy a million shots. Stephen Baldwin's on the phone. He wants to plug something. I'm going to tell him once and for all that uh, he has to come in here and let us throw bologna at his ass. Really? Oh. We're going to smear mayonnaise on his ass. Too many free plugs, huh? Too many free plugs. <laughs> Excuse me, Howard. Are you, are you done with the burpers? Yeah, I'm done with them. I was done with them 10 minutes ago. Okay. Bye, girls. Be aware of everything. <laughs> good luck with your, good luck with your uh, implants. Thank you. Come back and let us see them when you're done. Oh, I will. Goodbye, Bye-bye. girls. Bye. Stephen. Good morning, Howard. Stephen, why don't you come in here? This oh. is at your ass. It'll stick. Yeah. We'll see if they stay. And then we'll let you plug whatever you want. It's like oh, ring talk. You know, Howard, I command a small fee for that. <laughs> trying to be so cool. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if Stephen Baldwin, like, yeah. you smear mayonnaise on his ass, throw bologna <laughs> slices at it? Great. How great little, would that be? It's a little mustard. It stings a little, you know? And why don't you let us do that? Come on. Come on, and then we'll let you plug your mom's charity event. <laughs> I I'm not going to let you do something. To breast cancer. Come what on, is, it's not even funny anymore. But then I'll get colon cancer. What's up? You know. I saw him at the uh, U.S. Open with Alec. Yeah. yeah. So Alec, Alec actually. Were you there? Uh, 
No, I saw the picture in the paper. I said, oh, Stephen and Alec together? I didn't no. think Alec even knew him. Yeah, he pasted <laughs> that in. Oh, believe me. <laughs> Are you kidding? Stephen waits for that all year. <laughs> By the way, your brother's great in Outside Providence. Yes. Oh, I didn't see it. Is it good? It's wonderful. I got to check it out. Good movie. You don't see your brother's movies. What's I that all about? Time. Jealousy. I don't yep. have time. Oh, don't time. have time. Yeah, it's time to go to Tommy Mottola's parties. <laughs> yeah, it, was time. it was very good to see you the other night. It, it was, was good to see you, too, but I got to tell you something. There I, was, there I was in the <clears> thick <throat> of it, and who comes out of the shadows? Yeah, because I was leaving. No, but you were, like, deep in the thick, way in the back, low-key. Yeah, I go into this thing. Uh, after we did the MTV Awards, Gary and uh, Ross say to me, and Ralph, Come over to Tommy Matola's party. Yeah, I gotta go to the party. And I'm like, I gotta go to bed, dude. I've been up since, you know, four in the morning. I work two shows. Tired. And I nothing was, ever happens at these parties. I was stunned to see. Yeah. So they walk me in. You can't get in. And then, like, you know, there's four levels. And I'm at the highest level. And <laughs> they march me all the way past everybody. And they get me into this table. And they stick me in the corner of the table. And what do you do there? I sat there. I mean, it's crazy. Yo, know, but Stevie Hansen's new place, Ruby Foods, is nice, huh? Yeah. It's a nice place. Nice place, good food. So I, I you know, I, st I sat there for 15 minutes, and I just said, I'm going home. I want to go to bed. And, and I walked walk out, out, and I see Stephen Baldwin, who, like I said, every party everywhere. <laughs> oh, nonsense. What a great life. Nonsense. Dude, you got is a great stag life. stag or drag? Stag, always. I rarely go to these parties. <laughs> How does He's out he, every night. How does he keep his wife at home like that? Yeah, and that's what I asked him. I said, how, how is it you're always alone? Then I said to him, I said, I'm getting out of here. He goes, you're getting out of here? Come on, let's get in my Porsche. We got to get out of here. I go, well, I got a car waiting for me outside. He goes, no, you got to be in the Porsche. I go, well, Why would he, ha did he have to Why? be in the yeah, Porsche? Explain to me now that I can hear what you're saying. Well, now, Why I, do I have to be in the Porsche? What I do is I, I double park with my flashers on. Yeah. And I, I was at that party for 12 minutes. Okay. I ducked in, came in, said hi, waved, blue kisses, pimped, left. Why? Give them all a thrill. Just to check it out. Oh, you want a so thrill? It's like going to the zoo. You go to the zoo, you look at the animals, you leave. Oh, you're not an animal. Oh. 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 It's so condescending. Please. So you double park because you're Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> Who said in the back? Fred going, please? Yes. So you double park please. your Porsche. Now, what was going to happen once I get into a Porsche along with you? <laughs> We'd have gone for a nice cup of coffee. Really? You, I, I, you know what? You, you think I'm this maniac. I've been trying to get you to have a nice sit-down dinner at my restaurant. That isn't for, closed for up yet? <laughs> I had botulism. <laughs> that restaurant isn't closed yet? Absolutely not. It's, it's doing better than ever. Right. Really? There's, and there's no botulism, right? Uh, uh, a lot, the name of the restaurant is Alaya, 13th Street and 5th Avenue. There's no botulism, right? Of course not. The food's dynamite. Right. <laughs> It should be dynamite. <laughs> should be dynamite. <laughs> the food is dynamite. <laughs> right. Blows you up. All right, you got two choices. It had made the girl burp better, that's <laughs> You want to plug your mom's charity, you either got to come in here and let us smear mayonnaise on your ass and throw bologna slices at it, or you have to eat Hershey Kiss out of Benji's butt. Who's Benji? He's a hot guy. Oh, so there's a possibility, depending on who uh, Benji well, is? Howard. <laughs> Howard. Yeah. Wow. When I'm promoting something that, that's, that's not as important as this, then, mm. then perhaps I'd be willing to do that. What is this, a cancer thing? Yeah. We can keep the two separate. Come yeah. On. You can double park. It'll only take about 12 minutes. You blow in, you stare at the animals, and then you leave. And you blow out. And you blow out. <laughs> Howard, when you get to the pearly gates and say Pete's standing there, this is the one deciding factor that may get you in or out. I don't think so. <laughs> Dude, you ain't going to be there either. Absolutely, I'll be there. With the, with the Porsche. With the Porsche. Hey, what happened to your buddy, uh, Robert Downey Jr.? He uh, went down for the count, man. Mm. Mm -hmm. Too bad. We you going to go visit him? Up. Let's go visit him. I should. No, we, me and you. <laughs> How funny I, would I that be? I'll visit him with you. He wrote me a letter. Yeah, there, there's you know what, man? to do you with him. write him back, because you know what? The guy's got a heart of gold. He's just a sick guy, and I'm praying for him every day. I hope he gets better. What did he write to you about? Uh, just wanted to. I think he said he wanted to come in, but then he got incarcerated again. Mm. He just called. You know, he just wrote to say hi. Funny letter. I don't even remember. Howard. Yeah. When hey, you so want, when you want to go eat at the restaurant? Yeah. Hi, Howard. What's up, honey? Um, I have a story. My life is much more worse than all these other girls. Really? What's your story? And I, they can get counseling. I can't. And. Well, okay, what happened to you, real quick? Because I got to make a decision. Okay, I'm 24. 
a beautiful woman. Um, I work out. I eat right. I'm C cup. I'm just. I've worked all my life to look good. One day I went tanning. I come home and I noticed that I have very little bit of blonde facial hair on my face. Very little. So I started playing around and waxing, and it grew back, and I can't get rid of it. And I have, like, a beard, and it's awful. Oh, you have a real beard. See, you should have come down here. You have a I'm beard. I'm from Toronto, Ontario, and it's quite a way. And yeah, you need an estrogen shot, honey. I can't believe it. I can't. I've tried everything, and I'm awful. I have to wax before I go to work, and I deal with people every day. No, 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 no. So you, so you I think, have the whole shadow you, thing going. You, I don't know what I'm going to do. You and think, they can get counseling. What am I supposed to do? You think having a beard is worse than having to fillet your father? I think so, yes. yeah. Yeah, I think she's right. you can and forget that. I can even are, you, are you eating frozen yogurt? Are you on a frozen yogurt diet? Oh. Yeah, because you might be getting My that father fur. would turn me down. Oh, I'll be quiet. He cares about you. How dare you? <laughs> Gabby <Yes>. Harris. <laughs> it's a very tough decision. I'm just sitting here thinking, Robin. I'm vamping. Yes, Brad, what is it? Yeah, I have a great idea for your, uh, for your music video. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Frank, go ahead. All right, how you doing, Howard? Yeah. Listen, I have the same problem as girl number two. When I was young, I was a... Uh, delivery boy from meat market in Port Washington. Yeah. And I was raped by one of my uh, customers I had to deliver meat to. I was 16. A guy raped you? No, a girl. A girl? Wife. What are you complaining about? Oh, so, yeah, but the only Jesus. thing is it messed me up. It messed me up because... A I woman a woman had sex with you and it messed you up? Messed me up. She was 36 years old. She set me up down a basement. Do you remember the light boxes they used to have with the music? Yeah. She got all the lights on. Then she shut them, put the light boxes on the music... And then threw me down on the couch and raped me. Oh, please, call back with a real tragedy. Yeah, yeah get well, out of here. All right. Hang it. You know, this is the problem. <laughs> but I Men cheated on my rape. wife Nobody because of that. Them. You cheated on your wife. I, I have sex every month um, with a different woman. Get out of here. Ooh. All right, girls, you have three sad oh, stories. All of you have bad stories. I mean, they're all equally bad. Gary, what are you thinking? You seem you seem you the only seem one who. I'll tell you I what. Know. I know Robin doesn't know. I, I certainly what, don't. What's weird about this is that you have to sit there and say that somebody's level of abuse is worse than another person. Right. That's exactly that's what you have game. to do. That's and right. You you guys have all been victim of really bad abuse. And number two, if we were going off of looks, man, I'd be giving you five cars. Mm -hmm. Right. You are Me so too. Cute. I just like to give you presents. But, but you know what? All of them have been sexually abused. But number one, uh, the 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 heroin. The mother, the beatings. Um, yeah, but what about number three? Her father tied her up in the woods right. and would threaten to kill her. Yeah, but and number two, I don't even. I know your story was bad. I don't even remember what it was. You know what? Number one seems to have had the longest string of abuse that went on. Just for because she's older, these girls are going to rack up yeah. more stories. Right. Yeah, these girls are only in the beginning. I mean, they, they don't seem to be going anywhere good in their life. And even though number three was a prostitute, you know, number one. Her, her mother used to make her get her heroin works out of the garbage, which messes up a kid. Mm. And the father making her do things to her sister and doing things to him. I got to go with number one. What was number two story again? What was your, Sarah, just refresh my memory again. Uh, my dad's a child molester. I lost my baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's bad, too. Hey, come on, child but, molester. No, I'm going with number one. I mean, they're all bad. Hmm. And I'm going with number one. Well, yeah, her mom was a heroin addict. She was in jail. She had to fillet her dad and her little brother. Yeah, I figured number one would be hard to beat, but I'm just punchy from yeah, the no, story. It, it's mm. a tough one. It's a tough Damn, one. Damn, I wish we had three cars. I give it to them all. Yeah, but how I have runner-up prizes. I Number three but had to do 50 or 60, 50, 60 guys a day. And she had to run from her father right. all of her childhood. Mm -hmm. right. She couldn't even play outside. You know, but, you know, number just, one's but, but, mother. <sighs> but number one's father caught her and made her do stuff. I really need but that guy has to go three to hours. A tree. Yeah, but tie, I'd rather be tied to a tree than have to fillet my but brother. You guys and I'm here way. then with no, kill it, no, being no, killed. No, you guys are forgetting. My baby. Well, wait, what? I have to drive three hours one way to get my baby in 85 knees. At least you know where your baby is. Have, no. I don't even have radio. But at least you know where your baby is. She's got a she, kid I don't she doesn't even know. know. If I, can make it. I have to watch her scream yeah. every time I take her back. Right, two kids she doesn't even know, number one. Wait, we're talking sad stories. She was born addicted to heroin. That's true. That's breaking your both legs coming out of the game. And maybe number one has the saddest story, girl. Exactly. Even though, yeah. uh, you're, you're swaying. And Howard, oh, I yeah. definitely think my story... I mean, my Top whole the, the other two deserve something. Yeah, number two, I, know, I, I gotta, both I said they'd be very... Uh, Wait, Fred's gonna Fred, descend. I gotta stand, I gotta stand up for number three on this one because she was she had, she had was held at gunpoint. No, it's tough, believe me. I'm, I mean, gonna, say, I'm not saying there's a... It was a gunpoint. I was threatened with guns also. In prostitution. Remember, her remember. father was gonna shoot her in the butt. That's right, right yeah. in the butt. <laughs> but this was where she was tied up in the woods. And that's bad, too. It's like, and she had, like, no hope. At least she might have had a... Number one had everything happen, though. She was raped. She had it all. 
Oh, she Prostitution. Number two, I think it's a crack. Number you two, know I think she just get implants from Calabro and maybe strip to get money to get her kid back. Uh, two and three <laughs> should get. <laughs> number two could have a career. One, that's for sure. One covered yeah. all the bases. She and, 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 and 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 the other thing. And the other thing is, number three is still in debt as a result. Number one, number, number one seems to have gotten her life back together. She's got a job. I, I mm. just lost my husband. number three. You know what? Number Maybe your uh, boyfriend could pay for some of your debt. Right. I'm claiming bankruptcy, so. But he's, oh, you are, he's I married and... Yeah. Right. He, what boyfriend. can he do for yeah, me? All right, I'm going to vote. Now it's time to vote. Yeah, Let's stop it. Hold on, one more thing. Yes, Fred? Uh, her house was burned down. I have no house, Howard. I have to live with my sister who has a dog who attacks kids, and my son, I have to put him in the middle of the table to eat. I kid you not. They're, they're really? not lying. You're right. They're it's all sad, bad. It's a sad story. Yeah. And, and she got locked to it. Now it's time to vote. Gary Delabate, who do you vote for? One, two, or three? I got to go at number one. I'm sorry. All right, Gary, it's number so one. Sad. It's so sad to say that's a number three. I know. I'm sad sorry. to say it's a number two. I'm sorry. Number two, you just want to take home with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. She's cute. All right, well, listen, what are you going to do? You're cute. We figure you can work for a little. Although, number three, we could just set up and have her as a girlfriend and she won't squeal on us. Cause That's true, too. Good girl over too. there. Yeah, we'll, treat you than you, we'll treat you better than your other married boyfriend. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, Jackie the Jokeman Martling. I want to give number one the car, and I think we should give him plans to number two and number three if Dr. Calabro would go for it. they got to get something. Jackie, who do you go for the car? Number one, number two? One. Number one. All right. I don't want to hear about implants right now. It's a contest. Someone's got to win. Robin Quivers. I guess I'm going with number three because she's still in the midst of everything. Yeah. You're saying she needs the most help. Yeah. Although, what about this one? Has to get custody of her kid. Number two. She I don't even want to discuss that. Let's go. Really, I'm yeah. voting for number three. You're saying she shouldn't have custody of her kid. You know, the funny thing is, number, if number two just walked <laughs> off the street, her story of abuse would seem horrible. Was, uh, right. But standing next to these two, it's just not as bad. Yeah, it's hard. It's a hard, it's a hard it's, choice it's here. It's a bad story. Two thinks I don't want her to have her kid. That was you saying that. I didn't right. say You do that. want her to have her no, kid. Okay, I, okay. I don't right. want anything. Right. You just want to go home. I want to go right. home Robin, you, uh, you choose number three. Yeah. Uh, Jackie and Gary choose number one. Fred, who do you choose? I go with number three. Oh, I hate all of you. I hate all of you. She is terrorized. All right. I'm not going to throw away my vote on number two because if I give you the vote, you're not going to win anyway. Do you understand that, number two? Can I have boobies? We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. That might cost you baloney on your ass. All right, let me think. Uh, number three, I know you're in a bad spot, but if you talk about abuse... I think number one had it worse. Although number one is working her way out of things. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a, she hey, she's got a punished. nice relationship. It's only been a short she's time. A it's only been a short time. She's only been clean for three clean. years. Three years clean. Three years clean. Give me ten years clean and I'll feel like... I like number three very much. I like number two very much, but I'm going to vote for number one. I'm sorry. Number one is going to win the car. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you so yeah, She much. had the worst oh, life. She had the worst life. You had a Thank horrible you so life. Much. Your father was horrible. Your father was horrible. Number three is crying. How number three is crying? Oh. Are you crying? No, that would help. I'm not crying. Can I say one thing. Number one, the winner wants to be. Number two is about to cry. Can number I get two, do you want to cry? <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> number two, what is it, number one? You just okay. won. Okay. Um, first of all, let me say to anybody who I might know that might listen to the show or might see this on TV and may not have known these things about me. I hope you don't lose respect for me. No one's losing respect for you, except for Bubba I've Boo. I've had a hard life, okay, true. You were a victim. I made some bad decisions. You were a victim. That's the truth, okay, but I've suffered, and I've learned from these mistakes, and anybody who may be addicted to drugs right now, there is hope. You can, you can clean yourself up, there's hope. Okay. What show is this? And anybody. Oh, this is really like Queen for No, <laughs> listen, anybody. You want to know what influence? Children out there that might be being sexually abused, please go to somebody, your teacher, somebody, and tell Not if it's them. a guy. Don't go and tell him. Don't, don't tell let a woman. it go on. And you know what? Right. While you're at it, if you, if you think you know where her kids are, please tell her. Right. Hey, and you know what, number three, since you declared bankruptcy, you probably, if you got the car, they take it away from you anyway, right. now that I'm thinking about right. it. No, now you can no, we keep went around that bankruptcy. somehow. Really? What? <laughs> she put it in her boyfriend's name. I could uh, put it in my sister's name. Yeah, she'd steal it from you, baby. <laughs> Who knows? We don't know. We, with your life, nothing would go right. You'd set it on fire. Number one, you have a choice because of CarsDirect.com, this $40,000 gift, Mercedes C280, the BMW 328, the Lexus GS300, the Audi A6 Quattro, or the Ford Expedition Eddie Bauer Edition. Which one are you going to choose? Mm. 
Do it's you... so hard to decide. Do you have a favorite in that group? I love Mercedes. Right. Imagine that. you driving around a Mercedes. First good thing ever happened in your life. Yeah. And I've what? never won anything in my whole life. We Let know that. Go. Believe boy, me. Oh boy, when it comes to losing, you, you are a loser. So I guess I'm going to go with the Mercedes. Wow. Okay. Isn't that unbelievable? At two and three, I'm not going to let you guys walk out of here empty-handed. You can either have um, a hundred dollar gift certificate, gift certificate to Models, or, or a visit to Gary's Modell. dentist, or, or, or a hundred dollar gift certificate, or a CD six pack, which has like Ozzy oh, Osbourne please, CDs. Gary, she wants boobs. I, want boobs. I don't have those on my list. Think Dr. Calabro would give these two broads boobs? I'm sure he would. Sure he would. Yeah, sure he would. We'll talk to him if he says okay. We'll get you boobs, girls. Right. How's that? I need them. You need them. I really need them back. Well, you need guys being more attracted to you. You're attractive enough to two of you. <laughs> That's what yeah, got you in trouble. It's for me, trouble. though. It is? I'm not attractive to me. Let me see your boobs oh. that you think are so bad, oh, if you don't mind. Excuse me, Robin. I have to take a look. Oh, I, this I, is now I, a whole I, different Howard, contest. I'm, Howard, I'm sorry. I have to point. You have to use the bathroom. Go ahead, honey. You go, get, go out and think about your car. Let me. Why do you think you're, you've got a hot body? I don't see why you need boobs. Oh. So far, they look good. So far, you look good. Yeah. Nothing bad about you. Great flat stomach. Yep, the whole deal. How much you weigh? 112. 112. And how tall are you? 5'9". Yeah, honey, well, you could be a model. Let me see those things. Okay. Let me see. I got, like, a padded bra on. Do you think she looks that bad? No. No. If they don't look that bad, I'm not putting boobs in but you. But I could see <laughs> if they're padded. I could Let me see. I know what's going to happen I here. I, I can see like what's going on. Let right. me see that thing. Oh. Quickly. They're going to be... Don't drag this out. Let's see those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. You need boobs. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, she needs them. Does. You need them. All right, you got them. What are you... Are you, are you an A cup? Yeah. What are you, an A cup? Not even. Yeah, yeah you, you got nothing I there. I see twelve year olds that are bigger than me. Yeah, yeah, you need a little help there. They're not bad though. I mean, you know, yeah, I could get off on that. If I had boobs with this butt, I would be so happy. Let me see your butt. You want to see my? Butt? Yeah, let me make sure that you're bust doing that the right thing. thing. Let's see that thing. Yeah, let's see that thing. <laughs> yeah, bust that thing out. Wow, she needs the boob job. Yeah. It wouldn't yeah, hurt her. Absolutely. I yeah. can see that three clearly needs it. You think three? You yeah, do? No, she does. Yeah, All right. Let me see. see. Let me see that boob. Let me see that. that <laughs> right, Robin. You're looking at her boob. She needs Why him, right? Yeah. Thing, thing. Show Robin your boobs. I don't want to yeah. see. Leave oh, look at those. Oh. Get what, what, what is it? Go. I understand you need boobs. She don't want to see. All right. What's this? Here's Doctor Calabro. Marks on there. Your baby. No, no. On the bottom, there's like marks. Stretch marks. Permanent bruises. Permanent bruises. Wow. Yeah. You need. You definitely need boobs. Yes, Dr. Calabro. Hi, Howard. Robin. You, you want to help these two girls out? Absolutely. All right, girls, you got the boobs. Yeah. Dr. Calabro at SalCalabro.com. Yeah, all right, yeah, sure. Let's see your butt. Yeah, you got a good butt. Hey, Calabro, wait till you see these. Fine, but I mean, nice. Yeah, you don't have to cellulite. You don't have to take out any cellulite on this one. No. Hey, well, you might have to add right. some. Can we see number three while we're at it to make sure she needs them? Yeah, we got to make sure oh you need them. Oh, my God. You guys. Yeah. See, you got a nice oh, chest. Yeah. I wouldn't touch hours. those. So yours, no, no, no. yours is better than number two's, and it didn't look like it was going to be that way. Robin, look at her chest. She doesn't need them. No. Look how look how attractive. Oh, my God. She's as in bad a shape as the oh, other Oh, she is? Yeah. All right, all right. Oh, Give her boobs. Boobs for everyone. <laughs> boobs are yeah, you got the boobs. <laughs> All right, girls. Hey, Howard, just have to call my office. You got to call. Doc well, we'll set it up. We'll set it up. We'll set it up. A Angie will call you. I love you, Howard. Oh, I certainly love, I love you, you, girls. Baby. Dr. Calabro, you've made everyone's dreams come true as usual. Oh, well, uh, I'm very pleased to do that, Howard. Anytime, Thanks. Anytime, Thanks, Doc. You, you, know you, that. you think you guys are happy enough to kiss each other? Can we come back on the show and show them to you? <laughs> yes, please. You okay. must. Dr. Calabro will insist on that, I'm well, sure. talking about people kissing each other. The sisters are coming in on Saturday. <laughs> Good. I want to see that. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's giving boobs to those sisters that were down They're here. Quite a pair. You forget. I keep. I keep <laughs> track of this stuff. Thank you, Doctor Calabro. All right, pleasure, Howard. Stay well, fun. girls, congratulations. Can I get dressed? Yeah, please get dressed. What's the matter with you? <laughs> no, you look great. Cool. Girls, congratulations. Congratulations on your cars, on your boobs. Yeah, she needs a crown. Well, you go make her one. <laughs> and you get out of here. will be like arts and crafts. Uh, congratulations to all, Robin. It was and very everybody exciting. Everybody got something. That's good. That's because, right. Because, boy, you do deserve it. Right. When we come back, not only do we have to do the news, is, is that woman here who wants to uh, please, Casey? I, I don't think she showed up. Good. Okay. Please then we can get to the Yeah, there was a weird thing that went on here a couple of months ago, but we'll have to save that for another and, day. And we'll have to reschedule Michael J. Cox. Michael J. Cox will have he to be rescheduled. Well, no, we, he was waiting to call, and we were doing something more important. Oh, we, he, bu he got bumped? He got bumped. Michael J. Cox got bumped, so we'll probably hear from Michael J. Cox in a couple of days. Okay. We'll be back right after these tomorrow, words. Tomorrow, tomorrow, <laughs> the sun will shine tomorrow. <laughs> It's only a day away. You are all listening. listening.
listening to The Howard Stern Show. I told you not to be stupid, you moron. Hey, I just want to say thank God for Dr. Sal Calabro, who is so generous with those breast implants, because I really didn't want those girls walking out empty-handed. I never heard sadder How stories. Did they I mean, you know, that they're walking around is amazing. Yeah, walking around on high heels. Uh, and also, really, thanks to CarsDirect.com for getting into this mess in the first place. I couldn't have survived this show. Mm -hmm. I barely survived my childhood. I know. Look at you. I'm sorry, I'm a mess. <laughs> look at you complain. I can't believe you. We should have Queen for a day between the four of us. Me, <laughs> you, Fred, and Jackie. <laughs> That's a funny thing. My dad yelled at me. <laughs> all plead our cases. <laughs> One time I couldn't go to the bathroom and my dad made me pee in front of a bunch of guys. My mother told me that babies were given to you by God. <laughs> <laughs> my dad and mom drank. Got so bad, my dad went to the bathroom by accident in his, in his in drawer. The dresser, in the dresser drawer. Yeah, I never said it was by accident. <laughs> I was going to do an FME here, but the person who has to accept the FME, I don't think we can raise up on the phone. Oh. Having trouble giving away these FMEs. It's a good, it's a good one, too. It's a good category. I'll play you the category. If he, if he calls in, he calls in. If he doesn't accept, then he doesn't accept. Okay? Want to do it? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. This category is called Best Trashing of a Celebrity by Another Celebrity. Okay. All right. This is where one celebrity gets on our air and makes fun of another celebrity. Yes. Or uh, bad The first nominee is David Lee Roth trashing the rest of Van Halen. <laughs> David Lee Roth, producer. Hey, Howard. Yeah. Hey, you can tell Dave it makes, if it makes him feel any better that Van Halen played for a half-empty crowd at uh, Madison Square Garden. You know what, darling? That you call up makes me feel great. That Van Halen sold half-empty doesn't make me feel anything but a little sense of loss there. Uh. You know, no, it makes you feel good, and I don't believe that's oh, yeah. for a second. Also, you know, they're all they're all welcome to line up and kiss my ass one by one or all together. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, yeah. to have the to have the super crew of all team, you know, the most glorious, you know, barbecue band of all time, right? You know, um, selling half house, that nah, that don't that don't taste right, chef. <laughs> that don't taste right, chef. <laughs> Well, he's right. I mean, it's a band he built and helped build anyway. And Stephen Baldwin's our next nominee. This is where he trashes the actor Nicolas Cage. Nick Cage. Ah. Stephen Baldwin producer. Why do you badmouth Nick Cage? I kidded around about Nick Cage. What did you say? I kidded around. I was what did you kidding. say? Uh, what did you say? Go, let's go. Nicky Cage is a sweet kid. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? What did you say? Uh, Don't be a pussy. I, no. all, all I said and all I will say from this moment on is that I, I just can't bring myself to see his movies. That's it. Ooh. You don't like him. <laughs> but why, why do you have against Nicolas Cage? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's ragging on Nicolas Cage. I, I well, think Nick Cage is a good Nick actor. Nick Cage once uh, gave me an attitude problem in Las Vegas, and, oh, uh, and I let it go. What happened? And Tell us he, what happened. And then he gave me another attitude problem at a party. Uh -huh. What's that mean? And uh, What is an attitude yeah. problem? Come on, don't, don't be so cryptic. What happened? He was fighting with some broad in Vegas and got off an elevator and, uh, and like, gave me this look and said, what are you looking at? Really? So I kind of, like, let it go because I'm a sober human being that right. just is willing to let that go and not confront somebody. And then what happened? You weren't looking at anything, right? And uh, No, no, no. He was just in a hussy. Okay. And uh, and then I saw him at another party. The night he won his Oscar. And, okay. Uh, and he felt his, the need to kind of let me know. Let you know what? That he was an Oscar winner and I wasn't. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Put him on Queen for a day. <laughs> Our third nominee, believe it or not, and this doesn't happen often, is Stephen Baldwin. When he trashes David Letterman. He's nominated twice That's in right. the same category. I wouldn't do Letterman because he's a prick. Really? That? How is he a prick to you? He's a prick. Why? Because <laughs> I met him at the Indy 500. He's like, oh, yeah, great. You should come do the show. And then the, you know what the producer said? We don't think Steve Baldwin's ready to do our show. Is that right? So you know what? Well, maybe he's you're not. Out. He's out. And Jay's my boy because he's been giving me props from day one. Right. So you know what? <laughs> the Gap Tooth Wonder can go eat it. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stephen Baldwin. And the winner in that category between David Lee Roth and Stephen Baldwin is... Who's the winner? 
you know, Stephen being nominated twice, they could water down his vote. Like, who's voting? <laughs> oh, look at this. Who is it? Stephen Baldwin. Oh, For the I trashing thought, of Nicolas Cage. I thought he might not win because he was nominated twice. And Stephen look at that. is not man enough to accept his FME because he doesn't want to speak about Nicolas Cage anymore. Oh. I see how right. that happens. Stephen Baldwin is not man enough to call this show and accept his FME. Now you can be nominated. <laughs> right, I'm trashing him. I like Stephen, but I'm trashing him. Uh, in most award shows, they say, you know, uh, we'll have to accept this award on Stephen's behalf because he's filming the uh, sequel to the Flintstones right now and is unavailable. Right. But he would like to thank the Academy. You're on the air. Howard. Yeah. I just want to congratulate you on airing the most disturbing segment in broadcast history. Those three those three women, you are a horrible man. Thank you. <laughs> the fact that I didn't pull off the side road and stab myself just means that I have to live with myself and listening to that and hearing that those three women, those three horrible women. <laughs> Why are they horrible? They're horrible. Well, it's not they're horrible, it's just the stories are horrible. And yeah. You are a horrible man for making me live with this. Well, I don't, uh, I'm not sure. I know you're trying to do a joke in some way, but I'm not following your humor. Uh, you know. You know, I'm not, I'm not following it. By the way, I've been told Stephen Baldwin called in earlier to accept his FME, but is unreachable now. Oh, see? He He's is unreachable. unavailable. Yep. Yeah. I don't care. He should be available. <laughs> this is a guy who's available 24 hours a day. He's now he's not available. available. Right. Until we want him. I see. Well, maybe he'll call in and accept later. All right. You know, that's very Have possible. You trashed him? Judy, you're on the air. Hello? Yes, honey. Oh, hi, Howard. Um, I'm calling because I am a woman with who had a very terrible inability to pee problem mm. for many, many years. And, um, in fact, I would go up to three days without peeing. And wow. Wow. Yeah, it, it was... Um, How do you not wake up in the morning and not have to pee? I did, but it would be like if anybody was around, anybody at all, even in my own house, um, I simply, it's like my brain wouldn't tell, wouldn't let me relax. It's amazing. Well, uh, according to the doctor yesterday, this is all true. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And I wish when I had this problem that he would have been around because I, I was the only one I'd ever... Yeah, it's a bad problem. I feel bad for you. JT, you're on the air. How's it going, Howard? Hey, man. I'd like to say something about the uh, Martin Short show. Go ahead. Does it ever suck? I tried watching it yesterday. i got to tell you something about I Martin Short. I've seen it since that first week. Martin Short is a very talented character actor. He's talented, but he yes. doesn't know how to run a talk show. You're absolutely right. Uh, Chevy Chase was on with Martin Short, uh -oh. and it was like an Ask Kiss festival. He's Actually, believe fat. it or not, Chevy was kind of funny. Chevy really? was talking about his own talk show and how bad it was uh -huh. and about how much he hated it. Well, yeah. for Chevy. Chevy uh, was actually, you know, sort of coming clean with that whole thing. Well, uh, the thing but there is, were a couple of times Martin Short would have come in naturally and said, well, Chevy, why would you take people's money if you hated doing something so much? You know, there were things that you, you could have provoked asked, him. Yeah. Yeah. And Martin Short is, uh, has an inability... And maybe he'll listen to me and take this to heart. Probably not. Most people in Hollywood don't like criticism, and they, they don't should. like to hear what's wrong with them. Well, they let me tell you something. Howard. He couldn't because he can't. Right. It's not like he wouldn't want to. Mm -hmm. He would want a successful talk show, but if he could do it, he would. Right. He and can't. Then, he can't bring himself to do it. And then Howard, he's got his little... Are you, are you saying he can't because he doesn't have the ability or because uh, he just won't do it? I don't know. It's special art just like what he does is a special art. I not everybody can do this. He has. He's a self-interested person. He Agreed. He care less what anybody else has to say. I agree with you. So I don't believe that his show will be successful, mm -hmm. and the ratings so far have been very low. So I yeah. agree with you, sir. It is not a good show. Yeah, I'm from Niagara Falls, and, like, he's got that guy on his show, like, he's brought up the fag, and no one knows who he is, and he always introduces him. All right, thank you. His sidekick, right. Huh. Uh, right. Blind Bob, go ahead. How's it going, guys? Um, I just want to bust on Jackie Stones a little bit here, because I bought his CDs the other day, and they want four bucks per CD to ship them out. What's with yes. that? I agree with you. I don't think Jackie should charge $4 for shipping and handling. Jackie, do you want to defend this stance, or do you want to maybe make a new policy right yes, now? No, uh, what do you say, Jackie? No? No! Screw you, blind bum! <laughs> Go get a cup and beg for money! Ooh. 
What is it, Jackie? Four dollars for shipping yeah. and handling. Now we know the handling well, is done by your mother-in-law. But if you buy two, you get the third one free. See, I'm a yeah, so totally But so why would I buy two of those? So you get three for thirty-two dollars. Oh my God! You're paying for the third one anyway with the eight bucks. That's right. And he's charging eight bucks for shipping and handling. Yeah, for two. Jackie, is that justified? No. Seriously, be honest. It is justified. It is. It costs four dollars to ship those things. It's not, it's not for shipping. It's for storing it. For packaging. Storing it. It's in your house. Yeah, that's not in my house. Oh, that's, that's a lie. It's the eight hundred call. It's for everything. So it's a total of sixteen dollars for a I CD. I have five warehouses. That's so you're saying uh, that the average CD is sixteen dollars or more? But you're not the for average CD oh. seller. Right. It's twice as long sting. as the average. This is, sir, I, I mean, it, it, but, but, but does, did, should it be $8 shipping for two CDs? But if you buy two, you get three. So I $32, see. you're getting three CDs. And he gets to lighten up on the wow. storage problem he's having. Then once your storage goes down, can't... <laughs> I passed the savings out of the consumer. Doesn't your wife ship those out? No. I, honestly. It's mother oh, we have a full. This is the whole myth you've generated. Who, I, 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 correct me. Fulfillment company. Is that your wife? You have a fulfillment company. Yeah, people, yes. people call an 800 number. But and people are feeling unfulfilled. So there's no profit built into the $4? No. You swear that. What, what do you mean, do I swear that? Do you swear that there is no profit built into the $4 shipping charge? No, if, if you start adding up the phone call, the, the clearing of the uh, what with the credit card, the, the thing that has to be put in, the person has to put it in, the, the, the mailing charges, that's all, you know... Anything you order is four ninety five. <laughs> Everything you've ever sold is four ninety five. I'm, I'm just asking you. You're I'm you're a businessman. I'm asking you. you I'm asking you if you have a four. I'm not. I haven't touched your mic. I haven't touched your mic. One bulk charge for all that shipping, though. This is two separate shipping charges, four bucks a piece for one CD. Yeah, usually there's one. Wait, shipping wait, wait. Well, oh. what are you talking? That's that's absolutely untrue. Oh, really? So you mean it cost? He just said it was two shipping charges for one CD. That's what he said. No, for two CDs. For two CDs, it's two different. Shipping charge. Did you order it two different times? Place. He ordered them at the same time. Charge of four dollars. Maybe it should be one ship, shipping charge of four dollars. It shouldn't be eight dollars. What if you ordered two CDs? Is that one shipping? No. Let, listen, listen. If you want to buy that stuff, that's Jackie's price. What can I tell you? I'm not going to sit here and argue. It gets too uncomfortable. The guy don't want to listen. Okay. All right. You thanks, bye bye. Thank you. All right. I, by the way, I just want to go on record. I have nothing to do with Jackie's product. Okay. I thought four dollars was high, but if he's charging mm. it twice, wow. if you buy two, I prefer that he didn't sell anything. But he wants to sell. He wants to sell you this stuff. Let him sell it to you. If you want, if you're crazy enough to buy it. Yeah. Robin Howard, take care, of you guys. Thank Love. you. All right, Jackie. What about when somebody bought two of your videos when they were for sale? I don't remember what the shipping charge was. Of course you don't. It was four ninety five. Of course. Oh, of course I do. Oh, you're, uh, you remember it. Notice he remembers everything I do. Of course I that's, you don't. No, because that's right. how it's done. Of course I see. You don't. Of course you he don't. He wasn't running his own business out of his basement, so right. he would know neither that. Neither am I. Uh, I'm curse uh, yeah, this Dave, go ahead. Company. Tom, get ready to hit the Howard. button with a... Yes. Howard. Yes. How are you? Is this Howard? Yes. This doesn't sound like... Oh, now you're cursing. Oh. He, Jack, he's making money on these CDs. Of course he is. He's not answering your question. Anyone who's evasive without a direct answer, he's lying. I know that much. I uh. directly. Yeah. All right, enough of this topic. I don't want to hear about it. I don't really want to it's be involved. It's really involved. not our business. Right. He can charge whatever he wants. My business. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. You're on the air. Hey. Yes. Yeah, you want to talk about the good things about Dominic Barber? Did he say? Come <laughs> <laughs> oh, on, trash me. Give him a br uh, come on, we gave him a break. Shush. No, yeah. come on. <laughs> trying to help people, unlike you. I'm not oh, people. Oh my, it's rug me. Go ahead, Al. Yes, Al. Howard. Yeah. Jackie's making a killing on these things. <laughs> Wait, how is he making a killing if nobody's if buying own, If he's printing his own CDs, it costs less than two bucks a CD. That includes the uh, the paper inside, the shrink wrap, everything. All right. Well, he won't answer the questions. Right, he's, he's a big pussy, that's why. Hold on, let me talk to this guy. Now, what do you mean? If I'm making my own CDs, I'm making them cheaper than a record company is? Sure you are. <laughs> Come on! You 
I know that for a fact, Jack. I make my own CDs. They only cost like two bucks. Not even two dollars a CD. That's through disc makers. What? A ten dollar profit. I mean, you're really. You're, I mean, not only you, not no, only you charge four dollars to, to ship you're a it. Sure. You're making sure. ten bucks a CD. Not more than ten dollars. Hold on. You make CDs? Yeah. Do you sell them? Sure. For how much? I charge. I charge about ten dollars, and that's not even to ship them. You charge ten dollars? Ten dollars a CD. It cost me about two, three dollars to make because I don't order in probably mass quantities like you do. For a thousand CDs, it cost me about two and a half dollars a CD to I make. I sell a CD that's double length any other CD for twelve bucks. It's a great, great deal. I have never had a complaint ever. What do you mean? What do you mean? Blank. We just took three complaints. No. What do you mean? I've <laughs> never had a complaint. Uh, Twenty million people until yeah. today. <laughs> I can't put them all through. I'll take a whole show. You've never taken a positive call on one of my CDs. Well, well who are you, why are you blaming me? What do you say? A double length CD doesn't matter how long you record on. <laughs> That's true. It's the same CD. Right. It's the same CD. What do you mean a double length? My jokes are priceless. Well, what Jackie's <laughs> saying, you're not considering that he's putting material on the CD that has a value. <laughs> Comedy hit. He doesn't even have to mix anything down or anything. He just puts a microphone in front of him and he's all set to go. <laughs> but there's a value You're going to my business then, huh? Mm. That's right. Tell jokes. Why don't you do it? Make cash. All right, yeah. thank you. See you. All right. By the way, I have a new one coming out November 2nd. What is that? Which one is that? Donuts and hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> have you named it yet or is it untitled? It's called Come Again. Come Again, I see. Yeah. Reference to sexual reference. Course. Stephanie, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. How are you? Right. Um, listen, I just bought uh, Jackie's stuff, and it is the biggest piece of crap I ever bought. <laughs> See, he's going to think I, I right. put you you're up to this. putting all of this on. Oh. No, no. I bought it a couple months ago, and I thought it would be great. <laughs> I got the Joke Button CD, and... Um, uh, Another satisfied yeah. customer. Oh, let her finish. And, All right, go ahead. Wait, Jackie's going to take her on. Hold on, yeah. And um, the other CD that he was selling, and unfortunately, I had to buy two because I couldn't just buy one. Why is that? Because they made me buy two. I wanted <laughs> two different things. Wait, wait, wait. Why, how did they make they you? They forced you to how buy them. They make you buy two. <laughs> <laughs> No offense, but you sound like a total moron. You call this number, you get raped. <laughs> yeah, what, ma'am? Seriously, this is, now this is interesting. They made you buy the two. Well, no, I wanted to buy like one. Uh, I wanted to buy the joke button CD, right. and I wanted to buy something else, but they wouldn't let me unless I spent more money. So I had to buy oh, like my. two of the same thing. That, well, that's that, not that, right. that sounds absolutely true. That is true. What is what is she talking about? She's saying when she called your thing, she just wanted the, the joke button, whatever that is. And they said what you is, can't. Oh, just yeah, they I said no, you just can't buy a joke button CD. You have to. Buy a CD yeah, with that. And then when that's I bought the cackling false. screensaver. Well, you feel she's. You, what is that? I I wanted the cackling screensaver. Oh, now I can explain. Okay. Uh -oh. She called up to buy the cackling screensaver, which is on the joke button CD. Right. When, just tell me something. When will you have enough money same. that you don't have to sell this stuff Who's anymore? You start paying me, for please. It? Oh, get out of here. You. Here we go again. Oh, yeah. It's me. I'm it's sorry. my fault that the audience is subjected Am to I this. Are starting trouble now? Uh, yes. I'm sorry. You are. Who are you paying? Oh. And now, you because, pay Jackie? Yeah, I, I sign his me? paycheck. I just thought I'd ruffle and your and, feathers. And then Howard. She and called up for a friggin' cackling screensaver, which is part of the joke button. Yeah, but It's I not individual. Two. I couldn't it's buy What one. if somebody called you and said, I want to buy chapter three of your book, Howard? <laughs> You'd say, I'm sorry. No, I go to a bookstore. No one calls me for books. But anyway, Howard, I love you. Love you, and too. I love you, too, Robin. I'm sorry you had a bad experience. Go no, drive you. you know, and, and I'll tell you what, Howard. When he packaged up the stuff, it was like there was nothing but um, his uh, promotional junk in it. <laughs> and then every time I go to the webpage, you can't even get to the jokes because there's so much junk and pictures. And, <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I, I, I got to go on that I hope you now that they'll make me buy something. I'm not calling. I was thinking of calling. I don't want to be forced into something I don't want to do. How you buy it all. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, though. I will buy anything of Robin's. I loved Robin's book. I loved your books, and I bought your movies and stuff, but I will never buy nothing from Jackie. Well, I've always You'll tried. Buy nothing? And I'll tell you what. I've bought Fred's CD, and he's great. Yeah, I've always tried to just like keep the, the products jokes? limited, but this is a separate thing. Do you I... like any of the jokes? Yeah, the jokes are good. Okay, thank you. But, I mean, they're not that good, but they're good. Right. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. I'm sorry you had a, a negative experience. That's okay. I keep listening. Right. Uh, please, if my audience is listening, please, I'm not responsible for this in any way. <laughs>
but I might see it here. I'll kill your dog. They, <laughs> they forced me to buy two. Wow. That's true. I have to thank the operator. <laughs> <laughs> Tread it again. King of all Jackie Martling haters, you're on the air. Hey, these people got to leave Jackie alone. First of all, he's my bitch. If anybody's going to rag on him, it's going to be me, because nobody knows that fat, bloated bastard better than I do. Right. Okay? And if he's going to say that his mother-in-law never used to take the stuff out of the basement and walk around the corner from the video store to the post office and mail his crap, <laughs> I, I, I'll beat the crap out of him. He's going to lie. Come on down here. <laughs> hey, Jack, I'll meet you on the beach tonight, you son of a bitch. Come on down here. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Obviously, this is getting uncomfortable. Jolene, go ahead. What are you getting uncomfortable? Hello? Yes. Hi, uh, yeah, I wanted to say, I, I saw Jackie at this comedy club in Stanford, Connecticut Governors, like about 10 years ago, I think, and I was all excited about it, I didn't know who he was, and I had to walk out. I was like, oh, you off? Hello? Well, obviously Jackie cut her off. Jack? I'm sorry, I had to reach out. <laughs> she was in the middle of giving a review. <laughs> all I heard was walk out, and then she got disconnected. Did Jackie win? Jackie installed a button. <laughs> well, a lot of goodwill out there, Jackie's spreading. We'll be at the Riviera in Las Vegas next weekend, and you can come and complain because it's the fifth year in a row I've been brought back because I did so crummy. Oh, I don't doubt that you do well there. I'm sure the place is packed. All right. Anyway, uh, thank you, Jackie. Thank you. Big and fat. <laughs> well, more good cheer is being spread by Jackie and his products. He's our goodwill ambassador out there. I guess on that phone line, they're, they're doing nothing short of raping <laughs> <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Dial at your own risk. <laughs> What's that number again, Jackie? 1 800 323 King. Right. King. Call at your own risk. King. You know, about that. What is it? King. King. King of what? King, Three, two, King of three, pain. Five, four, six, four. King. Chris, go ahead. Hi, Howard. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I love that CD. Huh. It's oh, the good. best. And I'm going to tell you why. Because how many times you have company over your house and they Never overstay their welcome <laughs> and you can't get rid of them. Oh. I put the CD on and they run out the door. <laughs> right. All right. Well, there's a guy who likes it. That's I apologize. Yeah, it. These people, good. I let mine complain. I'd pay $25 <laughs> for one CD. You would pay triple that. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Plus, uh, I just want to apologize. All right. All right. Well, Jackie, there's a positive I appreciate call. the infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wouldn't be bad to do an infomercial for him. We're all negative. And ruin, the CD ruined my life. People are out there. They don't know whether they should rip up the tickets or return their CDs. I right. like it because it runs people out of my house. That's a great time, of <laughs> It's a funny idea. <laughs> complete negative. Commercial. Yeah. Let's see how many people it brings in. <laughs> All the reasons why they... And I have a feeling you'd sell more CDs, Absolutely. though. Absolutely. People would have to see what that yeah, is. They have to see how bad it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Remind me to throw up on YouTube. <laughs> I've never seen such bad will over one product. <laughs> <laughs> the last time you talked about it. <sighs> All right, listen, Jackie's an accomplished comedian. Let's uh, let's leave it at that. No, let's not say that. All right. Anyway, Robin, what's in the news? He's the master. He's the king. This is Robin Quivers, who, by the way, is raising money for charity now. She's become quite a philanthropist <laughs> in her own right, raising money for abused children. Uh, no, an organization that uh, teaches, it educates people. Teaches people how to abuse children. Yes. No, wow. That's not What it. an unusual charity. No, no, no. If you're going to abuse your kids, there's a right way to do it. Get them my CDs. <laughs> Give them Jackie's CD. There you go. That's abuse. Right. No, yeah, what they do is they educate children and adults. Good. That's good because the education is what teaches the people. What? That's what Al Gore says. <laughs> you are like Bob Geldof with a vagina. Oh, dear. Really? Well, well, Bob Geldof is not a bad person to be. Except that he picked a waggy woman. Join the club. Robin's throwing a big charity event tonight, and uh, Benji is hurt because Robin invited everyone but him in front you of him what? in the I office. I was just about to invite... Benji oh, freaks right. me out, and I have been perfectly honest and open about it. Yes. And I said to him, these things are kind of come back to bite you in the butt. Mm-hmm. 
and I was debating whether to invite him. I understand why and you I didn't. I was just about to make the invitation, <laughs> and then somebody told me another Benji story, and I oh, said, no. <laughs> "Benji, you can't be that weird and oh. do kooky things and wear, wear, you know, wear weird things." And Rob's having this big event. She didn't want you ruining it. No, no, no. I totally understand. And, and it's a private event. I mean, I, she, it's up to her. You know, it's, she pays a lot of money for it. Yeah. Who she invites. I it was just funny. Him. Every time she invited somebody, it was like right in front of me. And everything. No, it wasn't. And maybe it's nicer to do secret. it behind his back. <laughs> of what? I'm supposed to be sneaking around? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't, but it was just... Did you probably wear an African garb or something. And, right. No. Yeah. No, I, I probably would have done something embarrassing. So. Right. Yeah. He'd be sitting there thinking to himself, hmm. Did you invite Scott Salem? No. No. <laughs> you know, I only had so many seats. Oh. I was running out. <laughs> Yeah. The line always seems to be oh, drawn. Right. <laughs> Here, see, you know, you're going to get me in trouble again. Scott yeah. probably didn't know anything was going on. It's 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 so uncomfortable because, right. like, I'm just doing some work with Scott. And, like, I know John's going. I'm talking to the guys from CBS. talking to the guys from IBM. I'm talking right. to the guys from upstairs. You know? right. And I was about to say to Scott, oh, I see you tonight. And then I, I knew oh, I was no. just too embarrassed to ask. Yeah, I wouldn't go anyway. Yeah. Uh, that's what I figured. I said, Scott's got to get up much earlier than the rest of us, so he can't go. Like, I know you invited Anne Marie, but not, and Anne Marie's only been here two years. Scott's been oh. here for like 20 years. <laughs> Why would she invite me? I only do her news cards every okay. morning for 15 years. Oh, she's, deba she's debating over Benji, but it was no debate when it came to Scott. <laughs> right. No, I decided that Scott, we, we can't keep him out, lady. He has trouble doing his work now. That's true, I <laughs> I'm a little beaten man anyway. I guess I'll go home and bring in my You see how, toys. see, trying to do something nice only gets you into trouble. Right. <laughs> so this is the last nice thing I ever do. Hmm. So I'm good. Good. Home and now I have an excuse my for here. being rotten. I don't want to hurt anybody. Right. I'm abused. <laughs> That's why I don't do anything good for anybody. <laughs> You know, I'd leave someone out. <laughs> anyway, Robin, um, what is that charity event? It's the Child Abuse Prevention Program's 13th Annual Gala. Wow. Is that why you went to a new hairstyle? No. Seriously. No. Are you going to wear your hair like that to your gala? Well, I'm wearing my hair like this. Right. So I guess I will. Right. Coincidence. Interesting. All right, Robin, what Everything else is in... Oh, here's Scott Taylor. Uh, <laughs> you are such a bitch. Why? I mean, this she's right. Act. 15 years, I've never even so much as been invited anywhere even so what does that tell you about you you're annoying <laughs> i try to be so much has been invited anywhere <laughs> now right. he's acting anyway i, I love when he comes in here acting yeah. no she's like you don't want to go anyway i would go it's a boring charity I, you event. know what no you wouldn't i would you can't even go to scores <laughs> i went to a boring charity event the other night really yeah, yeah. I was you didn't invited. invite me <laughs> you know what it got really sad i was invited with Scott, when it got really sad with him when i felt bad when we first started working here, every year we would exchange Christmas presents. I know. So the first year, Scott b bought us all something, and we forgot oh. him. So the second year, I'm sure Scott said, well, last year I gave him a present. I'm sure they won't forget me. And then we forgot him again. Yeah, we always forget him. And then I felt really bad. I, you know what? I like Scott, but I just forget about him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm easily forgotten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, thank you, Scott. I wasn't oh, yeah. trying to forget him, but I really thought the event was, you know, Scott, do you really socialize during the week? What time does it end? Oh, I don't know what time it ends. I certainly won't be able to stay till the end. What Most thing? of the time, I don't socialize, no. But and I, I just figured if I could I'm make... having trouble with this whole thing and I get up when I do, Scott's in... I do make exceptions. <laughs> so oh, I could go one thing. You know what, Rob? So then why did you invite uh, the other people have to get up early? And they yeah. could come yeah. or not. Come on. Huh? They right. could come or not. So why do you give I Scott that up? Scott would have to turn me down. I All hate right. rejection. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Go ahead. Stretch a little more. Let's see how far you can stretch. No, I was telling you the truth. I really thought... What's it like, Scott, never to be missed? <laughs> oh, I've gotten used to it by now. It's just like, you Scott know... Scott won't be able to miss. If you didn't go I'm, home, a, I'm if, like a wall. You if know? you didn't go home for a week, how long would it be till your wife called the cops? <laughs> uh, That's happened. She would, <laughs> no, she would... Uh, yeah. All right. But, but, mm, I'm say, no comment on that one. Uh, Snappy retort, but... Yeah. <laughs> uh, we did rejoined her. This is, this is yeah. horrible. I don't want anybody to feel bad. Oh, believe me, I'm, so past, he'll feel I'm bad. past feeling bad. <laughs> You're worried about children being abused. He's the world's biggest child. You know, when you feel bad enough, it's, no, it doesn't After matter. Yeah, point, it's, it's like, it doesn't matter anymore. It, it washes over you like waves. <laughs> Just Post you the boy. <laughs> No, I think I'll throw up now. Right. He's like one of those girls that was in here. At a certain point, the beatings just don't hurt. <laughs> How come I didn't win that car? I am the biggest loser of all time. Yeah, especially with that. You know what? I, I bought a whole table. I'll tell you what. Why don't you check to see if there's any more seats left of mine? And you want to go tonight? There aren't any more seats left anywhere. It is no, no, no. So, I, so my bad. table, I haven't given away all my seats. Mm. Can't, can't mm. come. 
see? <laughs> I, ha- I have seats. You do have seats. Yeah. All right. I, th- I might. See, now, now, he's going to say, see, Howard's... I saw that movie, A Fish Called Wanda. Yeah. And, of course, when the stuttering guy came on, I thought of John. And John said to me this morning, when you saw A Fish Called Wanda, did you think of me? And I go, oh, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Uh, I totally lied. Stop. Lied to me. I did. I go, John, you hardly stutter. <laughs> What to, why would I think of you? I would think of somebody who really stutters, like Mel Tillis or something. John says he was as bad as that guy in A Fish Called Wanda until he started getting laid, and then he got a little more self-confident. <laughs> I didn't exactly say that. What? I said, and as soon as I did, discovered girls. Because yeah. you were stuttering like crazy this morning. Really? Yeah. When I first come in, it's just me I and I thought John. I was doing good. I thought I, I didn't think I stuttered. I thought you were stuttering a lot. The second you saw me this morning, you started stuttering. I Remember, we were talking, you were like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Your head was rattling everything. <laughs> <laughs> you were out of control. So I, said, See, I don't realize it. You know, I thought I did good, really. Because, I, I, you know, I said, well, he must be extra nervous. He hasn't seen us in a week. Right, and stuff. It's like yeah, seeing us all over again. It. It's, a new, it's a new day, <laughs> a new week. He doesn't know us all that well anyway. Right. He's still a little nervous around us. You'll get to know us better. You won't be stuttering sure. that much. Yeah. So, uh... You wrote some music? What are you, yeah. a musician? Yeah, I told you. And you sing? Well, I don't sing in my band, but I sang on these. I did all the vocals on these. I think you're going to like them. Okay. Now, what is have this Have you exactly? heard these? No, I right. have not. This is the first time we're both yeah, hearing. This is, this is a version from a presentation. <laughs> dun, dun. What? Nothing. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. What are you, singing over there? Or are you <laughs> I, should, I, I, should, I should sing everything out, then I won't study. You know? Yeah, well, that, that would be pretty dumb. Yeah. Walking around, you know... I've got to go change the tape. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. i got to go get Howard some coffee. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty stupid, wouldn't it? Oh. Yeah, so that is. Yeah, yeah, you'd look like a jerk. So, all right. But, you know, I'll tell you something. I, I, I did have someone in my speech class who used to sing everything. It was yeah. really funny. It was yeah. good. So, right. so, so there is people who do it. I understand. Anyway, so John, our stuttering intern, evidently wants to be a musician. So he said, oh, I want to write a song for the show. And I said, oh, that'd be pretty funny. Let's hear this. <laughs> and this is, are you in college? Yeah. 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 Are you a music major? No, I'm a film and TV major. Oh, I see. So you're multifaceted. Yeah, I figure, you know, you got to try a few things. You know? And you have a band, so this yeah. is your whole band. No, this is just this is a I, this is just me basically. I, and you know, and a guy who, who did the studio, this guy, my friend, my, Mike Sapone did it. <laughs> but I mean, it's, I'm singing. I play the bass on. I play guitar. And, okay. You know, and, and and there's two of them, and I like oh. first one's like a, but then they're short, so you know you can listen to them. All right, here we go. All right, <laughs> give the guy a break. Here we go. And, and this first one's about soupy cells. Okay. Oh, all right. We're a song about soupy. Yeah, and the I second one's about me. Well, yeah, and the second one's the. Um, history of how he's, how it's done. It's a it's like a theme song. For okay, you. all right. Okay, take it easy, will you? All right. <laughs> I don't know if we can hear the whole thing, but I'll listen to some of your super. Well, sales. maybe it'll be so good we'll watch. Yeah, yeah. I what think are you like thinking it. of? I think you like it. All right. You know it's not going to be any good. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Already, let's get. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Let me hear this. <laughs> He's singing the Lord's along. <laughs> this makes Ahab the Arab look like uh, Layla. <laughs> it's, not, it's not bad, but... Uh, well, uh, there's some disc jockeys in um, uh, Illinois or Indiana, wherever that Dan Quayle is from. I'd like to introduce him to yeah. you. <laughs> Why are you doing country stuff? Uh, well, this is because I heard Super Sales from the South. So, I, I, you know, I did like a, you know, yeah, you know, you know how, how, how damn you doing kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? It All keeps right. on going like that. All right. All right. How damn. <laughs> He starts yelling when he tries to stop himself from stuttering. <laughs> Did you notice that? I'm frightened. I thought you were normal. I am normal. <laughs> he is normal. <laughs> Nobody knows it. <laughs> Let me see something here. Let me hear the next. Let me hear the one about me. Oh, man. Some. That was such a good one. I can't believe no, it. It was fun. It was fun. Oh, yeah. It was great. I, I'm going to take it home. I want it to be part <sighs> of my collection. Can people buy these songs somewhere? <laughs> no, it didn't even get to the best part. All right, wait. 
This is the one about me. I'm more interested in me anyway. This whole show is just me and my ego. Yeah, so. what do we care about Zuby Singh? Right. Well, I know, because I, I ranked him. By the way, that was kind of old news, you know, right. being at NBC. Okay. I mean, that's, you know, like, why kick a dog when he's down? Okay. All right, <laughs> All right now we're rocking. You see? That I like. What? what? A Jew's success. A Jew? Yeah, well, you know, I just... Why would I play that? Well, it gets good. It gets, I mean, it's... A Jew's success? I yeah, I mean, it's good, though. I mean, it's not like I'm not a making... A Jew's... Fun. I'm a half Jew. I'm not even... I, I, well, I deny I that, that part I of my... I couldn't say half Jew in the line. It wouldn't fit. But why would you concentrate... Wait, here's oh, the... Wait, it goes on. It's like the history the of... Story about a Jew's Hold success. It. What is it, that whole Jew thing? I know. I, I wasn't going to... Are you a Jew? Part. No, I'm not Jewish. It's bad when a guy who's not Jewish says that. I told you, if you scratch the surface of every intern we have, you find a maniac. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> I told you that. I, I was thinking, like, this is the first normal yeah, guy we had. I'm telling you. A Jew success. Thanks a lot, Here's you stuttering story. bastard. Here's the story of a Jew stuttering success. bastard. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't right. mean it to be bad. I thought it would just... just... I mean, the first thing you think of with me is that I'm... A Jew? I'm working Jew? for a Jew. No, but you always say it, so I figured, you know... I don't say that. You don't hear me saying I'm a Jew. You always say I'm a Jew. You, 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 I, don't I don't say know. I'm a Jew. I always say I'm a half Jew. All right, well, I'm sorry. I, I, I couldn't fit half Jew. A Jew? No, the first thing you think of with me is that here's a story No, this Jew is a successful Jew. story. you got to listen to the words. So you mean every Jew is successful? No, but you, you're very Jew. successful. Successful. Success, huh? Another Jew success story. <laughs> I should have said I should have said how we're in success, but it's Robin, I'll put, I'll, I'll put fifty dollars down. Dude, I'll put fifty dollars down. Yeah, I said dude. That's what it was. I'll put fifty dollars down. The next line is a rudder nose comment <laughs> or something. You know? Oh yeah, your nose is gonna come up. Yeah, there. right. I know it. I can feel it. Every intern like takes such liberties working here. I'm oh. telling you. you know, this What was this? He's real upper class? No, he yeah. grew up with blacks. Ah, this is good. Just he grew up with what? He grew up with blacks. His mind was a mess. Yes, you always say that you oh. grew up with, you know, you, oh. it gets good now. And now it just starts happening. Why, why use the word j -j Jew? Why don't you do a mocky? A mocky Jew boy <laughs> success story. <laughs> Incredible. I think you are. It, I, it gets good. I'm All right, okay. What does it say, a Jew, Jew boy? boy story, a Jew <laughs> no, 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 it goes, poor little Jew boy thought he was a coon. And then you keep going. Whoa. Poor little Jew boy thought he was a coon. <laughs> no, you gotta listen, it's good. You gotta, like, please. That's please. good. What are you, are you ashamed of yourself? No, how? Thought he was a coon. Yeah, but, yeah, let's see, now the next one is, hail to King Howard. Howard is but the we king. Don't use, we don't use words like coon I'm a Jew boy. Oh, man, I mean, this, I, I should. Is that what you think I do for no, a living? No, Howard, I, 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 I would, really. I don't call blacks coons. Uh, I know. I thought it, it's, it's really funny. I mean, if you just oh, listen to it. Oh, that is very funny. Yes. <laughs> what the hell's oh, wrong you with you, John? bastard! I <laughs> call your name. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? What kind of thing is that? I can't believe. That. You know this this song is so like uh, I mean I'm I'm kissing your butt so much in this song that just because the first two lines I mean you can't judge Boy, a book a by the first a two lot's lines. coming through with you man oh, oh man I am I am not when do you start when, when, when was that synagogue desecrated no wait wait, wait. I am not I I am I am the farthest I really am. Uh, no, I, oh, no, yes, I can no see I, it. I swear to God I'm yeah but let me just say something that there's probably a whole history with you in that stuttering thing now that I think about it a guy who stutters. There's like some heavy stuff that's gone down in your past. Oh, come on. Nothing's gone down. Oh, yeah. Some interesting ways you're looking at the world. You're very angry. Yeah, you're an angry guy. That's what that stuttering is. Like, you're just trying to get the words out. You're like... Or maybe stuffing down the words you'd really like to say. Yeah. That whole sublimation thing. No, no, no. I mean, no. This, this, come on, it gets good, Howie. Come on. You got to talk about it after the show a little bit with me? <laughs> Lay down on the couch. <laughs> this is a disgrace. No, this gets oh, good. I mean, boy. believe me. It, mm -hmm. look, so sorry. far, we're impressed. No, but <laughs> so far, it's pretty funny. Yeah, but see, you should really listen to it and, and, and get the music going. Into oh, yeah. It. It's, it's a good Here's song. Here's the story of a Jew wants to be a coon. <laughs> a Jew Come on, coon. man. It's but i got to start it over again. <laughs> this is yeah, we, we're interrupting. we got to get the full... Yeah, bye, but please try and listen to it. It gets, you know, it gets okay, The trouble oh. is we are listening to it. <laughs> You, you know, I thought it was so done that you weren't going to blast it, man. No, it's really funny. Did. I said to Gary, what are these songs like? He goes, oh, they're pretty good, actually, you know? So I don't think you'd have much to make fun of. Gary said that? <laughs> I said, well, I'll, I'll be the judge of that. Well, you're out of your mind, aren't you? <laughs> it's interesting how you think of me, too. 
I think you're a great guy. I mean, oh, okay. you know, people okay. ask me how's Howard. I'm for like, he's really, Jew, he's like for a Jew. You mean? Oh, oh come on, <laughs> for a Jew success. That's, that's. I'm a half Jew. I'm more Italian than I am Jewish. So I mean, I'm, why you call me I'm, a, I'm a minority. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, I, I get, you know. What minority are you? I'm stuttering. Stuttering bastard. I'm Spanish. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Spanish for one, so, you know, this big thing comes all along. Right. And You're all, Spanish. Yeah. yeah, you really look Spanish. Yeah, go ahead. And, you know, I'm Danish, but that's, you know. You know that's yeah, a real they, minority. Real and then I stutter, so we got, you know, come on. I mean. Yeah, they have a bad Olympic team, the Danes. <laughs> <laughs> They're a real minority. Well, that is the Danes, man. What the guy at the recording studio think of this? He loves it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, who was recording this, Manson? Yeah. <laughs> I think he was. I, I think he was at work here. <laughs> was that Jew Wop Jew Wop? No, oh, do 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 Wop do do do. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> It's the only non-racist thing he said in his song. What, WAP? Do WAP? Do WAP. Oh, that's oh, Gary in there. <laughs> <laughs> he blew up the class. His mind was a mess. Oh, he was a dude. He was a dude. He was a dude. No, don't stop it. No, no, no. I gotta react. Oh. No, this gets good. Now it gets good. All right, all right, take it easy. Don't bang the microphone. I'm sorry. I don't think John Lennon's sister showed up, thank God. Yeah, she probably listened in this morning. Yeah, she probably, cool. What I do is she tuned in, she heard this song, and then she left. <laughs> I'm sorry, what, what was, was that? that? It's, I got... Uh, <laughs> Dancing the horror. Oh, God. Dancing the horror? He had nowhere to go? <laughs> Who would have thought he'd be king of radio? Hell to King Howard. Howard is the king. In other words, who would have thought the Jew boy would have oh made... Oh, my God. ...would be a king I, of radio? I, I, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I well, don't he think... he couldn't just keep yelling being, Jew boy. So yeah. It's being taken the wrong way. Dancing, the, taking the wrong way. <laughs> it's I mean, actually... This is a, this you is mean, a, what about the... You know, the guy's a brilliant comic. It goes... You gotta listen about to... about the, the half-Italian thing? This is the... Intro, you know how you introduce a story? You know, the... It, 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 yeah, like the clip what, is there. I mean, you mean the whole, my whole... My whole... In other words... If I would have said, this is a this is a great success... You know, for the, for right from the beginning, he was born a king's son, and he was successful to begin with. Then it's not a good story. This is someone. So in other words, this is someone who struggled story, and now is successful. I mean, I struggled as a Jew. No, I mean, but he had to is, overcome his Judaism. Yeah, how it? I mean, guys, <laughs> he's, he's killing me. He's killing like, me here. This is like music to shove people into ovens by. <laughs> 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 what is it? I really, I hate to interrupt this magic because it is right. great, but uh, our guest has arrived. Oh, she is here. Oh, you got it. Maybe she wants to hear this. Yeah. yeah. She knows music. Her brother was John Lennon. Yeah. You're only going to. You got to hear at least the first. Like, you gotta, just a couple. Yeah. Let's moments. hear where it gets good. Yeah. yeah, yeah the good part. Yeah. No, but it's just interesting that the first paragraph of something is usually like setting it up and opening up it's a story. Yeah, it is. So, so the most important thing that you could think of with me is that I danced the hora. <laughs> no. 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 Have you ever? Dance the whole run. Never. <laughs> no, but and I never will. See, yeah, but see, now it's just now it's just totally now. now it's I went to a bar mitzvah. My relatives tried to get me up uh -huh. because, because of course they don't want to take pictures of me dancing that they can show all their friends. Everything where I go is a personal appearance. I go to a bar mitzvah. I sign autographs for my aunt. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> all right. That's awful. Yeah. And now it's, it gets happening. I'm telling, I'm telling you, it's going to start really. You know, like telling. What? Stuff. Shut up, you stuttering idiot. <laughs> Let me hear this. Well, that part I have no problem okay. with. Okay, it just gets, gets even better. I can imagine. I don't know. I don't want to hear anymore. This is, this is the most frightening. What words, what's worse is he's sitting here singing the words. Yeah, I know. And you know what? It's real embarrassing. I look over at him and he's singing along with the tape. Do me a favor. Don't sing All along right, with I won't sing tape. along with the tape. Oh, just... boy. He's looking at, and I don't know what to I'm do. I'm looking at you. Uh, yeah, Howard, gotta get it. Yeah, it's happening. He's telling me the song and he's yeah. like, sing. You have, I wish this was television. John is sitting here singing along with his own tape. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, bobbing up and I'm down. I'm just trying to, like, because if, if the words aren't clear, I just want you to know, see that, you know. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> now, I thought, you know, I really did. I thought you were okay, and now yeah. I'm finding oh, that you on. are the most frightening. Oh, come on. Yeah, you might That's be the most fair. frightening. Uh, and <laughs> hey, we've had some pretty scary people in here. Oh, yeah. Adolf John. <laughs> John, what's your last name? Melendez. Not nothing like Melendez. Yeah. <laughs> well, you weren't part Spanish, huh? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Do you know Spanish? 
Jew and no, hey, come on. How do you say Jew? How do you say Jew boy in Spanish? I wouldn't know. And I wouldn't. coon. And coon. I wouldn't know. <laughs> coon. I mean, if you're going to use racial slurs, get some cool ones in, like Maki and uh, Coon is such a uh, like it's a deep South. Yeah, kind but it's, of thing. I just it's just something to fit, you know, in the in, in the in, 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 in the line, you know. Yeah, but Coon is. I mean, that's sort I know, of like that, that's a deep not the, South. Yeah, that kind isn't of, like the, the point. Say Molignon or something. Molly. At least get you one there. Maki and Molly yeah, are kind of neat. Maki, he was a Maki, wants to be a Molly. Say like that. He wants a mucky, want to be a mooly. He's thinking about it, Howard. <laughs> Throwing porch monkey, yeah. something cool. And, uh, what is it, coon? Coon. It just fit with the line. I mean. Okay. Yeah, it fit with the line. But you, yeah, it had to rhyme with what? What was the line again? Um. He was a Jew boy once no, to be a coon. Uh, poor little Jew boy, he thought he was a coon. Yeah, yeah it definitely you know how it fits. Fit. Yeah, it does. It fits like a glove. <laughs> What? No, I was going to say, it's just really, you know. It's good, huh? All right. All right. Well, we'll get to, let me take a break, and we'll get back to our Danish-Spanish intern. What do you wear, like pointed wooden shoes? What's it, a Danish-Spanish person? <laughs> All right, listen, let's take a break, and we'll be back right after this. Jackie, Too Many Heineken's Martling, his two Filthy Jokes CDs, Sergeant Pecker and The Joke Man, are still only $12 plus $4 U.S. shipping. Also on cassette, buy two, get one. It's only 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, okay. Well, don't let that stop you. <laughs> <laughs> Most of our listeners start drinking at 4 o'clock in the morning. No. So anyway, she had sex with this guy five or six times a day. A day. And then all of a sudden... We were living together, and we were, and we were supposed to get married, but I changed my mind because he was a freak. Right, and then he shot her in the head. He was a freak. What was freaky about him? He, he would beat me up. Oh. Then, she shot, then he shot her in the head, and then what did he do? He left, it, he left you there because he thought you were dead? No, um, the woman says heard the shot and called the cops, and, and they came. They came in. And yeah. got me. When you when you shot in the head, were you still conscious or you passed out? No, I was, I, I was unconscious, yeah. You were? It's cool. You wouldn't be conscious during something like that. I can't imagine that having time to beat somebody you're having sex with five times a day. When did the beatings come? No, the beatings well, actually beat me. He just, he just, you know, hit me around and broke my makeup and broke all my... Ripped my Shot holes in my clothes and stuff like that. Oh. You're so freaky guy. Yeah, he was nuts. I guess he didn't have a job. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, he had a job. But we, we'd meet. We'd do, we'd do, we got up in the morning, and then we came up for lunch, and then we came up for dinner, and then... All right, cool. All right, I got enough. I got enough details. I really don't want to get into it anymore. Okay. I just want to know how they worked it in. I know, I know. <laughs> White guy? We worked it in. White guy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, well, if you ever get down to New York, man, we'll hook you up with some dude, some sugar daddy. Sounds great to me. All right, honey. Okay. All right, hold on. Here's Gary. There are no sugar daddies in Spokane, Washington. Mm, something tells me something's up with that. We have to take a look at the situation. <laughs> we have to survey. Yeah. Crackhead Bob has bucks. Sure. Get a man like him. I was like, with that arm and that leg, she's like crackhead Barbara. Yep. <laughs> that's it. He has one good side and still the shit. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's not the same side that's bad. So, dudes, I might be dealing you uh, a girl who'll do anything to you just to, uh, if you pay for her implants. That'll be pretty cool, huh? What other station gives you that? You can get some implants pretty cheap these days. Oh, yeah. You can get a hack doctor to do it for two, three grand. <laughs> <laughs> then you got someone who'll just, you know, service you every day, five, six times a day. <laughs> like a rubber blow-up doll. There Go. Yeah. Won't even complain. That's about the best giveaway we've had on this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I got to take a little break. We'll be right back. We'll be back. We'll be back. With the Howard Stern Show in a moment. Howard K Rock wants you to see Columbia Pictures' hilarious new sci fi comedy Men in Black starring Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith. Keep listening for details on how to get tickets. Sergeant Pecker and the Joke Man are each 78 raunchy minutes. Only $12 plus $4 shipping and handling. CD or cassette, buy two, get one free. Call 1 800 323 King. Jackie's Joke CDs are now available in major record stores coast to coast on Oleo Records. For information, visit Jokeland on the web at Jackie Joke... Oh, excuse me, at Jokeland.com. Jokeland.com. That's the address. God forbid I get that wrong. They could be held to pay. Why can't Raquel Welsh be as pleasant as Charo, huh? you got to ask yourself that. Here's uh, an article I just got in the newspaper. This is from the 
San Diego Union Tribune. It's really weird. Just listen to the first paragraph of this article, Robin, and tell me <laughs> if you should ever be reading this in the paper. A Spring Valley man who engaged in lewd conduct with horses was ordered to stay away from all livestock <laughs> and from the entire community of Lakeside for three years under an unusual probation sentence handed down yesterday. Where is he supposed to go? I don't know. Paul Milhouse, 49 years old. 49 years old. Way too old to be doing this stuff. And you know he's probably been doing it for a long time. Yeah. Paul Milhouse, 49, also was ordered to undergo therapy and to pay $300 in fines and restitution. Want to hear the most embarrassing day of this guy's life? Throughout most of yesterday, uh, there was a 90-minute hearing. The guy sat at a defense table with his left hand shielding his face from the more than three dozen lakeside ranchers and <laughs> residents in attendance. So the whole goddamn town was pissed off at this guy for having sex with their animals. Several of them, including San Diego Zoo spokeswoman Joan Embry, the one that used to be on the Carson show. Yeah. Yeah. So she was there, and she told the judge that Millhouse had been sneaking into the corrals late at night for years and bothering their animals. Embry, imagine Joan Embry comes in. Testifying against your pride. <laughs> Embry told the judge that she saw Milhouse engaging in perverse behavior with one of her mares. I wonder how you do that. I mean, I've seen video of that, like chicks doing horses. But yeah, but this is a guy. This is a guy. Oh. Now, listen to what the judge said in front of Joan Embry and all the ranchers and everybody while the guy's sitting there trying to cover his face. I'm going to have to assume that you do not have control over your impulses, <laughs> <laughs> the judge said. He ordered, he, ordered them to, he ordered this guy to stay out of Lakeside to stay at least 200 yards from any livestock. So if this guy comes within 200 yards of livestock, he's in violation of his parole. They're not protecting family pets, just livestock? <laughs> livestock. Asked if he would comply, Milhouse replied, I guess I have no choice. That's an interesting reply. Yeah, it seems like he doesn't really want to. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, you know, it's an animal. and The animals seem to like it, and I they like it. They haven't complained. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, do you think a horse cares if you do that to him? I wonder. I wouldn't think so. Really. No, I mean, I don't even think they feel it. <laughs> you got hurt? Right? I know, like, a, a, a full-size woman hardly feels me, so... Oh. Right. Why would a horse mind? A horse wouldn't even know. You know, I always said, you know, if, even if you, you know, do something terrible to a sheep, they don't wind up on a psychiatrist's couch. Yeah. They just go on. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe the guy it's should be like allowed to do it. It's not like he's beating them or whipping No, and it's not like he's, you know, hurting it's, any people. Yeah, but, you know, maybe people don't like walking into their barn and seeing. Oh. Yeah, maybe it's just upsetting. So why can't the guy just get a horse of his own? <laughs> you know, the guy would be in great shape if he just bought a horse. Yeah. Anyway. I guess there's something he gets off on, like, doing it to other people's livestock. Maybe, yeah, sneaking into their barns. And Millhouse pleaded guilty May 13th to one misdemeanor charge of lewd conduct. Anyway, uh, <laughs> his attorney, Susan Kim, said the probation was excessive. That's kind of weird. I mean, what, what's excessive? Susan Kim. Yeah, what, what's so excessive about asking the guy to stay away from livestock? Well, the man loves them. <laughs> He does not hurt the horses, she told the judge. We think it's unreasonable that the court asks him to stay away from all animals. You know what? Lawyers are hysterical. <laughs> yeah. All, you are in a stupid profession when you're a lawyer. Because you know she doesn't believe that. Of course not. She's like, ugh, get this guy away from me. Somebody put a restraining order on him Probably, to me. You know, scrapes her own skin off after she leaves the guy. Uh, several ranchers told of horses behaving strangely after what they described as Millhouse's trespassing late night visits. Okay, this is cool. I, I, maybe the horses are yeah, disturbed. Yeah, the horses are traumatized. Okay. Let's see. One rancher, Sue Munyon, told the judge she hired a private investigator who videotaped one of the encounters. Oh. The man needs help and should be kept away from any kind of livestock. <laughs> is that tape on the internet? Oh, please. Yes. It's got to get on there. got to have that tape. <laughs> anyway, his lawyer was not pleased with the sentence. Of course not. Listen to this. Afterward, she's... Oh, afterward, the woman said... Okay, this is cool. Afterward, the woman who, uh, you know, who videotaped this guy, mm -hmm. she was pleased with the sentence, but she doesn't think Milhouse will abide by it. She thinks he'll be back with animals. Well, if he's obsessed, yeah. what's he going to do? I guess it's with female horses. I guess... Uh, well, at least he's not, you know, gay. <laughs> well, it did say mares, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it sure did. Hey, I got two tickets to uh, Ho Holyfield Tyson, just to change the subject. 
June 28th at the MGM in Las Vegas. Trip includes two nights hotel accommodation, round trip airfare, and hospitality invitations to the MGO, MGM hotel, courtesy of Gold Premium Beer. And uh, the best way to give them away, I've decided this morning, and this is a great prize. Can you imagine you're going to fly to Las Vegas for be two right nights? Be there for the fight. Be there for the fight, hotel accommodation. I mean, the whole deal, thanks to Gold Premium Beer. I thought we'd bring in Kurt Waldheim Jr., who everybody loves so much. Kurt Waldheim Jr., everybody. Now it's time for Guess Who's the Jew with everyone's favorite Nazi, Kurt Waldheim Jr. By the way, just for the record. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God, God damn it. Where is your music? <laughs> Let me try a backup plan here. All right. Boy, oh, boy. What? Oh, there we go. Good. There's your music. It died like some people did in 1942. What can I tell you? About six million people, <laughs> quite frankly. By the way, but choice between the horse and Rosie O'Donnell, I'd rather have the horse. Kurt, did you ever see this uh, movie Jerry Lewis made where he was a I have Nazi? it on video cassette. Would you like to buy it? Oh, you have it. I have it on DVD. <laughs> I knew somebody would have it. it, it, it from what I understand... Those little nips make DVD. It's unbelievable. Jerry Lewis played a circus clown who works in a Nazi concentration right. camp and leads the Jews into the oven. It's a heartwarming story. It is. Better you, than Fortis Gump. You, well, you like I it. I think it's nice that they provided the children with some entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Of course. How lovely. Anyway, Kurt Voltheim Jr. has uh, been accused of Nazi atrocities. The lies, lies, all lies! And all kinds of horrible things. But enough things. about Marv Albert's alibi. <laughs> well, let's uh, talk about your new uh, show that you're trying to get financing for. I promise, Kurt. Oh, Voltheim. I'm so glad you brought that yeah, up. Yeah, go ahead. Talk yes, about that. Yes, it's a new show that I'm, I'm very excited. So many things are opening on Broadway. So many things are closing on Broadway. This, this actually might Broadway bring show. this might bring people into the city. It's called Mine Fair Fuhrer. He wrote Mind Fair Fuhrer. Like which, Mind Fair Lady, yeah. Mind Fair Fuhrer. They stole it from me. Oh. He's trying to, uh, he, as he said to me the other day, F. Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> he, he said uh, he is trying to get financing. He's already contacted Steven Spielberg. Oh, right. Why Spielberg. would Spielberg uh, finance a A box, a buck. A box, a buck. A box, a buck. Even though he's Jewish. Right. Now, this is about... He holds no, you know, grudge. This is about... Disney's War interested. Now, I noticed they're making so a... Liberal. They made a play about the Titanic. That was right. a disaster. World War II was a disaster, and they had Hogan's Heroes. But there were bright spots. Right. Uh -huh. Actually, uh -huh. Hogan's Heroes is the number one show in Germany right now. Is that right? It really is. <laughs> they like that. They've gotten a sense of humor about the Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you've written a couple of songs. These are sample songs. If yes. anyone is interested in financing... I haven't cast Hitler yet, but uh, for Ava Braun, I've got my eye on Raquel Welch. Right. I hear she's quite a bitch. <laughs> Perfect casting. All right. Let me hear some of the songs you've written. This is a musical. Yes. It's a musical. Uh, you yeah. have the show opener right there. All right. This would be the opening tune. The opening Let tune. me hear a little bit of this. Jews are burning up all over. <laughs> We're cooking them up like pizza pie. All right. Oh. Now, let me ask you this. And you say, yes. the, the other idea is that you, each person who comes into the theater can get tattooed, their arm tattooed in the lobby with a number? <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. And how do you get out? <laughs> Through an oven? <laughs> Under the door on a piece of paper. All right, now you also have... Uh, uh, this will be the turning point of the show. All right, this, this is the, the big highlight. The, the, All right. the big apex. All right. Homosexuals, how we want <gasps> to give the homos pain. Let's pop out their eyes, all of these queer guys pour hot lead into their sissy brains. Oh, homosexuals cut. All right, so now you... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Doesn't he understand that a large part of the Broadway audience is homosexual? Well, well probably you, like you, that. You, you clean out one crop and you bring in another. <laughs> it, it well, maybe, maybe it's... Uh, well, okay, a musical about World War II. Very interesting. Now, now this is the show closer, yes, you said. Yes, actually, this just before the uh, big gas chamber scene. All right, let me see this. <laughs> We're gonna wipe the Jews off the face of the earth. We're gonna wipe the Jews off the face of the earth. We're gonna wipe the Jews off the face of the earth and speak the Negroes too. All right, so there, that, and then you we wrote don't all leave the music. anybody out. And you wrote all the music, Kurt Voldemort. I wrote all the music, and if I didn't write it, I, it will soon be writing it. The right. people who wrote it will disappear. Right. He just did away with the entire audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, who do you think will go see this? Just People from Minnesota. Right. <laughs> All right. Let me go see if I can find somebody to play Guess Who's the Jew and win this incredible prize. I'm just going to plunk down our phones and see if we can't find somebody. Uh, hi. You're on the air. Hello? Yes. Hi. Yes. Now, you want to play the game? Yes. I don't know why everybody's level is so low on the phones. 
I don't know. Maybe it's your phone. I don't. I don't know. It could be. Are you talking directly into the phone? Talking directly into the phone. Mm -hmm. Where do you live? What town? New York. You live in New York. New York. And you are Jewish? No. What are you? A uh, Roman Catholic. And do you hate the Jews? Uh, no. You do not. Mm -hmm. oh, him. <laughs> That's no fun. Uh, hello. 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 Man, I tell you something. I think it's our phone. I really do. I can't figure out what they're doing here, but I know it's wrong. I can barely hear any of our callers anymore. Every one of them. It's just impossible to get any kind of professionalism. Yes, hello? Yes. All right, you I can hear. Okay. Are you Jewish? No. What are you? Uh, Catholic. Where do you live? New York. Do you hate the Jews? <laughs> no. You do not? No. Too bad. <laughs> because uh, your connection is so clear. <laughs> we need a real good, loud Jew hater. Hello? Hello? Yes. How are you? Do you hate the Jews? Um, somewhat. Yes. Why do you hate the Jews? Oh, you know, they've just got everything. They have all the money. Not everything. They do. They have, they've got it all. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Are you, uh, are you Jewish? No, I'm not. Mm-hmm. Why do you think they have everything? Well, just, uh... They seem to have it all, you know. You look at the credits on the TV shows. You look at the owners of the big companies. Right. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think we have a candidate. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> do you work for Jewish people? As a matter of fact, yes. You do? Yes. Are they good <laughs> they to you or are they bad to you? Uh, they're pretty good to me, actually. Oh, they are good to you. Yeah. But it's got to make you a little bit upset that <clears throat> here, even, even in your own business, they're in control. Um, well, well, I, I guess they've worked for it. Yeah. I'm sort of a slacker, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that uh, the Jews deserve what they have, or maybe they got it uh, a little too easy? Uh, well, I guess uh, they, they sort of work harder than uh, us uh, non-Jews do. Mm -hmm. And did they, but do they keep everything for themselves and not let anybody else in? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> do you so think that? Get ahead anyway. Do you think they're pushy and aggressive, and that's why they get ahead? Oh yeah. 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 That the more pushy you are, the, the more you get ahead in business. But that isn't necessarily right. Like, why does everybody have to just get ahead in business? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And will they do anything for money? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you can play. Okay. <laughs> I think you qualify. Oh, well, thank you. I've worked hard. Did you go to Catholic school? I did. Yes. That's where I learned to be uh, so open-minded. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nuns you, doing a great job. Did you find that? Did the nuns ever talk about Christ being killed by the Jews? Oh, repeatedly. And what would they say? Well, you know, they didn't want to come out directly and say we should... Uh, be resentful or hateful, but mm -hmm. they, they sort of implied that. Right, right. And they said that the Jews killed Christ, right? Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. They pointed that out numerous times. Did your priest ever grab your ass? Um, well, not a priest, but uh, some of the brothers. Really? Oh, sure. Interesting. Hmm. Well, you've had a very confusing background. Kurt Waldheim, how do you feel about this guy? Is he filled with enough hate? Uh, he's on, he's on the way. What, what's your first name? Tony. Ah. Are you a WAP? <laughs> half WAP, half German. Oh, very good. <laughs> You're half the axis right there. That's right. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Kurt Waldheim, you tell me. Can this guy play so the game? So would you like to win tickets to Coon Squared, a.k.a. Tyson Holyfield 2? You oh, bet boy. I would. You are so filled with hate, no. hatred to the races, aren't Thank you? you? Nothing <laughs> better than two beating each other up. That's right. The best time. The only thing that's better it. than that is you beating them up. <laughs> but that's not possible, is it? <laughs> All right, so uh, both of you hate black people, right? I'm a coward. You hate black people, sir? Um, no, not not hate. I I'm, was you know, my Catholic school training prevents me from saying that. I see. Yeah. But you feel? <laughs> oh well. I, I mean, when right. you see a black guy walking down the street, do you cross the street so you don't get into any trouble? Or duck into a store? Right. <laughs> Wise move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Tony, half German, half Dago. You can make pizzas in the oven, too, can't you? <laughs> yes, that's true. All right, let's play the game now. Uh, Kurt Voltheim, I'm going to ask you to take over the airwaves and present us with uh, the choices. All right, we have some choices here. Uh, pick a category. I'll give you a choice of TV fat sauce. Soap opera juice or too old for tampons? Which category would you like? I'll take TV fatos. All right, TV fatos it is. <laughs> Here's your choices. There are three choices. One is a Jew. The other two are not. Number one, Kiosk the Alley. Kirsty Alley. The fat blimp who dumped her husband because she still thinks she's cute. All right. <laughs> Number two, Connie Wilson. The big fatso who got dumped from her talk show because no one thought she was cute. Tony Wilson, Kirstie Alley, okay. And number three, Terry Hatcher, who got dumped from Lois and Clark despite her huge breasts, her only two talents. Is she fat? No, hey, she's not fat. That's right, she's not. I don't know what I was thinking of. <laughs> All right, I guess I just needed to round up the category. Go ahead, yes. Is that the three? That's the three. Okay, so we have the following people. Kirstie Alley. Oh, she is getting fat. She's pregnant, so. All right. Kirstie Alley, Carney Wilson, or Terry Hatcher. Or Terry Hatcher. Now, one of those is Jew. One, one of those is, is Jew. Jew. That's a tough one. Not. I don't know that I know the answer, That's though. Let's see. Kirstie Alley. Carney Wilson or Terry Hatcher. I hmm. think I'm going to go with uh, Kirstie Alley. All right, let's turn to Kurt Voltheim Jr. for two tickets to the Holyfield Tyson match June 28th at the MGM in Las Vegas. Trip includes two nice hotel accommodations, round trip airfare mm. and hospitality, invitations for the MGO. Did it. Courtesy of Gold Premium Beer. Go ahead. Tony, I'm afraid the only coons you'll be seeing is on the F train. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, oh, Kurt. Oh, geez. Connie Wilson. Connie Wilson. Wilson. Connie Wilson, because she is the daughter of Brian Wilson, who is Jewish. Uh, if Wilson is a Jewish name? If you'll recall, the father's name was Mary... Uh, the grandfather, actually. I'll uh, give me another chance. I'm you really want wow. another chance? Should we give well, him we another have to, chance? I think we ought to get someone else to play. All right, then. Uh, I'm sorry, so sorry. Tony. Bye. Back uh, to the pizza oven. Oh. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, I want to get on this contest. Are you a Jew hater? <laughs> well, I sort of heard some... Pr All right. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. Yes. I'm trying for the Tyson tickets. All right. Now, how do you feel about the Jews? Uh, I hate them. Oh, now we're talking. Why? Do you really, really hate, hate them? them? Do you really hate them, or are you just saying that to play the game? Or you just I tickets? hate them. I'm like Kurt. I hate everybody, and similar to you, Howard, sometimes I even hate myself. Really? Yes. I now, hate you, too. <laughs> now, tell me about the Jews. When did you start hating them? Um, at birth, when my mother circumcised me for no good reason at all. I all right, you're not Jewish, I take it. No. Uh, what are you? I am Italian. You're an Italian what? Uh, Catholic? Yeah, Roman Catholic Italian. Well, I see. And, Is there any uh, other kind? And, and uh, okay, so you were circumcised. Big deal. I mean, why would you hate the Jews? Well, it, it started there, and uh, and it seems like I've always worked for them, and I've always they've always gotten better grades than me, more money than me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything. Are they mean to you at work? Of course. Oh. What do they do? Um, they look down at me. They they don't interact with. Me. You're a moron. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't buy this guy. No. Uh, you're on the you air. Don't? He no. doesn't feel it in his bones. No, I, I you know, I know racist. <laughs> Hello, you're on the air. Hello? Yes. You're, you're coming through the house. Sir. Yeah, this is Howard. This is N Howard? Do you hate the Jews? Yeah, I hate the Jews. All right. Now, now, now we're talking. <laughs> now, you're a black guy, right? Yeah. All right. And why do you hate the Jews? Why do I hate the Jews? Yeah, a lot of black guys hate the Jews, right? I want them tickets. That's why I want. That's why I hate the Jews. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you hate the Jews because you want the tickets. He's a fair weather kunta. <laughs> do you really hate the Jews or not? Yeah, yeah, I hate them. I hate them. Now, when did you uh, turn off your radio so I can rap to you? To use what a you I say, turn off the radio, my brother. I want to rap to you. All uh, right, you ain't Howard, man. Stop playing. I'm not playing with you. Come on, turn off your radio, my man. Yeah, the video was off. Now turn it off. Turn it down? Turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> What's up with you, man? Listen, listen, yo, you hear me? What's up with you? Yo, turn, yo, turn off your radio, dude. Yo, 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 yo. Yo, pick me through the Howard, man. <laughs> this is Howard. <laughs> it is Howard. No, that's Robin. Listen, dude. You got to turn down the radio so you don't get confused. All right. All right. I have to right. talk in uh, Ebonics. I apologize. The guy wouldn't understand otherwise. Yo, 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 what's up? Yo, what up, man? Word. 
<laughs> All right, listen to me. Have we gotten anywhere? <laughs> yeah, now, we, now we're communicating. <laughs> I'm going to revert back to regular English so the rest of the audience can understand. <laughs> you say you hate the Jews. Yeah, yeah, I hate them. I don't like them. Do you work for Jews? Do I work for Jews? Yeah, I work for Jews. What do you do? I work working Liz Claymore. You do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they give you a hard time, the Jews? Yeah, not, not a hard time, but, you know, they give me a rough time. They do? Yeah. Like, what do they do? They act all superior to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Always you, ordering you around? Making you do work and stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> you got some nerve. <laughs> <laughs> and when did you start hating the Jews? At a young age? Um, no, nah, nah, not at a young age, but, you know, at, at, a, at a phase. Mm-hmm. When I, when I, like, entered the workforce, you know. I, I see. That's what I worked for was a Jew, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you say egg a muffin? <laughs> wow, say that one. Say egg McMuffin. <laughs> say egg McMuffin. Yo, how? Can I get the tickets, man? Say egg McMuffin. What'd you say? Say egg McMuffin. Egg McMuffin. <laughs> Jackie, shut up, man. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Jackie's a big man. Oh, my goodness. Jackie's a big gonna... shot when he's not around you. Will you come out there and kick his ass? I know, I know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Word. I like that big stuff too. Yo, Howard, let me get them tickets, man. I don't feel you really hate the Jews. Nah. Why, you, you don't think I really hate them? No. That's what I got to say. I, I got to... You really hate them? <laughs> I got to quote Hitler or something? What do you say? Does I got to quote Hitler? quote Hitler or <laughs> Yeah, something. quote Hitler. That would help. <laughs> 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 I feel you're just saying you hate the Jews so you can win the tickets. Uh, well, you know, I, I ain't got no hate in my heart, man. Yeah, that's, I can tell you, I can see. Word. Sorry, man. I want them tickets, you know I'm, I'm sorry, man. So buy them. You don't hate enough. All right, let this guy play the game. Right, let's just play the game. We've never had a black person play We're going to let Chicken George play? Yeah, Kurt, now how do you feel about a black guy playing the game? I'm not fond of it. All right. Well, let him play anyway. All right, do you think he can handle this? Yes. I'm not sure. Give him the two, handle it. Give him All a choice right. of categories. All right, here we go. Uh, the choices of categories you have left to choose from are Too Old for Tampons <laughs> and Soap Opera Jews. So Papa Jews. All righty. Nobody and wants too old for Tampa. <laughs> See, I would have gone with that one. Yeah. The the category soap opera Jews is up for Chicken George, which is appropriate because we turned most Jews into soap in 1945. All right, go <laughs> ahead. Here you go. Two are Gentile, one is Jewish. You pick one. Keeney Francis from General Hospital. She plays Laura. Mm -hmm. Stuart Damon. He plays Alan Quartermain on General Hospital. Or Anthony Geary, the bozo lookalike from General Hospital. Who? Mm. Tony Geary. Uh, Alan Quartermain, is that right? Yes, Stuart Damon is his actual name. And? And Jeannie Francis, who plays Laura. Go ahead, my brother. All right, the last one, what was that? Anthony Gavin or something? Anthony Geary. 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 Yeah. That's the, um, the Gentile. Yeah. No, no. Well, you got to pick the, uh, you, 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 you have pick to pick the Jew. You have to pick the Hebrew. He's a Hebrew? No, pick no, the Jew. you have to pick. <laughs> <laughs> you I have told to... you he couldn't handle this. <laughs> you have to pick the Jew. Put down your crack pipe and answer the, the question. One, the last one, what was that? <laughs> Anthony Geary. Stuart yeah, Damon. that's what I'm talking about. All right, you, you want to pick him? you think he's Jewish? Yeah. You think Anthony Geary is Jewish? Yeah. All You've right. never watched General Hospital, have you, Chicken George? Uh, it's Kurt, who is the... Give the answer to this guy. The answer is Stuart Damon. Oh. You're Alan wrong. Quartermain. You, you didn't win. Correct. So I got it wrong? Yeah. You got it wrong. <laughs> All right, man. What school did you go to? I still hate you, though. I hate you. <laughs> what school did you go to? I can't stand you. I, don't, I, I can't stand you. What school did you go to? <laughs> don't worry about it. I can't stand you. Uh, too bad. I was going to hate you. I was going to give you the tickets anyway. <laughs> Stupid ass. Dumb ass. <laughs> he hates you, but he was going to try to get those tickets. Yeah. Well, gee, Kurt. Can I take a break and then maybe we'll... I guess we'll get uh, to we're going to have the tampons. To. Yeah, we might get to the we're tampon going category. We have to do that category. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. Who or what he is? I don't know. Dysfunctional family picnic. Ah, Joy Freaks in Forest Hills, Tennessee. I'll see full concert performances by Blur. Blur. <laughs> Fighters. Luscious Jackson. Echo and the Bunny Man. Here we are. 
confirmation seating available now through Ticketmaster Outlets and Ticketmaster Charge. 212-307-7171. In Jersey, 201-507-8900. Long Island, 516-888-9000. No service charge at the Manhattan Center box office. July 1st at Forest Hills. Come share our new roles. Produced by K-Rock in cooperation with Metropolitan Entertainment Group. Prozac not included. The Sound and the Fury, Holyfield and Tyson remix. I never dreamed that he could fight that well. If you hit me this way, then I'm going to hit you back. This is a great challenge, and I'm, I'm looking forward to dealing with it. Now, Vander Holyfield me the unbelievable, the believable. I'm just prepared. I'm ready. He surprised me with the first punch you threw. <laughs> I just lost to the better man that particular night. Oh, man. If he beats me this time, he beats me the best I've ever been. Best I've ever been. Best I've ever been. Best I've ever been. Order only. Call 1-800-885-FIGHT or call your local cable company for more information. The Sound and the Fury, Holyfield and Tyson Remix. Holyfield Tyson 2, Saturday, June 28th, live on pay-per-view from the MGM Grand. No talk, all action. And every time I think about it, I just break out in a cold sweat. Tick, 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 tick. Uh, my car made, started to make a peculiar noise on the way to work. It made a, a ticking sound like tick, 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 tick. Hi, I'm Jim Brolin for Amco Transmissions, and I've always said that you can't tell how bad a transmission problem is with your ears. But now I'm telling you something different. Your ears can tell how good the repair will be. Just listen to our customers. I called my husband when I, when I thought there was a transmission problem, and he was the one who said, go to Amco. All they do is transmissions. They have to be good. I think they're at the top of the list as far as transmission repair. An AMCO center is where you find highly skilled technicians with state-of-the-art diagnostic tools. Here's something else that sounds good. Half the cars serviced at AMCO centers don't need a new transmission. They were wonderful, and I really liked it because they didn't treat me as some woman who knows nothing about cars. AMCO, the name means experts. It was almost like a brand new car. It runs great, even in four-wheel drive. Sounds like AMCO is where you ought to go. AMCO, double A. Beep, beep. MCO. Tonight on The Late Show with David Letterman, don't miss Nick Torturo, Daisy Fuentes, and Motley Crue. Plus tonight's top ten list. The Late Show with David Letterman, only on CBS. Then I get this. Yesterday, I stopped at the Burger King drive-thru for a delicious Whopper value meal, and when I pulled up to get my order, the girl at the window gave me a speeding ticket. Oh, no.